All right. So, Mr. White Lion and Ellie, take it away with the, with the music dedicated to the Olukumi people. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us in today's session. Um, we are going to be having like uh, an historical discussion um, about the Olukumi people. Uh, but before I go um, and introduce who exactly the Olukumi people are, um, I'd like you all to listen to um, uh, a musical uh, clip produced by an Olukumi artist. Um, it's done, it's produced in the Olukumi language. And um, after that, I will also be playing uh, a short uh, informational about, uh, you know, a, a short uh, audio informational done in the Olukumi uh, language as well so that we can just familiarize ourselves with uh, the Olukumi speech form and how exactly, you know, Olukumi sounds like, because it's important that uh, we all have, you know, some idea about the people exactly we are talking about. It's all part of the introductory session of today's uh, discussion. So um, just give me a second while I play that audio. Thank you. Thank you so much, White Lion. So while our brother looks for the musical rendition to be played for us to introduce the Unukumi people of today's uh, where it where it's called Niger Delta in today's Nigeria, I would just like to take this opportunity to once again welcome each and every one of us to Yoruba Nation platform on, on Clubhouse. Uh, you are welcome to yet another uh, informative and educative session. Um, kindly feel free to join us on the stage if you think you might have any contributions or comments to make, uh, or if you think uh, you know there are some contributions that you would like to give, feel free to raise your hands and uh, the moderators can bring you up to the stage. Uh, Mr. White Lion, if you are ready now, uh, please feel free to take it away. Thank you. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, here is the audio clip. Um, thank you very much. Um, the title of the of the sound clip you just listened to is uh, Wasiri, meaning you have done well in the Olukumi language of um, of Delta State. 
And um, at this point, I'm not even sure if I should play the other uh, sound clip, which is, um, well, it's just to, you know, it's uh, to familiarize us with what the Olukumi uh, language sounds like. Um, like I said, it's a sound clip in uh, the Olukumi language. Uh, it's a coronavirus sensitization uh, message. Um, you know, just to give us an inkling of what it sounds like when an Olukumi person from Delta State is actually talking. So um, just give me a second while I play that. Uh, all right, here it is. Yeah, Uro, coronavirus. Amu, Omi, Omose, Agwawa, Ekogede, Koda, Amu, Emo, Una, Agwawa, Madi, Oware, Akauzu, Imo koda enure. Amu akwa wo koda ewe te ekwe tishu abu enu onwi more. Ida we ewu ko koda we ishi wase ha. Ho ewe te ekwe tishu ene dana. Eje eje. Uwe le. Ma ane te ara la la. Ye un unre. Oma wano koda iye le ti koko la la. Zokono le idara yae. Ida woni ba, uko umuma ya mirire, tete yari ira woyibo. Hareti, bunti woni zizo, tu unu ene tekwe coronavirus. Ye un, unu, coronavirus. Um, so that's the clip, um, it's called Ye un, unu, corona. Um, it's just a uh, song telling people to, you know, on how to avoid getting the coronavirus, um, you know, getting infected. And I hope um, that gives us a little bit of an intro on how, um, you know, um, the old community language sounds like, you know, on a day-to-day -day conversational basis. And um, before I start today's uh, introduction, um, if there is anyone on stage who has one or two full words, um, I think now is a good time to, to you know, to talk about those things uh before I, we actually go into like you know the uh, the, the 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 core of today's uh discussion is there anyone on stage who has one or two things to say uh i just me, have I a have question to, okay <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> my question go, is that the Olukumi, uh they found outside nigeria too right oh yeah so that question is going to be it's going to it's going to interlock very well with a certain part of uh of what we are actually going to discuss so like i think i would defer the answer to that question um to later on along the course of the discussion but yes that was a very good uh that was a very good question in this start. yeah so my own was just to point out some observation while you were playing those two clips so for the first two first clip like i have never heard what a molukumi language sounds like ever in my life this is the first time but I just knew, like, um, they are Igbo people who claim descent from the Yorudua Yoruba heritage. So the first one, I was hearing things like Mokipi. Um, that sounds like very Yoruba. You could um, correct me. I, I would um, assume you are more familiar with this uh, prior to now. I had Mokipi. I heard something like um, Ayemi Roware while the song was going on. I had obviously um, Washiri. You did well. Ayemi Roware, yeah, like, my life is in your hands. Um, in the clip, short clip about um, sensitization on uh, coronavirus. So he was talking about something like that was what I heard. So I do not judge me too much if I get this wrong. If that was correct, so he was saying something exactly like exactly what I was exactly that was right. Yeah, okay. exactly. And uh, we know about the J and the Z in that part of um, Nigeria, Boshiman the dichotomy how the standard yoruba g would sound like a z and um and vice versa so i just wanted to point out the language like this is really interesting yes it's um i mean these people have been there over a long period of time not a clean form it's not like some 1970 or 1800 migration it's just it must have been one of those early migrations of um, the yoruba people from you know the whatever part of yoruba land they have moved so what he you know it's like a kind of hybrid of yoruba language and Igbo language but still we can still we can still tell but yes with some Larry heavy evil influence because perhaps they were they're surrounded 
all around left right uh, you know up and down by Igbo or Igbo related people it's not like they share a front frontier with they, share, they still share a frontier with Yoruba people no they are surrounded like um, almost totally engulfed by Igbo speaking or Igbo related people but still yet yeah, with those heavy influ influence over hundreds if not thousands of years you can still you know get that Yoruba like almost very clearly that's like very interesting and very striking for me i thought i should point it out and uh, another thing i noticed I'll, is I'll uh, that it. language sorry, kind of sister, sound uh, sorry uh that sorry. language kind of sound uh like uh some language like uh um, undo i don't know like uh some dialect from undo side I mean, like, uh, when I, I listen to, you, right? yeah, when I listen to them, you. like, I can actually point some of the words they said and relate it to some of the words I heard uh, from uh, some of the Undo dialect. Mr. White Lion will go shed light on that one. I think uh, that's that's true. And I also think, um, besides the, the, if you if you look at those uh, words that actually sound like Yoruba words you see that they are basically um, foundational words like Oshe, like Joko, like, you know, so Iba. over time, Iba. Yeah, Iba. Like Iba. Iba. Over time mm -hmm. other words that they were able to incorporate into their, uh, you know, mixed uh, ascensory language or evolved uh, language. But those base words, those uh, basic functional verb words couldn't change. So they still had to incorporate it into their their evolved language as well. I think that's that's fantastic. That's interesting to know. Thank you. Uh, what line? Can I speak, please? Yes, Otumba. Of course, you can. You can um, tender your observations. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, and I really like the audio that you played. And uh, for me, quick uh, expectation from today's uh, session. One would be to learn more about the relationship, just like what my sister Adwaye mentioned. Do we really have any relationship between the Olukumi people that we can find in Delta State today and Olukumi people in Cuba uh, with their Olukumi spelt with C instead of K as seen in Olukumi people of Delta State? That is number one. Number two, uh, in your introductory message, you mentioned that, uh, you know, these subgroups of the Yoruba people, they are, you know, they have Odudua ancestry. I would just like to learn a little bit more about, you know, the leadership structure in Olukumi towns and villages around Delta states. Do they also have Obas? Do they have Bales? Or how has that evolved based on um their environment uh uh i would really like if you can shed some more light on that uh just like everyone else uh, i liked it um the language from the uh musical rendition and the commentary from uh from the covid 19 uh audio that you played you know, the language sounded just exactly as, as uh, in so many respects, of course, like uh, Yoruba uh, language in Ilaje and other uh, Eastern uh, blocks of, of Yoruba land. Uh, I would really like to learn more about their language etymology. And uh, uh, yeah, those are my expectations. And I know that with you, White Lion, you know, we can always expect that our minds would be blown. I look forward to enjoying this session. And again, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much. Mr. White Lion, over to you, please. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Black Lion, I think you were saying something in the back channel chat about uh, one of our um, Ishe Ishekiri brothers, uh, who is probably in the audience. Um, I don't know who he is, but you have uh, moderator privileges. If you know who it is, you can invite that person up. So, all right. Uh, um, he's already up now. That's uh, Victor. Hello. Victor. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, hi, brother. Welcome. Um, I don't know if it's your first time in Eurobanishan, but uh, welcome to Eurobanishan. 
And uh, we are going to be discussing about the Olukomi people of Delta State. So you can just hang in there. You might be able to offer some interesting insights from the Shekiri perspective. That would be also nice to have. Thank you very much, Mr. Vic, for coming up and um, to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, greetings to the house and greetings to everybody. Talking about the Olukomi people, Although they like have not been there though because they are like intertwined hello? with the Hello Mr. Yeah? Mr. There is background yes. noise. Okay, there's background noise. Yes. Yes. Are you using uh, headphone? No, I'm not. Yeah, please take care of that. Thank you. Okay. Is it clear now? Can you hear me clearly now? Yes, uh, Mr. Vic, I think it's raining where you are or something, but we yeah, it's come back. Yes, it's yes, I understand. Yeah. We will come back to you um, in a few, but um, uh, you, we will come back to you. Don't worry. Um, so, uh, just for um, you know, just for um, you know, to 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 really make us. I know I've played this sound clip before, uh, but just for emphasis, I'm going to play it one more time. And then after this time, listen carefully. And after I play it this time, uh, I want people to tell me the Yoruba words, you know, or the Yoruba sounding words that they are able to make out from this particular um, audio, you know. So I will play that audio again um, so that we can actually, uh, you know, scrutinize the audio and really, really see. Maybe we can judge for ourselves the level of intelligibility that... Um, this uh, particular sound clip would have to a standard Yoruba speaker. Yeah, um, uro, coronavirus. Amu, umi, umose, agwawa, ekpogede, koda. Amu, emo, una, agwawa. Ma, di, oware, aka ozu, imo, koda, enore. Amu, agwawa, koda, ewe, te, ekwe, tishu, abu, emo, umu, imore. Ida <laughs> Bunti one is is on two no one attack by coronavirus. So once again, that's the clip. Um, so you know, <laughs> how many Yoruba or Yoruba-like words can we make out from that particular audio, and what what level of mutual intelli intelligibility were you able to, you know, were you able to get from that particular sound clip, uh, Mr. Olabola? I would say somewhere forty-ish percent from my own um, you know subjective judgment i can hear words like ozu that would be oju in my yeah. own judgment or wo hand air mouth lala it's big something yes yeah. zoko sit inu inside ili house mu take and so on and so forth and some other ones that i wasn't able to all right beautiful otumba how about you Yes, I heard clearly uh, uh, something in the line of Dokita um, yes. away, away, don't we need tissue paper? Exactly, yes. Yeah, so, um, you know, pretty close to uh, Mr. my brother Alabala's uh, uh, estimation, I would say that the words that I could hear clearly uh, would be around uh 30 to 40 percent of uh the conversation being yoruba language that can be uh relatable to uh mainland yoruba people thank you sir all right sister adon how about you uh actually i will say i only heard a few like lower than Otumbai, the Olabola. i heard a wag bo or something we had like a put it in your mouth that I said no, and no, or walk, boo boo, like, uh, you know, just uh, I was able to just pick few, few of uh, Oyimbo and all that. 
uh, or like just a, just few few of them. Oh, all right, that's beautiful. Um, brother Black Lion, do you have anything? How much of that could you understand? Uh, pretty much the same as Ola Bola said. So um, I heard the part of Oju, you know, Enu, and the for war. So um, I heard those parts, but um, I feel there there was uh, I, I I yeah I didn't listen like efficiently, but if I had, you know, there there there, there would have been much more um, correlation as well. So yeah, I, I heard those basic parts though. All right, uh, Mr. G, if you're there, how much of that could you understand? <laughs> okay. Uh, like, uh, like, like, I, let's say, like, I don't know whether twenty percent, but it was keeping. So it was mostly eco, eco. Like I just use idea carrier, but yeah, I hear some words here. Thank you. Okay, that's beautiful. Um, I can't shout. You've been blinking your mic. How about you? So I. I listened attentively. So I was able to hear words like Tinsi, Ruko, Iwo Atayare, Lori Dokita Oibo, Foju, For War. It's for me, it's like 60% you're about to be honest. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Bola, if you are there, how much of that could you understand? Okay. How about you, Damilari? I'm not I'm not gonna put a percentage sugar mo kimoko joko o nyibu um owo ayare iba the iba iwe stuff like that which is mostly the word we use as you well. All right. Um just to save time, if there is any other person on stage who has uh, an observation to make about how much they could understand, you can you can you can pick up the mic. <laughs> Um, good evening. Yes, Mr. Olumide, good evening. Yes. Um, I came on stage to make an observation. Um, while you were playing it, um, the language sounded pretty close to the Etuno people in Edo State, um, Igara people. Uh, my wife is from Igara, so when um, you were playing it, it sounded similar to how they speak. They, they, they say they are not Yoruba, but they have Yoruba names. My wife's name, apart from her, um, her name is Onyoza, but uh, my second name is Bolanle. And um, they have some Yoruba terms. But when you were playing it, it sounded similar to um, the Igara people in Edo State. They call themselves Etuno. All right. Um, thank you very much for your observation, Mr. Olumide. Uh, Mr. Vic, do you have something to say? Yes, yes. Uh, the language of the Olukumi, for me, I would say it is at least 70% close to that of the Shakiri. That is the percentage of the to put it. But uh, concerning the, the issue of uh, Etuna, of Igara, in those states that Mr. Olubide raised, I would say the, the Etuna people are very much close to Yoruba as well because I have a lot of friends from there and almost all of them, they bear Yoruba names. And I've been there as well. All their streets, all the streets in Igara, they are all Yoruba names. So, although they have a different language which they speak as well, they speak both side by side. So, that's what I mean by that area. Uh, a big pub uh, for your observation. So, now um, that we've laid a very, very good... Uh, Mr. I think uh, Mr. Baloja has something to say. And, uh, Mr. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, Mr. Baloja. So Mr. Baloja oh, okay, uh, thank you. Um, my observation is that um, because when you played it the first time, I could get about 40%. Uh, when you played it the second time, I got a few more of the words. And while listening to other people speak, <clears throat> they... <laughs> They, I saw what I missed, and when I added it up, honestly, it's almost 75%. So that gives me an impression that the root of that language is Yoruba. 
that's a very and to me it even sounded just like a dialect of the yoruba because um <clears throat> if you listen to the awaris or you listen to even the uh some aspect of the jebus or uh, if you go a little towards but i agree um the root word is still the root language is still yoruba but you have those variations so so i haven't, I haven't i've never heard of I've these never... people ever before and i'm very fascinated that they could have up to 70 75 percent of their main uh, the, uh, the main uh, words in their language to be Yoruba. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, look at it. Yeah, you can pick up the mic. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, um, I think I would say for me it was like 30 to 40 percent the way Mr. Labola said. I mean, I could make out what they were saying. But I guess the question I have for those of us that could pick up some of the words and get the gist of the what they were saying was if they didn't say coronavirus where we were able to associate things with coronavirus awareness would we truly be, have been able to get the gist of what they were saying i guess that's a question for me because i feel for me to have been more difficult if i didn't have that pre-knowledge that okay this has, has something to do with coronavirus so i'm just curious as to other people's thoughts on that yeah, that's a very smart one. So for me, it's it's not really about the conversation if I hadn't like been previewed to what it's gonna be about. It's more about the words. So I may not be able to like um string the words together in my mind to make a sentence out of it. But what I'm able to do is to say, wait, I just heard Ozu. If this person is talking from that region of Delta, does this not sound like Oju? Because I know about the G and the Z. I just had Owo, I just had Zoko, Joko, I just had Lala. So I may not be able to like um, string everything. And that's how an Ijebu person will say and no mouth. Lala, that's how somebody in the Eastern Axis will say it's big, big. So yes, I'm able to pick those words, even if there was no like um, prior, you know, awareness that this is about um, coronavirus sensitization. I would still be able to pick up those words like, no, these are Yoruba words or Yoruba sounding words at least. And um, those are the words of um, Inu, Ili, Mu, etc. So those words like, they stood out. Especially if when Ituba Ni apologies to those who don't understand Yoruba, I like to mix it. it makes me more comfortable to mix it. Eh? So, yeah, if you have a you know good hearing for languages, you can pick up at least pick up the words if not make a whole sense out of the sentences so and that was it for me i would have been still be able to pick up those words all right that's very good um let's also not forget that uh the propensity for you to understand or the level of the understanding which you will be able to achieve will also depend on the 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 yoruba dialects that you speak and how um, you know, what level of understanding you have of that dialect. So the more easterly your Yoruba dialect is, the more you will be able to pick out words from what they said. Besides, from the sound clip, there were also some derived words, which are purely Yoruba in their breakdown, but do not exist as a word on their own in Yoruba. For example, in that sound clip, they translated alcohol to mean emo una which is fire alcohol or fire wine emo una was what they called alcohol so they said wamu emono mu guoware like you rub your hands with alcohol so if you hear emo una you may not know what that means but it's like emu emu nino like you know like hot wine you know to mean alcohol but yeah that's that's that about the sound clip um so i will just go like and introduce the olikumi people you know so the Olukumi people are a group um, of Yoruba descended people presently occupying a string of communities in the northeastern extremity of what is now Delta state of Nigeria, as well as a little part of the extreme southeast of Edo state. Not many people talk about that, but there is a fraction of them that is actually in the southeastern extremity of Edo state. Um, like I said, they are a fragment of Yoruba descended people that migrated eastwards 
and are presently established. Someone has a hot mic, please mute yourself. And are presently established close to, very, very close to the middle reaches or the middle sections of the, of the Niger River. So they can be found settled on the western or right bank of the Niger River in southern Nigeria, in what is today's Delta State. And uh, the majority of them can be found in Aniocha North local government area, or what is now Aniocha North local government area of Delta State, southern Nigeria. Within Aniocha North, the area where the Olukomis are predominantly found as uh, occupants, there are three major groups of people that inhabit that land. Or should I say clans? You have the Ezechima clan of Aniocha North. You have the Idumoje clan of Aniocha North. And then you have the Ulukumi clan of Aniocha North who are also referred to as the Odiani. So again, these are the three groups that make up Aniocha North. You have the Ezechima, you have the Idumuje, and then you have the Odiani or the Olukumi in Aniocha North local government area. So what exactly is the etymology of that terminology? Like when you say Olukumi, 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 what exactly does it mean? I mean, does it have any connections with, like Sister Adun asked, right? Does it have any connections with the Lukumi people and uh, our brother, uh, Otumba? Does it have any connections or connotations? Or is there any link at all with uh, the Yoruba diaspora in the Atlantic world? Um, you know, the old Lukumi people found in Cuba, and there's also records of them in other uh, Caribbean islands, you know. So what exactly is the link? Um, of course, the word Olukumi, is of extant Yoruba origin. Uh, it is one of the names by which the Yoruba people have been known over the years, uh, both within West Africa and, of course, like I said, the New World. Um, there were certain cartographical maps, for example, the map of 1J Bleu, produced in 1644. I'm sure Mr. Olabela will be able to go more in depth into this. There was also another map produced by Olfred Dapa. Uh, called uh, Nigriterium Regio. It was produced in the year 1668. And uh, another one again by William Snellgrift, produced in 1734, uh, called a map of the, of the Guinea coast of West Africa. And this map showed and depicted the area, uh, you know, that would constitute the present day Yoruba land north of an area labeled as the Lago de Kuramo, which is like the Kuramo waters of Lagos today. So north of that Lago de Kuramo, you have an area labeled as Ulkumi or Ulkumi. It was labeled as Ulkumi in this uh, 1644 map. Again, like I said, in the map of William Snellgrave, 1734, the area was labeled as, in quotes, Kingdom of Ulkama or Regno de Ulkama. It was labeled as such in this map. And that particular area, like I said, was north of the area labeled Lago de Kuramo, which is like the Kuramo Lake or, you know, the area that would be like the, around the Kuramo waters of Lagos today. So as to the origin of the word itself, the word Olukumi, what exactly does it mean? You know, the word Olukumi in Yoruba simply means uh my confidant my friend my brethren my base person someone i can trust that is what ulukumi means of course it depends on the particular dialect you are referring to but in some particular dialect it also means my lover or my bosom friend um this terminology of the or this term can be found throughout all the areas that constitute what you would describe or what has been described as the central and eastern Yoruba dialects, including Ife, Akoko, Ijesha, Ekiti, Ondo, Owo, Owe, Yagba, Ilaje, Ikae, Ijebu, and so on and so forth. If you are from any of these areas and you are very, very conversant, you are very, very familiar 
with your dialect. You must have at one time or the other heard Olukumi before being used in one way, shape, or form to refer to We use it as lover, Ololufia Biyawa. Uh -huh. So what what access is that, please, Mr. Uh, Damilari? Is that Eba, it? Yeah, we use it as a lover, like my wife. We use it as uh, we use it as uh, my friend who already me Olukumi in Nijabu. So uh -huh. uh -huh. they have a popular song that they sing. They say An Shota Rawa Lotu Ife Olukuara Lainche means in Ife. We are not enemies of ourselves. We are rather companions. Olukuara, Laishi. So, like I said, this term is found, um, you know, in all these central, eastern, even some western dialects. Like Mr. Damilari said, among the Igba people, it means my lover. So, you know, it's a term that is, that is, it's pretty much, it's, it's endemic to the Yoruba region. You can find it all over. Um, talking about the, the places or the settlements that are of either full or partial Olukumi uh, provenance in what is today's Delta State. You have Ukunzu, or in the original native name of that town, Eko Efun, Eko Efun, or Ukunzu. It means the same thing, but I'll get into that later. We have Ubodu, Ubodu, or in full, Ubodu Mila, Ubodu Mila. We have Ubulubu, or like some would say, Uburubu. You know, in Igbo language, there is a, there is an L and R thing going on. So some would say Ubulubu, some would say Uburubu. We also have Uboba. We also have Uboba or Uboba in full. We have another small village. It's called Ogodo. Ogodo is another Olukumi village. We have, interestingly, a small Olukumi village also called Anyoma. Anyoma, very, very close to the Esan boundary with Edo State. It's called Anyoma. It's another Olukumi village. We have Idumu Ogo. Idumu Ogo. It's another Olukumi village. We have another small village called Aniofu. Aniofu, it's another Olukumi village. We also have Ogbeonei, Ogbeonei, which is sort of like one of the largest quarters of a town known as Obongpa. Obongpa is also in that vicinity. They have a very, very large segment of them called the Ogbeonei. They are of Olukumi provenance. Now, the areas that are partially Olukumi, we have the Ogbekenu quarters of Onichaubo, Onichaubo. We also have the Onichauku quarters of Ubuluku. Ubuluku. They have a quarter known as Onichauku there. They are also of um, Olukumi provenance. Now, to Edo State, amongst uh, the Essence, in Essence Southeast Local Government Council, we have Amaho, a quarter of Amaho. A quarter of Amaho town is of Olukumi provenance. The Olukumi people were the first to settle in Amaho in Essan land. Now, this small community of, uh, uh, of Olukumis left or were said uh, to have migrated from somewhere to the west of that area. And this Olukumi settled in a place known as Idumbelega. This particular Idumbelega is regarded as the oldest part of the oldest sector uh, in Amaho as a town. Um, however, after the 1400s, according to Professor Koje, uh, some other people began to migrate and, uh, you know, started to mix in with the Olukumi people that were already to settle or that were already settled on that land. And that was how the formation of the other, one of the other uh, compartments or one of the other villages of the uh, Amaho sector of Esan land uh, came about. Then uh, uh, the formation of the Egwai uh, came by as a result of uh, settlers who came into that area from Uteopu, uh, a location known as Uteopu near Idumuje Uboko, 
those ones, the letter, the letter, the letter uh, uh, migrants came around the year 1508. But don't forget that the Olukumi had already been settled in that area since the early to mid 1400s. That is what the history of Amaho tells us about um, how the Olukumi were the oldest people to be settled in that area until they were joined by later day migrants who, uh, you know, supposedly overwhelmed the Olukumi who were already there in terms of numbers. Now, to the ones, uh, to the two of those villages that we are very, very sure of what the names in full were or what the original names were for those who have changed, we have Ubudu, like I said earlier. Uh, the full form for that town is Ubudu Mila, which means Ubudu Mila. I have found solace in this forest to prosper. I have found solace in this forest to prosper. Ubudu Mila. And Ekoefu, Ekoefu, Ekoefu means a chalk mining camp. Ekoefu, it means a chalk mining camp. It's a it's sort of like a mixture. So Eko meaning camp and Efu meaning chalk. Um, at present, um, the 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 ruler of uh, of Ubudu town is referred to as the Oloza, the Oloza or the Obi, the Oloza or the Obi. The Oloza is analogous to the Yoruba term that would be the Oloja, the Oloja, for example, Oloja of Ekbe, or Oloja of Odiaye, or Oloja of Mahi, and so on and so forth. It's also analogous to the Ishek, um, it's also analogous to the Igala term Onoja, Onoja. Onoja is like Onu Oja. It's like Onu in Igala means a chief, and Oja means a gathering of people or a market. So when you say Onoja in Ishakiri, you're in uh, Igala, you are referring to a leader of the people or a king or a chief, depending on you know, what exactly you are talking about. Also, it's analogous to the Shakiri term, Olaja. Olaja in Shakiri simply means a king. Olaja, Oluaja, a king. In Yoruba, Oloja. In Shakiri, Olaja. In Olukumi land, Oloza. And in Igala land, Onoja. These terms all mean the same thing. It means a leader of a group of people which can be a chief, it can be a king, it can be a noble or a high-ranking person in society, depending on the context. So the present ruler of Ubudu town is the Oloza, also referred to as the Obi, Ayo, Isin Yemeze. Isin Yemeze, Ayo, is the Oloza of Ubudu. And he is usually greeted just the same way for the Oba of Bini, you will say, Oba Atokpe, is a, for the Oloza of Ubudu, you say, Oloza wa zekbeni. Oloza wa zekbeni, which means Oloja wa zekbe, or may your, you would you would you would uh you would you would you would last long on the throne, and you would uh you know you would enjoy the fruits of your ancestors, something like that. But they say Oloza wa zekbeni, and uh, he is the he is the chairman of the Anyocha North Council of Kings. Um, he has Hi, a prince. Ryan. Can I update you on these things, please? Yes, of course. Uh, Ify, I know you are from that Hi. area. You <laughs> channeled me before at one particular time. Yes, so, I'm yes. Ulukumi. And All right. um, Ubud is actually not the former. The foremost headquarters of Ulukumi Kingdom is Ukunzu. Ukunzu. Ubud is actually under Ukunzu in terms of hierarchy. Ukunzu is the Odiani clan headquarters of all the Odiani communities. It's actually the historical headquarter of all the Olukumi people. And the current Obi there is the Obi of Ukunzu, who is the Agbogidi one, Aribani. So the people from all the Opala towns, Uburubu, Uboba, Dumoge, Onotribo, Iseluku, Ukunzu, Obodu, Ogwashuku, everybody answers first to the Agbogidi before 
you even head to good. So that might be little things that we are actually trying to update now. We're trying to, we're trying to form um, a historical library where people can know more about the Olukumi people. It's something that we actually started um, during the COVID, but it's still coming up. So there's a lot of updates that are not there, but it's been so interesting. I'm just listening to everybody and I'm quite over. I'm like, okay, they're talking about my people. I'm Olukumi, I'm Ukunzu, I'm Ani Serebere, which means I'm a king's daughter. So a lot of little things that I, I can update you guys on, but at currently this particular one, it's Ukunzu that you would want to visit first as the headquarters of the Olukumi people. Wow, thank you very much, Ifi, for that uh, very, very beautiful input. Um, I am well aware of uh, that at present, uh, amongst the Odiani or amongst the Olukumi, there is a <laughs> there is a thing going on between Ubodu and Ukuns for um, you know there is it's sort of like a tussle for the traditional leadership of I'm not going to go into yes, that because it's going on it's going on for it's been going on for ages exactly like, I know that between Ubodu and Ukunzu they are sort of like you know contesting for who is the head I'm the head I came first I came from Ife I came from this you didn't come here before me so I'm well aware of that I um, I know of the Ukunzu narrative I also know of the Ubodu narrative. I know that the Ubudus, for example, say that uh, Ubudu is actually the headquarters of the old Lukumi people, but because of a serious issue that happened during the Ekumeku, during the Ekumeku revolt uh, that happened, um, there was a battle um, that was staged at Ukunzu in 1904. And at that battle, the white colonists, the British, of course, decided to move you know, because of, you know, what happens now when there is a dissent in a particular town, the British sees like, ah, these people are not favorable. So there was a decision to move the native authority headquarters to Ukunzu from Ubudu because the British saw the Ubudu people as rebellious, the most rebellious of the Odiani or the Olukume during the Ekumeku. Um, so according to the narratives of the Ubudu people, they say that is what makes Ukunzu the head of the Odiani clan today politically but that culturally they are actually the head of the Olukumi. But I'm not going to go into that because that's not the purpose of no, it's, not, it's, not, it's not necessary. Exactly. And it's not productive. Yeah. Either, legally, right? legally, and what um, pertains to all the chieftaincy within the Delta state, what the government has, and it's Ukunzu. So the government will not bypass that for cultural Yes, exactly. So it's gazetted. It's just, so government. It's just, a whole, of, it's just a whole of bureaucracy. Exactly. <laughs> it's just a whole of bureaucracy is going through. And right now, this um, commission library is part of the Delta State um, initiative to keep cultural, um, cultural tales. Again. And they've, of course, they they've had to put it in Okunzu because that's what they know as the legal um, head rights. And the other, from the other seven Odiani clans. Uh, okay with it. So yeah, we have that awful back and forth with Bodu, but then Bodu cannot be on their own. That so more than anything else, they will still have to just accept. But culturally, yes, we they do have that, and there's a lot of respect to that. Like Olukumi means my friend. We don't say my lover. Olukumi actually means my friend. That's that's what we know it as. Um, and the essence of that was that the Olukumi people are supposed to be one tied, regardless of the clan you're coming from. Uh, so that also just happens every now and then, but then it's you still go back to the Abogidi. <laughs> of course, you're from Ukunzu, so I understand, <laughs> I understand whatever sentiment I have about uh, Obiogo, uh, the Abogidi uh, um, of Ukunzu. But, uh, you know, it would be very interesting if we would have someone from Ubudu <laughs> here on stage. But like I said, uh, I maybe we had should... someone here. She had to leave. My, my friend was here with me and she had to leave. She's from Ubudu. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, maybe if your friend can come back, she can tell us uh, how uh, Ubudu is actually the head and Ukunzu comes after. <laughs> that would be. But I would go into the I historical think, narrative. I think for us, both... uh, us younger generation, we we don't really care because we're trying to keep that Olukumi legacy for all the nine clans, not necessarily who's who and who's not. The toss is really between the chiefs and we're trying to reignite that knowledge because a lot of people even within delta state do not really know about the olukumi because we have um what we call 
we, it's some of like an intonation dialect. We've had to intermarry, we've had to intertribal. And then in Olukumi towns, when you go in, they do, they just tell you one banisi, which is you want to speak Igbo or you want to speak Olukumi. So most people really do speak Igbo or Nyocha. So the Olukumi dialect is also dying. And this is because of the toughness of the elders. So I think the younger generation not necessarily care about all that talk. We just want to keep that legacy, that which is what we're fighting for, so that we're a bit more um, openly traversed to all that Yoruba clan so that they actually get to know the Olukumi people. Wow. Um, that is um, That gave me some sort of mixed emotions, you know, hearing about, um, the, but, I mean, not like I didn't know before or not like, you know, some of us didn't know, we know, but it's also very hard for me to know that the focus right now amongst the old Lukumi people is actually to keep their identity intact and uh, forget about minor squabbles. I think <laughs> some of us that, uh, you know, that come from some of the bigger uh, groups can, we actually have a lot of lesson to learn from that, that <laughs> it's not about the fights, but it's actually about, you know, Keeping the identity, keeping the legacy, yeah, keeping the legacy in place and forgetting about just forget about all these minor squabbles like, oh, this one versus this one, that one versus this one, which king is superior. And, well, and by inferior. bigger, you mean geographically bigger, the bigger groups, the rest of just, us, yes, geographically and population wise, yeah. you know, yes, that's what I mean by the, by the bigger groups. So, you know, squabbles, at the end of the day, squabbles would do you no good. So it's very, very hard for me to hear that for the Olukumi people in Delta State, the focus right now is, number one, um, exposing themselves to other Yoruba people so that we also learn about you people. And also, you know, if you have any plight, we can sympathize with your cause. And also uh, keeping the identity intact because, unfortunately, uh, the linguistic situation seems to be very, very precarious. So that's very hard to mean as well. Uh, I know that, um, you know, the towns there, um, you know, are having things like recitals, competitions, and uh, amongst some people, they are even reverting back their names, you know, from uh, from Inwani names back to Lukumi names. I've seen a few examples myself. I know a few people in Lagos who have actually reverted their names from Inwani to, to Yoruba. So that's very, very interesting. Um, um, so I have a quick I question. About, I have a quick question before you go ahead, White Lion, if I can ask. Yes, yes, of course. Okay, I, I, I'm just um, trying to find out if you can talk about it, if it's part of what you're going to be talking about, or if uh, if you can help us with that. I'm just thinking about the spirituality part of the um, Olukumi people you know, part of their culture and their religion, and to see if it's also like their language ties into the Yoruba um, language as well. Thank you. Would you want me to take that? Um, yes, if you want to take that, you can take that. I think uh, it would be very, very, it would be better actually hearing from you as a native of the place. So it would be, it would be good hearing from you first before I jump into it. So it's very intertwined. And this is also, um, it's an unfortunate situation in terms of um, what the influence has done to the language and um, the diversity of it. But it's, there's also a beauty of that diversity because we are surrounded by um, the Edo's, the Shakiris, and the Igbo's and the Anyomas around us. So there's a lot of interconnection and then you find that the practices are pretty much all over. So you have practices that, like within the um, the say tribe, that is very Yoruba, like very Ife culturist, that they have to do all of those things. And then you see most side of the a bit more modernized um, people towards the. Um, Odogu Ibuna region, which is very Igbo. And then, so there's a lot of diversity in it. There's traditionalists, there's a lot of Christian mix, and then there's a lot of um, the, the feeling. But then we originally keep that Yoruba influence regardless. So the one thing, the beauty of that diversity has not tainted where the Olukumi people know that they are coming from. It's just that because of 
how things are growing modern wise that separation of home is very far for so many people so when they leave they just tell you they are anyocha and they really because they don't know either the language or the homestead or the traditions that are practiced there they can't exactly explain what it is except they go into their clans and they can say oh this clan practices this or this clan practices that but it's a it's a huge mix really huge mix Wow, very interesting. Thank you very much, Ifi. Why don't you can go ahead to Yes, thank you very much, Ifi. Um, if you just notice, I just um, you know, I just made you moderator because you, I, <laughs> um, we all feel that you would be very, very useful. It would be very useful having you here to offer more insights as uh, a native. You know, um, it wouldn't be very good if we have a native here on stage and then we're just discussing, discussing without taking, uh, uh, you know, into cognizance that we actually have someone who is from there. So, uh, once again, Ifi, thank you very, very much for those insights. Um, so, like I said earlier, um, Ukunzu, uh, or natively known as Ekoefun, um, you know, is also one, together with Ubodu, uh, the two, are regarded to be the two oldest towns in the Odean clan or amongst the Olukumi people. Um, they are all referred to Odiani, like I said, which in Igbo would mean, um, uh, you know, the people of antiquity. Odiani, and it means land. So when you say Odi, when you refer to people as Odiani, you're referring to them as an ancient people. It's somehow analogous to the Europe, um, to the concept of um, Odinani or Odinala amongst the Igbo people. So just know when you when you when you see someone being referred or a group of people being referred to be Odiani, it means those people <laughs> are very 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 ancient people very very ancient so because otherwise they would not be referred to as odiani um but going to the situation of personal names um you know amongst the the olukumi people today the vast majority of olukumi people have Igbo names um some of these Igbo names uh, are names unique to the to the anyoma area you know uh, like names like um, f uh, what name could I even names like Ophili, for example, you know, would be found in Western Igbo land. But a few at times, you know, some of them do have Yoruba names, but usually appears in middle names, middle names or first names. But very rarely do they have Yoruba last names. So that is the uh, situation with personal names presently amongst the Olukomi people. Um, I did a little bit of research and uh, was able to come up with uh, a list of Yoruba names that I was able to find amongst the uh, Olukomi people. We have names like Bami, we have names like Temiremi, we have names like Yolawa, we have names like Moyo, Nikade, Temife or Temufe or Temi, we have Basimi, we have Ikade. We have Olawoli, we have Oyomituli, we have Bamishiri, we also have Bayo, we also have Omola or Mola, we have Ayikumi, we have Majomi, we also have Abiodun, we also have Yemiwa, and so on and so forth. These were all names that I've been able to find amongst various Olukumi people, which are obviously Yoruba. Some are more ambiguous, but I don't want to take the risk. Uh, take the risk. But these particular names, I mean, it's it's pretty much, it's clear as day that these names are Yoruba or of Yoruba provenance. Um, a professor of anthropology and sociology from the University of Benin in person of uh, Professor Angulu uh, Onwe Jogu referred to the Olukumi people as, in quotes, the lost Yoruba tribe in, an, in a particular lecture which he had in um, the University of Benin in the year 1987. But we are all, you know, I mean, I don't think that situation holds true anymore because I don't think they can be referred to as the lost Yoruba tribe. They are known now and, um, you know, the publicity can only, the publicity can only increase from here henceforth. Um, also, like this, our sister Ifi said, and also which corroborates some of the things I have here, um, these places, they all trace their histories back to Yoruba land. And, um, you know, they are all very, very conversant with their Yoruba, um, um, you know, their Yoruba heritage. And interrogation with the um, 
uh, an interrogation with one uh, Mr. Odigwe Umokocha, you know, um, who is also who is also uh, someone from um, the Anyoma area who went there to do some field work, found that, um, you know, the majority of the people, they are still very much in touch with their Yoruba, with their Yoruba roots. Um, the Olukumi language uh, is a variant of the Yoruba language, uh, which most closely, like some of the people uh, here on stage already talked about earlier when I played that sound clip, uh, they speak a variant of the Yoruba language which most closely re uh, resembles those of the Southeastern Yoruba dialectal grouping. So among, um, you know, or within the Yoruba language cluster as a whole, uh, there are five major groups. One of those groups is the Southeast Yoruba dialectal grouping. And uh, this is the particular uh, uh, dialectal group in which Olukumi shares uh you know Olukumi shares uh you know more parts of the of its vocabulary you know the inventory of its vocabulary with um also with the other yoruba dialects but more with the southeastern yoruba dialects and um you know it has surprisingly remained relatively intact you know uh, even after hundreds of years of translocation in their new, um, you know, in their new location, after being detached from the main body of, um, you know, uh, um, um, of, of Yoruba people. Um, so the contiguity had been broken for hundreds of years, but surprisingly, they were able to maintain that linguistic legacy, even though now uh, we have a situation where um, the language is, is it's, it's, the, the 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 linguistic situation is precarious the language is is tending more towards uh, what i would call the, what i would call uh, a moribund uh, language but hopefully the situation can be reversed uh, i'm not sure if black lion mr olabola uh, sister Doom, or tumba or any other person on stage has anything to say at this point otherwise maybe i should just continue does anybody have anything to say well yeah, done, uh, Mr. White Lion. I could share that with you. Thanks, Ify, for the additions and the updates. So I would just like to reiterate some of the things you you said. More like punching those things, and I will um, link that to answering the question from Sister Ado in my own way, even though you've done justice. I could share. So the question was... Um, the Olukumi people of Delta State. And very quickly, Mr. Um, White Lion, are the Olukumi people only restricted to present-day Delta States or we have some other small clans and villages in other states? Yes, there are some quarters within certain, uh, certain towns in uh, Edo States that also have Olukumi um, ancestry. Yeah. Got it. So, yeah, so the Olukumi predominantly in Delta State and Edo States. So are these people... Are, those, are they the ancestors, like specifically the ancestors of the Lukumi people we have in the, like the Yoruba diaspora? So that was um, the question. So to answer that question, like um, Mr. White Lion did, one would have to look at what was the reality in terms of the name of the Yoruba people, or say names, the group names of the Yoruba people in um, antiquity or classical times, or maybe some 300, 400 years ago. So if one studies um, those maps that White Lion like um, cited and um, many of the literatures from, say, 200, 300 years ago, even 400 years ago in some instances, one would find something very striking. You would find that, yes, while Yoruba people are very diverse over a large expanse of a geographical area, and then as such we've um, evolved into different differentiations of um, subgroups, there is still the idea of the common identity everybody recognizing that common heritage the fact that we are one and the same people so the common impression today in pop culture that we began as different people trying now to unite as the same people that um, view is terribly erroneous in fact, what we have is that we are one and the same people that evolved over millennia into sub-ethnic groups. And that's how we would find it with any nation out there in the world. 
So it's the, it's the other way around. So what names have this group of people, this Egba or Yo and all these other people that recognize themselves together to be one people, what names have they described themselves as or have been described by others as over the course of their long history? So some of those names would be Yoruba, like we probably, I mean, we know today. And one other one is Olukumi. So Olukumi is just a group name for the Yoruba people that we've used in the course of our history. Everybody wants you belong to that Ebi system because it, that's really what it is. So Ebi um, in English would translate loosely to family. But one can argue kinship and all those things. Something of blood connecting you to one common mythology, ancestry, history, language. Yes, over time you would start having differentiations and, and so on and so forth. And that's unnatural. But the idea that they recognize themselves to the same people and they do have the group name. And that group name, one of those group names, there is not one group name constant throughout our history. One of those group names is... Olukumi. Olukumi is one of those groups group names. Another one which we know is Yoruba. So maybe we'll have a topic on that Yoruba issue in, in the future. So let's come back to the one called Olukumi. Yoruba, Omodua, etc. etc. So one group name is Olukumi. Every single person. In fact, you find evidence for this in literatures and maps. There is one map I can, if I'm able to pin. Um, from the Library of Congress, maybe a 17, I think it's a 1700 map or a 1600 or 1800, amongst those that uh, Mr. White Lion has cited earlier. So it, you would find where it says, it, the annotation says R dot Ulkumi, O U L C O U M I. We will get to the issue of the spellings. So Regna Olukumi, so that is the kingdoms of Olukumi, you would find that inscribed in that area where you would consider to be Yoruba land, roughly that area, you would find that name inscribed across that vast territory in that map. So apart from maps, and Mr. Wetline has done a great job in that regard, there, there, there are literatures. Ah, there is a mic on. Mr. Obalo Jabami, mute my king. So apart from maps, many of which Mr. White Lion has cited, and one of which um, I'm looking for now so I can send it to him and so he can pin for us. There are literatures repete from 1600s, they panel rights, not only mentioning Olukumi as that group of people, that Yoruba people, what we would call Yoruba people today, that group name, that territory, not just one portion of it you would find descriptions, not just writing the name, descriptions telling you in that literature, in that writing, that this is a territory of people between Benin area. Benin is on the right hand, which is the eastern side. And then on the left extremity, the western extremities, you would find the Dahomey region. That's how one of those um, literatures uh, puts it. And then it says between these two extremities, Benin to the right, and um, Dahomey to the left. In between these two is the region called Lukumi. So if you pick up a map today, there is no other territory that fits those, you know, fits in between those two frontiers apart from Yoruba land. So yeah, the maps show it clearly and visually on one hand, and you can also see notes describing, like you can see efforts to really capture what we're talking about. So it's a name, it's a group name, one of the group names that we have used over the course of our long history, Olukumi, used it generically as a group, not just restricted to one people. Now, having described, having cited those literatures and those um, the maps, let's now look at um, this. So we've seen the area, we've seen the people that are called Olukumi as a group name. So what is the etymological derivation of this name? And then this is not to say Mr. White Lion has not like dealt with this completely. It is just to punch in what he has said to us. So we like really catch it. So two Yoruba words, roughly two, have come together to produce what we have, what we call what we have now as Olukumi. And the one part would be 
the part that says Oluku. And the other part will be the one that says Mi Oluku. Ati, that is and Mi Oluku. Mi. So those two come together to form Olukumi. So one that would become very easily apparent, obvious to most um, speakers of the uh, of the standardized theory. But by standardized, I mean the common one that we all have, apart from our differentiations and dialects. There is one central one that everybody can easily relate to. So we can see that me, everyone can easily relate to me in today's standardized common Yoruba language. Yoruba, Jumogbo, Itigubuagbo. And that is the part that says me. That's mine in English. Me. So that's clear. So now let's go to Oluku. So I'm conversant with the Ijebu dialect of the Yoruba language. So Ijebu is one of those languages that still, you know, kind of stable, preserves some of the old words in usage. So this is very frequently used in Ijebu, like every day it's an everyday thing and they would use it to just mean friend oluku in that sense so some people have given examples of you know some dialects where it's been used as a um, lover yeah maybe but yeah i know it like this is a everyday reality to be oluku friend so if we merge these two together now oluku don't you friend a teaming Mine, we have Olukumi, my friend, just that way. But then, if we really want to go even more literally into Oluku, which means friend, how does this become friend? Yes, we can understand Ore, which may be Ore may be uh, an innovative third form, innovative form that came after Oluku, and both of them could even have the same antiquity. It is possible, not necessarily that one is older than the other. But we can see what's going on in ore, for example, which we use more commonly today for friend. Ore, the verb there is um, re, and the or is the like the noun maker ore. So re would be to mean to be in agreement to pali. We have no disagreement, and that's just fine. And tajore, long will ore. So we can see how that we can see what's going on there literally with Ore. But in Oluku, it's just like you're I'm giving it out, like take it, it means friend. Don't ask me a question, even though you can't see how it means friend, but just take it. But actually, you we can see if we just pay attention to the word like maybe more closely. Oluku. We use this olu something in different, uh, you know, context. Some, if you are, if you have a very good grasp of the language, you can see the difference when Yoruba say olu, and when they say olu, the tone, different tones, tells you that mm, something different may be going on here. Olu is that one person or one thing amongst its other members, and it stands out in a kind of unique way from the other ones amongst children one that stands out from the other children in a very good and unique way you call him olu or more the one that stands out from the other kids that's if you have many cities the one that stands out in a very unique and grand way from the other cities you call it olu ilu usually the capital city so that is for olu but here it is not olu it is olu so something different is going on here so Yorubas would use Olu with this different tone from Olu. We use it to refer to you are making a description of somebody that does something or something that does something. If I say Olu Bani, you are referring to one whose action, continuous action, he does it to, you know, a salvation, to save one. Olu Bani, we, in language, you may use it to refer to God or Ludumar if you like. To speak the Yoruba language, Olubani. So, in that sense, we see we are describing someone that does something. It's a continuous, present continuous thing. It does, Olu, just refers to the act of doing something. This is what this person does. So, whatever follows that Olu would now describe specifically what that person or thing does. Olu, he does, okay, Bani, oh, to save one. So, here, if we bring that um, idea into Olu Kumi, so we know what Olu means here. It is not Olu, it's a, that one's a different one. Here it is Olu, the one that does it, kind of a um, continuous action. So what does this person do? Ku, the word Ku there, lower describe, that describes specifically what we are referring to here. Enito Ku, Olu Ku. Enito Manku, that one 
whom after everyone has deserted, after everyone has left you, maybe after they have said their goodbyes, there is still that one that remains with you, will not leave you. Oluku entoku. So we see what's going on here. Oluku entoku e kunongwe no luku. That one that remains with you, that's what this person does. He wouldn't say goodbye. He would be with you. Oluku. And then when we add me, that my own Oluku. That's what we're saying here. So we see that Oluku is kind of actually deeper than just say friend. Someone that is in agreement with you. They may say they are goodbye at some point. But Oluku is way deeper than just friend. Even though it's most used as friends, but the level of friendship we're saying here is almost like like very deep. In fact, a, a more literal English word that seems closer, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's closer than friend. You could say close friend. Yes, close friend would do it. But if we want to look for one word, it will be companion. A companion is that person that is always like closely knitted everywhere you go. Ejowani, Ejowani, your companion. Or you could extend it to say confident, but literally companion would most, because confident would be like sharing something. The idea of sharing is embedded in confident. But Luke is just describing the idea of you will not leave, you will be with me. So companion is more close, but you could say confident, you could say friend. So that is Olukumi as a Yoruba word, my companion, my confident, my ally, my friend. So having them, um, you know, discussed the geographical region like I did earlier. So we see that it's a group name for the Yoruba people. In one of the group names we've used in the course of our history, one. And the second one is that what does this name really mean? And rather than just give it to me that it means this, can you tell me how it means that? And we've just done that, Olukumi. Um, I want to touch on now the question itself. Are these the people of you know, Omo, the people of Delta and some in Edo State that we're discussing who, who goes by this same name? Are, do, are they the same people of um, the diaspora Yoruba community who also have the same name in some of their you know practices, maybe religion or even their own their whole designation? Is it like um, it's a remnant of those same people of Delta states? So the answer to this question would have been by now be you know become obvious given the two backgrounds of the geographical region. And that the fact that it's a group name for Yoruba people in the course of our history one and what it means in Yoruba language. So that should like set the stage for the answer already. And the reality here is that the Olukumi people of um, Delta State trace their history. So it's not a case of um, some people in Delta State, Yoruba people are trying to say they are, they are related to Yoruba and those people don't agree. No. It's a case of they are saying proudly identifying with their Yoruba heritage. We are Yoruba, and we are saying, of course, you are welcome, our people. So we both we are both in agreement in that sense. So these people of Delta State, they trace their origin to Yoruba land somehow. If uh, do anywhere, you know, we may we may discuss the differential areas, but one thing as we are discussing our differences in we particularly, we are at the same time agreeing on one thing. That's okay, they are Yoruba people, people with Yoruba heritage and roots. So they've come from here and they've settled within this um, other people who are non-Yoruba like that. And this is not something of um, some, you know, few hundred years ago, some of our recent migrations like, oh yeah, we, we moved here. This is something that goes way deep into antiquity. And I'm going to touch on that. Mr. White Lion has hinted that already, and I would um, touch on that. So we can be clear that it's not a case of, um, you know, some 100, 200 years ago migration, and they just moved there. And the people there said, okay, you want to live here? Okay, let's give you that land, stay beside us. And we, no, that's not what's going on here, and we'll get to that. So these Olukumi people agree that they are from Yoruba people. They have the Yoruba roots. Now we can understand why the name Olukumi survives there. It survives because Yoruba people generally regard themselves as this Olukumi. So if some of us would then leave to go into that area, then it is more likely that Orukotonje, they would go with that their name. 
And it is good that that name have survived and they've done a great job in preserving that identity. Even though we've moved on to other names today, Yoruba, for example. And this is not to say one is more of an antiquity than the other, Yoruba or Lukumi. It is just to say we've described ourselves with different identities, group names over the course of our long history. And apparently one of those names that is more predominant at the time when the Lukumi people must have moved is that word Olukumi itself, that name Olukumi. And they left with that and it survived till date. So... What do we find with the transatlantic slave trade? Many of our people were victims, as um, many other people in West and Central Africa. So people were shipped to the Americas. They were shipped when? At a time when our group name was Olukumi. So we can see what's going on here. The people in America are called Olukumi because that's who they are. That's the name they bear when they were taken. The people in Delta State were, are called Olukumi. They re retained the name Olukumi because that's who they are. That's where they left from, the same name that everyone uses. So it's not a case of the Olukumi people found a way. The Olukumi people of Delta State. It's not a case of them, the Olukumi people of Delta State, finding a way to the Americas. It's a case of Olukumi people of Delta State are from the larger Olukumi group in Yoruba. And the Olukumi people of the Americas are from the larger Olukumi. That was the name at the time when each of them was moving to their respective places. And this is not to say the time of the slave trade was the same time when the Olukumi people migrated to where they are. No. And I believe um, the Olukumi people's migration uh, goes far back into deep antiquity than the slave trade period. So that would, um, in my opinion, seem to answer the question of Shonwa uh, Lukumi, not Lolosi, not um, the Americas, not particularly, but it's a case of there is a factor, the general Olukumi name common to the Olukumi of Delta State and common to the Olukumi people that went to um, the Americas. The same group of, it's just a larger pool, the major GT extracted that from one larger pool at different periods uh, of time. So, um, as regards the antiquity, I don't know much about this, but Mr. White Lion hinted something that I thought I should uh, expound on. More like I'm um, putting it out there as food for thought or even asking questions, if anyone would uh, would um, answer. So, you talked about Odiani. I don't speak Igbo, even though I have uh, many Igbo friends. So, and you said this has something to do with land. If we, if we then had to break this down, we would say something like, they are autochthonous people. Is that correct, Mr.? Because if um, a group of people are... Of course, in, yes. In relation to land, that concept is similar to what we would call Imole in Yoruba language, or Alale, which we you know, the aspect that is most apparent to us today of the uh, word alale or imole, this is the spiritual aspect. But literally speaking, it is just saying that these people were the autochthones. They can't, we can't remember history of them migrating from anywhere. Imole, like the Yoruba people can't, their Yoruba descendants can't think of, can't remember those ancestors telling them that we came from another land. That's what the idea of Imole. And you find this among the Shakiris. They call them the Umale. When Ginoa was coming, um, he met the Yoruba group there and the, the Umale. So we have the same idea in Yoruba, general Yoruba land, we say Imole. So in fact, because the idea of the spirituality survives, we add the Iron to describe the number. We prefix it with Iron to describe the number of Imole. And then we just connect this purely to the gods and the deities. Yeah, but the idea is that uh, we are the basic idea, whichever way you look at it, whether it's spirit, spiritual divine beings, Longwu, or you are just looking at the people, Totiwambe, the basic idea is that we are descendants of some people whom we did not hear from them that they migrated from other lands. That's the basic idea. They are autochthonous. So now coming back to the Odiani. So, uh, I don't know. Ani would mean land, like you said. Or D would mean... Uh, would you, do you want to break it down for me? The word that, itself. Or the, that which exists. That which exists. Okay. So, now... That, or, in, in short, that is... That which is the land. Or that the which, okay. That which is the land. So, in this sense now, we're referring to people... 
Now, what I can see clearly from this, and I'm throwing this out there for people to make whatever inferences they want to make. But one thing I would, my own inference would be that this is not some recent migration of, oh, when our people started going to the Americas or not those kind of migration, some migration that is deep into antiquity. So my questions would be this name or the Ani, and if you compare it side by side with the Olukumi, which has survived for these people, yes, these two names refer to that same people, but one is easily identified to be Yoruba word, Olukumi, and the other is easily identified to be Igbo word. So these people are saying, you know, we are from the Yoruba roots, but then they have a name that survives from them, an Igbo name that survives from them. So this would mean, for me, this is my inference, this is a description more like an exonym for them. A description that came from outside of that, their own group, because it's not a Yoruba word, from the Igbo people. So that would mean that if the Igbos would recognize, this is not to say the Igbos necessarily met them there or they met Igbo, that's not what I'm saying. But if the Igbos would recognize the idea that these people, oh yeah, 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 you have a right to land, you are people of the land, it just suggests one thing, at least, that this is not some recent migration, even though their history recognizes that they are of Yoruba roots, but this is not some some recent, it's, it's a migration that goes back into antiquity. It's not an it's not a Yoruba name, and it's a name that is most likely an exonym, a name named to them by people outside their own group. And these people are calling them our oh, people of the land. So at least we are talking about deep antiquity. So I thought I should like um, you know, touch on the geographical region like I started with, Yoruba land. It's a one of the group names we've used, Olukumi, and that name survived for the people of Olukumi in Delta states to the part of Edo states, who like um moved out of the larger Olukumi people and then, um, you know, kept that name intact. And we've seen the ge geographical region covered by this and um, from the maps and from the literature that I, you know, roughly cited, not specifically by pointing out, you know, page numbers and books, uh, etc. So we've seen the etymology of the name Olukumi. We've seen the mean, the mind, Oluku used to mean friend. And we've broken it down to say, not, don't just take it as friend, see how it is friend. And even, even deeper than friend. So my companion, my confidant. And um, we've seen how not necessarily the Delta Olukumi people are the one that went to the Americas. But instead, they, uh, each of them, each of those two groups, are from the same generic pool of Olukumi people. A name that was the predominant group name at the time when they moved respectively to their own places. And uh, we've seen the food for thought in the Odiani. Like, why would they be described as Odiani? In fact, let's just leave the Odiani thing. Like, why would they be described as Odiani? So I'm just going to leave it at that. I take it away, Mr. Wala. Wow. Mr. Wala, Wala, lecturer Pro Max. <laughs> that was very, very enlightening indeed. Um, I'm not sure if Mr. Black Lion has uh, one or two things to say. Otherwise, I can go on. Uh, Mr. Black Lion, do you have anything on? Or uh, if he, yeah, you have one or two things to add. I'll yeah, just okay. add a few things mm -hmm. to it. Uh, Olabola has really, really broken everything down, like in a pro max way. You know, I couldn't have said it all better uh, with what he said. But just to add, in the region, um, Olokun worship is very, very predominant there. I, I'm I don't know if you're gonna go into dying in uh in continue in continue job but i just thought to add that uh olokun worship is very very strong especially at uh, i think um Okunzu. so they are the ones that came from uh Udo Sen in um, Edo states which um, a lot of people don't know is uh yeah this you but you thank god you mentioned it earlier and i hope some people are jotting some things down um Usen is yoruba land so um they 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 ukunzu came from uh, usen and they took olokun to that region now that olokun worship from there is spread to other um, anioma areas like ika and uh, i think uh, mostly ika basically and the uh, ubulubu or something so um yeah the olokun worship is very predominant there and um, the, uh, we, we had sort of that contiguous spread around the, the, the general Anioma 
area so um yeah i just thought to add that to the conversation so uh, i have a request uh white lion can i can i make the request because I'm, I'm i'm kind of more interested in what uh, yeah please go ahead with the request yeah i was going to request that if uh black lion knows more about what he just mentioned now the part of the spirituality that has to do with the local and if he can elaborate more on that um anytime during the discourse thank you okay yeah i'll 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 try and give um uh, um much more elaboration on it and i'll pin one or two youtube links um on that but yeah oloku is um, quite predominant in fact there's a family called okungbowa in um in Ika, so their their origin is actually Ileife, you know, and uh, they are very prominent. In fact, some people don't know that one of the biggest Ika town called Boji Boji is actually of uh, Yoruba origin, you know. And we also have a very yeah, it's a minute, it's a minute um, um, link, but we have some. Okay, let me give an example. We have um, this popular musician, Alariwo. You see, in his son name, you see Bami Dele or something there. So um, that shows that um, he has a, he, when, when he was talking about his history to uh, a lot of his crew members back in the days, he has a very, very close tie with uh, Hussein. So there, there were a few points of spread from uh, Olu, Olu, within the Olukumi and um, amongst the uh, Yoruboid people that are scattered around that region. Um, one of them, like uh, Mr. Black, Mr. White Lion mentioned, was um, from the Owo area, Anakure. The, the other one was Hussein. So those from Hussein have that very strong Ilefe link. So that is how Olokun spread among the Ika people. So yeah. So um, there are a few, there are other few notable. Uh, if you look at my PTR, you um, you see a, a lady that talked about um, uh, a native name, and there are also few notable notable um, um, Olukomi people like that as well. One of them is the popular musician um, Zeal of uh, former Star Plus. He also has a native uh, middle name. Um, that is Yoruba of origin. So yeah, um, as the conversation goes, I'll try and pin one or two links on um, Olokun worship amongst the um, Anioma people. Thank you very much uh, for that beautiful expose, Mr. Black Lion. Um, White Lion, can I ask a question? Black Lion, have you been to Boji Boji Owa? Um, I've not been there. I've not been there to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I have a few friends there that are very much into um, Olokun worship. So that's how I sort of knew. So the um, what Black Fire was saying, yeah, the Ika people, especially Boji Boji, so if you're in Agbo area, the Ika people, and you say Boji Boji, somebody will definitely shout and say Owa. So it's like, um, it's a town name, but it's also a greeting within that area and they do have that um there's a lot of worship um in that regard more than even the the anyoma areas as in the olukumi areas because of how popular it is now in um, in ika um so like in the in the 90s when we were in school in abo it was so openly practiced most of the practice are not so much because of of course christianity now but I remember primary, secondary schools when we lived in Abo, it was so predominantly open that you would easily um, find, it's almost like evangelism. They were very open about it. Um, most of the practices these days do, I don't know how documented they are or how sustainable they are, but I do know that um, in terms of prevalence, the Ika people have almost sort of like um, taken it into their own traditional practices um, as well. Um, coming to the other end, uh, I'm seeing questions of, I'm seeing a 
not a question, pretty much like a debate of people going back and forth about the history of whether um, the Olukumi people migrated or not migrated. <laughs> so um, like the, I'm just going to say professor, because you gave a really resounding um, intern on, on what you were saying earlier on. There, There is, it's not necessary, it's not a spobble about whether they came or um, they came to meet people. It's almost, the history is almost as though the, most of the clans were already there and the migration of other clans coming to join them was what made Odiani. Not necessarily like they were never there before because the history of the, the history of migration is not the whole Olukumi clan that is there now. It's more or less like there were a sustainable tribe there conforming to that region as their region. And then you now had more clans come to join them to make that Odiani. So the Odiani is pretty much like a name that was given from other external places that made them that to be able to identify those people that came in to continue being sort of like to form that one um, nine groups pretty much. So it's not so much of a debate of they were all in Ife and somehow just entered one bus or Keke and started coming to Delta States. No, they had a tribe there. Many Yoruba clans were of different areas. It wasn't, I think the geographical, we need to remember that the way our geography works in Nigeria, it's what it's not what it is now. There are a lot of places that wear what they wear. And then because of you having to do states and local governments area, so a lot of places have had to be divided to diversify, putting them into certain regions. So there are so many places within Nigeria that are, that are actually not supposed to be where they've been created into. So you need to understand that vast geographical um, sort of like continuity as well for you to understand that these people did not necessarily just come from somewhere else. They were there and other people still came to join them because they had land there. I have a question. Yes, yeah, so Mr. Lokiti. Yeah, I have a question for my sister, if you or anyone else has. So, I mean, from uh, my sister's last submission, so are you saying there's land contiguity between Yoruba land and where you have Olukumi land today? Yes, from the history that we know and what we are compiling now actually goes beyond 400 years. So it's not necessary. It's still is the Nigeria that we don't know of. There's a lot of history that we don't know of Nigeria. Talk less of what we know now, what we're seeing in the geographical plane. So we cannot use what we know now as your 36 states and capital to actually define the history of where people are coming from. So anytime you're looking at a, like a, a people, you also need to understand that there has been, they have, they've been, they've been there. So you have to also uproot what it is that we do not know about our history that, of course, things have, the whole having to be Nigerians now have come to not necessarily destroy, just come to, up, to uproot. Do you understand? No, Nigeria has destroyed many of us. Let's let's not <laughs> be. Mm -hmm. I, I think destroys an. Nigeria has term. modeled a lot of things up. But Nigeria yeah, has but also actually, defined a lot of us. It, it, yeah, it's yeah, true. That's true. You, you can't take that away. Yeah. Nigeria has also defined a lot of us. And if you're if you're honest about being a true Nigerian, you are already diversified. Because I don't know one Nigerian that isn't from somewhere else that they don't even know about. Because there's so much history in us that we still have to uproot, which is the core of what most of us are finding out now, which is that legacy that we need to keep, not necessarily, oh, I'm this and that, but the core of where you're from, can you uproot it? Can you refine it to shine brighter than what it is that the, 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 the lax history has already given you? Uh, sorry, Mr. Lobola, can I just quickly add, Ife, thanks for the contribution and everything, but I just wanted to mention, we are not Nigerians. We don't, we, we don't consider ourselves as Nigerians. We're currently That's another trapped thing. in Nigeria. <laughs> exactly. In Nigeria, That's another we're not thing. Nigerians. 
Exactly. Just to so qualify. <laughs> exactly. That's another thing entirely now. Yeah, sorry, Ify. I, I actually totally agree with Bola because for me, I, I even consider it very insulting to call me a Nigerian because that is not where I am. So I totally agree with him because I, I do not see myself from the lens of a white man's view or did that, that consider my history starting in 1914. I'm Yoruba and that is what I am. So I don't... Absolutely. Really, Absolutely. If, if and I, these I, are I, the things that we need to uproot. Yeah, honestly, I, I even consider it very, very condescending to call me a Nigerian, to, to be honest with you. It's very condescending. Yes. Uh, Mr. Aki. Oh. Um, oh. Sister Adjun, do you want to go? Yeah, I'm here. Um, I don't know, Black Lion, I don't know if Black Lion is still there, because um, you seem to know a lot about the uh, Ika area, so I just wanted to ask you, um, as you also, because you said you were going to like look for something else to share with us. So maybe you could also, when you come back, that is, you could also go into um, this question I have. Um, if the worship of Uluku in Ika area came from your balance through Bini or came through another um, path, like um, from what I think, I the type, the type, type of impression that I have from people I've heard from, people who come from that area, is that a lot of the deities they have trace back to Bini. So I don't know if um, you could just try to like confirm that if the Olokun there in Ika area came from Bini or came directly from Ife through some other um, towns. Okay, thank you very much, Akin. Um, yeah, I think Ife a bit um, clarified, she enunciated on what I said, you know, and um, the, the spread of uh, Olokun in Ika area, especially the Owa area, it's uh, from two fronts. So one of them, obviously, is from the Olukumi uh, people of uh, Anyocha. And um, the other front was from the Benins as well. But um, like, um, like I do say, you know, the Benins, you know, uh, it's the, the way Olukum tradition got there and everything. It came from a very a pure Yoruba area in um, the obvious southwest area of um, Edo State, which is Usain. So Usain is, is Yoruba land, essentially. So um, that was how Olokun got to the Benins, and that is how it got to the Ika people. So there's no confusion on it. So, um, um, that, so that was the spread of it. And I made mention of a family. The Okungboa family, they are a very, very big family in Ika. So the when they had their recent Onuika, um, this thing where Ika people come and, and discuss their issues, the Okungboa said the the representative from that family said is from they came from Ileife. So he made mention of that, and um, so that is how Olokun um got really popular within amongst the Ika people and um what have you so yeah it's it's it, it, it's essentially from uh, the, the Usain and Bini area that was how we got there yeah. but the root is in okay. the still yeah 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 thanks in fact to even buttress one what you said about Usain there's there's actually something that um I found out recently that another name for that town is actually Ufekekere and you know, people who are familiar with how um, the Southeast dialect is would know that um, you know that's just Ife Kekere. So that for that to actually be another name for Usain, that that you know just goes to show how much um, Usain identifies with their um, Ife ancestry. But yeah, thank thank you, Black Lion, for that confirmation because I've always had that like impression that a lot of the spirituality of Ika came from Benin, even a lot of Bini um, spirituality also came from Yorubas, but like from Yoruba through Bini then to Ika. So uh, yeah, thanks for often the clarification through um, Usain that Usain was also sort of like where a lot of these things came to rest before actually spreading to Bini and um, other areas. Like apart from um, Ika, I know there's another group of people 
I can't remember who they are exactly, but they also worship the Ethiopia River as Onokun. So not Oloku, but Onokun. So it's like an N. They changed the L to N. And the traditions there also traces back to, you know, Yoruba land as well. So it's interesting to just think that maybe Usain was the place where a lot of these ideas were actually coming from. So yeah, thanks anyway. So let me, right. let me add something to the Onoko and the Ufe. So the, the idea of spelling, orthography and all those things, you know, they confuse us a lot. And all these things are, you know, fall out of the whole European mindset. So there is actually no pronunciation as if it came with the standardization of Yoruba writing. The I you have there, it is actually Ufe. So this whole Ife is, is quite relatively recent, the I spelling. It comes with orthography and the Yoruba standardization, different dialects, and then one became fixed. In fact, in Ife, they will still say Ufe. And in some in many parts of Yoruba and in Ijebu, if you are speaking Ijebu proper, you would say Ufe. So and in, you know, it's not just um it's very widespread and the I spelling. So Ife Kekere is actually Ufe Kekere. It's the same it's a, it's to say a smaller version of um Ile Ife. When the Oromeo expedition, you know, they settled there, many chieftaincy title, you know, was inaugurated there and then they continued their spread all the way to, to Benin. And as regards the Onoko, it's just a, a way of Yoruba. There is something in Yoruba, the N and the Li thing. So basically, they are used to describe possessiveness, to have something, to own something. So if you say Onoko, you are actually saying Onioko, any Tony. So there is, if you say Onoko, it's, it's just as correct. It's not even one degree less correct compared to Onoko. It's just exactly as correct to so it's not a case of they change the L. In fact, somebody could argue that, oh, they change the N to L. But I think there is no case of changing the L to N or changing the N to L. Both are just correct Yoruba rendition. It's, uh, it's a way of um, describing, you know, ownership. And you would find the same thing with the name we're discussing today, Olukumi. There is at least one, you know, writing literature from those classical times that has it as Onukumi, O-N-U-K-U-M-I. Among several, almost countless, countless other like um, ways of spelling um, the word Olukumi. But these two, Oluku and Onuku, they are just as um, Yoruba as each other. The other ones that you have are European attempts to grasp and transcribe our names like um, um, Olukumi, O U L. K U M I. So that's an European attempt to render it. And you have this, you know, small misspellings here and there. Lukami, Ulkami, and, and many more. In fact, some are just so off that you'd be like, ah, what is this Onyibo man thinking when he was spelling this? Yeah. But to, you know, punch that again, Onukumi, Olukumi, exactly the same thing. One is no more Yoruba than the other. And um, the one you mentioned, Oluku and Onoku, no. So, and the one of um, Oluku and Onoku, one is no more Yoruba than the other. One is just more popular than the other. Thank you right. very much. Oh, yeah, okay, so Otumba can make a submission, then Mr. Ingi can go after. Yeah, I think. All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'm sorry for, at least it's good for you so you can take some breaks. Uh, White Lion, please uh, make the best of 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 this break um i think there is a a question from one of our sisters uh ocean breeze to my dear sister ify uh, and i think it's really important that we educate ourselves uh you know using this question and and the response to it as a as a reference point and the question goes thus how do the olukumi people feel about self-determination and what would that look like geographically um and i know that sister if he tried to to uh make a response to that in the group chat but i see benefit in actually having sister if he uh clearly explain to everyone in the room probably not all of us would have access to the group chat uh 
But please, uh, Sister Ifi, you can take it away and reply to that, and we can give the mic to Enyi after that. Uh, Sister Ifi. Just Sister Ifi goes, um, I don't want it to look or seem like we are putting Sister Ifi on the spot to answer some people's questions because she's only talking because she chooses to do so, right? So I don't want it to look like, oh, I have a question for Sister Ifi and she must answer me. So if she chooses to answer that question, she can. However, if she wants to keep mom on the question, she also has, um, she can also do that. Of course. Of so course. the choice, yes. but of course, I don't want it to look like we are making her answer questions if she does not want to. Exactly. No, thank you for the thank caveat. Thank you, Lion. Yeah. Thank you. I actually already answered it, but I understand what you mean to echo that. So one of the one of the reasons I believe the Olukumi people have survived this long is because of the trickling down of that knowledge of where we're from. So, I mean, I have, they're very, in, in terms of like, let's say three generations back, um, the Olukumi people were very highly polygamous. So you have families where wives are five, six, children are, you know, 10 per wife, 15 per wives. Um, but one thing that has kept them is the trickling down of the knowledge of where they're from. If that is the only thing the Olukumi people have been able to do, they've done it very successfully. So I have cousins abroad that have never been to Nigeria, um, families all over the world that have never been to Nigeria, but they know they are Olukumi. They know the root of Olukumi, even if it's the basic. There's so much basics that people know that will probably keep the Olukumi people always in tangents with understanding where they're from. They're strongly fed their roots. So you had asked what the geographical, uh, what self-determination would be. I don't think it would change because one of the things we were taught as children was always that the knowledge of their understanding that Olukumi had always been here. It, it's not a geographical point. It's not whether you're in Lagos State or Ibadan. It's that you are Olukumi. You are from a Yoruba people. So you have that knowledge being trickled down to various people that are all over the world through a global unit that understand that, that is fed to that, and they trickle it down to their generations. I have a daughter that knows she's Olukumi, no matter where. I'm married to a Cameroonian, but my daughter knows she's part of the Olukumi kingdom. And whenever she comes to Nigeria, she's very fascinated about knowing that her lineage is on this pattern way. And that is something that has gradually gradually grown so far so we're not deluded by where we're from it's not it's not a geographical point is that we know that we're in delta state part of self-determination is that you know your legal your legal stance in the country that you're in but as a people the Olukumi people are very proud that they are from the yoruba land and I think that is something that a lot of people need to understand. We're not fighting, oh, we need to push this way. It's that we are from the Yoruba land. That's it. That's what we've known. That's what we've always known. And that's what we continue on. And we're hoping that we can use that as a way to also increase the language, the language um, sort of like difference, because we know that the language is one of the things that it's not, not necessarily dying out. It's just that there's a lot of influences that have continued over the years. So it's not as crystal clear as what it was maybe 100 years ago or even 50 years ago. So now we're, we're journaling languages of the Olukumi people to see how it would evolve in the next 100, 200 years because we've gone global and we want to, you know, we want to archive these things. So that's really it. I'm 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 okay answering that question, but thank you very much, White White Lion. All right, you're very very welcome. Um, I think someone wanted to say something. That was Enyi. Yeah, Enyi, please you can go. Okay, thank you very much. Well, I think she's um, if she has already answered uh, one of my questions because I've you know, I've been coming in in, in, in in out of the room uh, trying to be active, but because I'm very busy, I really can't be bored. I wanted to ask um, if the Olukumi people, um, if they identify as Yoruba first, but I think, you know, she's already answered that. But maybe if you guys can still, you know, try to 
you know, expand on it till um, that's still okay. And I want to also ask if they are indigenous to that land um, where they are right now in, in um, Delta State or if they migrated uh, to where they are right now. Then also, the, also I want to ask, um, do they practice do they practice the Yoruba culture and tradition uh, in their lands? Yes, that's that's those are my questions. All right. Um, thank you very much for your question, Mr. Eni. Um, if Sister Ifi wants to answer that, um, when she's ready. She can unmute and answer or just blink her mic to answer. Um, otherwise, um, since she the last thing she said was about uh, the linguistic situation in um, Olukume land and the attempts that are being made presently to rejuvenate the language and, um, you know, ensure that not only is it passed from parents to progeny, but also that it's, uh, you know, like even for those um, who have lost, uh, you know, the command of the language, they gain the command of the language once more and um, ensure that the language, uh, you know, uh, is stable and continues to be, uh, you know, passed along. So um, just talking about the linguistic situation among the old Lukumi, um, Dr. So, uh, White Lion, never been, just um, yeah. to add one more detail to what you said uh, in answer to the question from Engi. So if you look at my DP, you would see an Olukumi, a person proudly identifying with their Yoruba roots. By you know, can you see? You can see that talking drum. It's a Miss Olukumi kind of thing, and then so that talking drum just it speaks some volume to say, yes, we identify. We are Yoruba. Maybe not people, but we recognize our Yoruba heritage, because the idea of um, people over time, they've kind of um, you know formed an identity in a way. But then the Yoruba roots and heritage is still like um, much there, and it's something they're actually proud of. And that picture, picture there, right, right there, speaks um, volume. Mister Alabola, I can't see the way. Zoom, 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 zoom on the Olukumi. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna, but, I'm gonna zoom in. All right. Yes. Um. Yeah. So back to the linguistic situation among the Olukumi. Um. A certain Doctor Arukoyo, uh, a doctor of linguistics. Um. Um, you know, collaborated with uh, Greg Anderson and Dr. K. David Harrison at uh, Living Tongues Institute uh, in the year 2012 to create the first Olukumi talking dictionary. Uh, a previous version of the Olukumi, uh, you know, dictionary had an inventory of about 500 entries, about 500 words. But Dr. Uh, Dr. Arukoyo, uh, in collaboration with, like I said, Greg Anderson and uh, David Harrison, um, expanded the repertoire of that dictionary and presently it has more than 1500 olukumi words um, in that dictionary um, a few years after they published the first ever print dictionary for the olukumi language in 2017 and uh, copies of the dictionary were distributed in the various olukumi villages i have a certain picture of uh, dr arukoyo and the um uh, and the the obi of ukunzu the oloza of uh, of Ubudu and a few other traditional rulers, as well as children, community leaders, and um, I think they were church priests or something like that. They were di um, they were distributing uh, the Olukumi dictionary to people throughout the village. So I think this is a positive step, uh, you know, in ensuring the sustainability of the language. And uh, then in 2021, uh, last year, again, Dr. Aroko, you collaborated with Anna Luisa Degenault at, again, uh, living tongues to organize and import, I think about six six hundred more entries to the Olukumi, uh, uh, the published Olukumi dictionary that they already had in two thousand and seventeen. So there is at present uh, the new edition. Uh, there is a new Olukumi living dictionary that is in circulation right now. Um, if you want to procure that dictionary, I think there is a link for maybe there is any Olukumi person in the house or just generally for anyone who has um uh, interest also there is an online um there is an online edition i think the olukumi talking dictionary can actually be accessed via can be seen online and you can actually play the sound clips and listen to you know that's why it's a talking dictionary right you can play the sound clips and listen to those words uh, as being pronounced or as being allocated by a native olukumi speaker 
So, but for the, um, you know, for the print version of the Olukumi Dictionary, especially the latest one in 2021 that has, I think, about 2,100 um, entries, uh, I think with that, you would need to contact certain people to, to have access to that. So, the Olukumi people themselves have been making effort um, at revitalization and, um, you know, um, revitalization and ensuring through different programs, uh, you know, being organized in various Olukumi villages to sustain the interest of the youth, because we all know the Olukumi people are all, I think, out of the only three Olukumi villages, actually, right now are bilingual. That's uh, Ugbodu, uh, Ukun, uh, Ukunzu, Ikoefun, and um, uh, Ubulubu are bilingual. All the other Olukumi villages are monolingual in Enu and Igbo. So it's only these three villages that are still that still have some grasp of the Olukumi language. All the other Olukumi villages have been converted, uh, you know, along the course of history at one time or the other. They've all switched over. So there's there's been a linguistic exchange. So they've switched over to Igbo. But these three communities are the only ones that continue to, you know, maintain, you know, some form of the Olukumi language, um, you know, in everyday interactions. So um, there are efforts being made, um, you know, in the Olukumi villages. Uh, there are reciting competitions organized by the, uh, by the, what I have here, the Oloza of Ubodu, Ayo, uh, Israel Majesty, Obi Ayo, Isin Yemeze. Uh, the competition is about knowing, you know, or getting who can speak Olukumi without code mixing or code switching with any other language, be it English or Igbo. And, uh, you know, people are also now being encouraged to give their children Olukumi names and also to, you know, pray in their language because we all know Africans and spirituality. In fact, um, once you are able to make a language a church language or a mosque language, the rest is just just leave the rest. It's, everything is going to fall in place, right? So they are also ensuring that services are being, um, you know, uh, are being held in the Olukumi language and the people also learn to pray in the old Lukumi language for those who did not know how to do that either too. So now, um, you know, after talking about the linguistic situation, I would like to go into the traditions of origin. Um, there are various traditions of origin amongst the old Lukumi people, depending on the village in question. Uh, you know, but several accounts suggest that they have been there for a very, very long time indeed. Um, the traditional name, like I said earlier, that the clan which the which 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 the old Lukumi consist of, uh, they are being called by the other surrounding clans. They are being referred to as the Odiani, which means, like I said, the antiquated, right, or the people of antiquity. Uh, like Mr. Alabola also rightly said, synonymous with the concept of Alale in Yoruba or Umale or uh, Imale in Yoruba. Amongst the Yoruba, of course, he also, Mr. Alabala also talked about what happened in Ishakiri land uh, before the royal entourage from Benin. The Ishakiri people believed that the place had been inhabited for hundreds of years by an autochthonous people referred to as the Umale. So um, there was this particular Portuguese cartographer and explorer um, whose name is, uh, or whose name was Fernão Vau Duarado. So this Portuguese um, cartographer produced um, a historic navigational chart uh, or a map of West Africa in the year 1571. And in that particular map, um, the river running through what would later be known as Nigeria now was labeled Ai, the river Niger, right? The Niger River that sort of uh, bisects Nigeria into at least the southern half anyway, uh, bisects it into an eastern half and a western half. The river Niger was labeled in this 1517, 1571 map by Fernando Duorado um, as Rio de la Comi. Surprise, surprise. The Revenager was labeled wow. as Rio de la Comi. Yes. So now the question is, why was the Revenager labeled as Rio de la Comi? Is it because, well, you know what? We cannot. We should all. We can all speculate about why the Niger River was labeled as Rio de la Comi, but um, the question is maybe I don't know. I don't want to speculate. It might be because of uh, there is an Ishekiri element to that as well. Maybe we can explore that option. But I'm ju just to tell you that you know that name 
you know, as far back as 1571, the name was already in widespread use, you know, much so that, you know, the Niger River was labeled to be Rio de la Comi. But um, that apart, um, the British, even during the colonial period of Nigeria, right, British officials continue to file reports on the presence of various Olukumi villages in the Asaba in the in the Asaba in the Asaba division of the Benin province of colonial Nigeria throughout the 1920s and 1930s. So the British uh, colonial officers that would go do rec rec do reconnaissance, try and study the land and the people made several reports on the presence of Olukumi villages in the Asaba division of Benin province because back then Asaba division was still was still in the Benin. Uh, Benin province. As at back then, there was no concept of um, uh, Bendel or Midwestern state or Edo or Delta or whatever. There were just provinces, divisions, and so on and so forth. Uh, in the year 1953, one Horst Holrich Bear, who was a German scholar in Nigeria, observed that the Olukumi communities were conscious of their Yoruba origins and regarded their language as a Yoruba dialect. Ulrich Bear also argued that the term was a greeting. This was what Ulrich Bear said, but of course, he only he only made that submission based on how much he knew. He argued that the term was a greeting, meaning my friend, and um, and then drew the link between the Olukumi people who are now in Delta State and the Olukumi Yoruba diaspora in Cuba. So that was the first time that any link was actually done like oh okay oh wow so there is actually a link because earlier ethnographers who had known who had taken cognizance of the fact that the transplanted yoruba populations in cuba those who disembarked in places like havana uh, were referred to as olukumi but they came back to the geographical space that would that would be known as nigeria uh, today and um you know we're trying to look for a place called Lukumi or a people called Lukumi, but unfortunately they reported back and said they didn't find anywhere. So this was the first time that, you know, any link was actually made between any geographical point or any people somewhere that actually referred to themselves as uh, Lukumi as a group name and the Yoruba diaspora in the Caribbean. Um, again, by the year 19, uh, 1960, uh, Olukumis were reported in Asian towns such as Amaho by C.J. Okoje in his work, Eastern Native Laws and Customs, reported that there were several Olukumi quarters in uh, some of the southeastern Asian towns close to the bank of the Niger. Uh, Peter Martin Williams referred to uh, Olfat Dapa's map. Olfat Dapa was a German um, ethnologist and explorer. Dutch. Yes, sorry, not German, Dutch. He was from the Netherlands, yeah. Even though he had never left, he had never physically left the Netherlands before, but this man was just producing maps like no man's business. And he was labeling, <laughs> he was labeling various parts of the world, even though he had never physically stepped foot in any of them. But of course... Yeah, ju just to add context, not that he was making stuff up, he was getting no, 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 he wasn't making stuff reports up, of yeah. travelers and ethnographers. Yes, he, was, he, he had right. second and third hand sources exactly. that he was using to pick up. Yeah. No, he wasn't just making stuff up, but like he was making maps based on uh, the uh, sources of those who physically visited those places and reported back to this to this Olfa Dapa. And um, uh, Peter Martin referred back to Olfa Dapa's map, suggesting that in quote Ul Kami is no doubt the kingdom of Oyo, and that the term was derived from an Ijesha greeting. I don't know what you want to make of that, but like <laughs> this man said, Ul Kami, uh, that was shown on uh, Ulfa Dapa's map, the one from, uh, was it the 1600s or so, or so? The one I said earlier was labeled on the area north of the Lago de Kuramo, which would be the area of present day Lagos, uh, Kingdom, uh, Regnum de Ulkama. Referred back to that map and said, Oh, that Regnum de Ulkama, it's referring to a yo. And uh, that um, the, the term is actually derived from an Ijesha greeting, that it's Ije Ijesha people that refer to, they greet themselves as, a, I don't know, Ul Kumi or something like that. That was what Peter Morton reported. Um, but of course, um, like we said earlier, in Ul Kumi tradition, 
Ukunzu and Ubudu are the two oldest towns and all the other communities come from these two. So now to the tradition of origins of uh, Ukunzu. Um, this tradition um, is, um, is, uh, was narrated by the ruler of Ukunzu. Um, these are not my words, so I'm quoting someone here, okay? So anything I say as regards to these traditions of origin, don't say, oh, White Lion said something on Clubhouse and said Ukunzu is this, Ukunzu is that. No, I'm not the one saying it. I'm quoting His Royal Highness, Obi Christopher Ogo, the first, was the one who gave this detailed account of the origins of Ukunzu, people of Delta State. So I'm not, once again, I'm not the one saying it. And what did uh, Obi Ogo, what did he say? He said, um, and according to him, that many decades ago, when Benin and its environs were still under the empire of Ife, whose ruler was Oba Orodua, the Benins were directly governed by lesser kings and community leaders who reported back to the Oba of Ife, the Orne. It was during this era that the Ojiso and the Odionwe emerged as the direct rulers of Bini, but were subject to the Oba of Ife. Due to the high-handedness and lack of leadership charisma, the people protested and appealed to the Oba of Ife to send one of his sons over to be their king. The Oba who agreed to their plea agreed to send his first son, Orumiha, Orumiha came as a prince. During his journey to Benin, Orumiha was accompanied by advisors, soldiers, friends, some relatives, and numerous slaves. On the road en route to Benin, many settled at a place known as Usain, also known as Ufe Kikere. On getting to Benin, he was crowned as the first Oba to have directly descended from the Oba of Ife. After his coronation, most of those who accompanied him refused to go back to Ife. Rather, they chose to stay back in Benin. Some went back and joined the party which had camped earlier at Usain, also known as Ude Awuri. I continue the quote. The new king, Orumiha, married from amongst the Benins and then gave back to Iweka, who became the crown prince. Iweka I ascended the throne after the demise of his father as the first Oba born and brought up in Benin. During Iweka's reign, there were a series of wars owing to the fact that Iweka intended for the Benin Empire to extend across the Niger River towards the Igbo lands. Stiff resistance was met from the Igbo settlements across the Niger. It was during this era that Ekoefu, a place that would later be known as Ukunzu, was formed. This was due to its strategic location in between the Benin and the Igbo lands across the Niger River. It was from Eko that troops of soldiers were sent out into the Igbo lands during this conquest. History has it that this conquest was quite successful because the Benin Empire was able to capture some areas east of the river, such as Onicha. On the other hand, it was not a total success because penetrating further into the Igbo land was met with tough resistance by the people of those areas. It was at this point that the king decided to regroup his army at Ekoefu with the intent of ending the war and amalgamating his newly conquered territories. However, some soldiers refused to go back to Benin and chose to remain in Eko. Their reason cannot be detached from the fact that the war lasted for a very long time and during the course of the war, some had started living their normal lives in Eko. Besides, the location of the new town had become a very productive native chalk mining camp, also known in the local language as Efun. 
a product which had significant economic and ritual importance. The leader of this extraction, who refused to go back to Benin after the war, was Swan Agbi from the town of Usain. Though this group was later joined by Igbo immigrants, both traditional and empirical evidence gives credence to the fact that the present-day Ukunzu, or Ekwefun, was founded by Ogbe and his followers from Usain around the late 1200s. One of the proofs that Ukunzu were the first to settle in the present-day location is their Olukumi language. Historians are of the opinion that if the Ukunzu people were not the first to settle in the land, they would have dropped their language Olukumi for the new language of their hosts who would be in the majority. However, the reverse is the case because the Igbo settlers who later joined the Ukunzu people picked up Olukumi instead. Ukunzu, previously known as Ekoefun, is one of the oldest towns in present-day Anyocha North local government areas of the Delta State. End quote. So that is the narration of the origins of Ukunzu or Ekoefu as a town by His Royal Highness uh, Obi Christopher Ogo the first, uh, the Obi of uh, of Ukunzu, uh, Ukunzu town. So, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Um, so um, this narration by the Obi of Ukunzu is uh, is supported. Um, uh, this narration is, is supported by uh, a note uh, which was made by North Coast, uh, North Coast Thomas and uh, Ulrich Bear. Um, in one of the notes they wrote, I think uh, that must have been in the in the early 1900s or thereabout. And um, what they said, I'm, I'm referring to North Coast, uh, North Coast and Ulrich Bear now. They said that, um, in quotes, the initial point in the development of Olukumi identity has been dated to the rise of the second dynasty of the Benin Kingdom, and specifically to the emergence of its monarchy. Thomas and Bear were told that the Yoruba ancestors of the Olukumi towns arrived with the first Benin king to ever rule. Some traditions identify this king as Oromia, a grandson of Odidua the mythical founder of Ileithe, who traveled to Benin to restore order and establish a new dynasty. One of Aramean's sons, Eweka I, became the first Oba, and his Yoruba associates, or Olukumi, helped to consolidate his power. Benin and Yoruba myths of origin are these days problematic. It is now popular in Benin, to deny Aramean's foreign identity and to instead describe him not as an if a prince sent to Benin, but rather as an exiled Benin prince who came back to reclaim his ancestor's throne. What is not denied is that Olukumi were Yoruba speakers and had ties with the emergence of the monarchy and the royal palace in Benin. During Benin's period of westward expansion, um, Orogua may have neglected the kingdom's eastern periphery. So Orogua is the Orogua is the Benin Oba that actually expanded the reaches of the Benin Kingdom west and eventually got to um, um, the areas inhabited by the Awaris on uh, on uh, in Lagos in Lagos Island. So in, 15, in the year 1578, this particular Oba Orogua found that um, the towns on the western, uh, the towns on the western side of the River Niger, because he had been focusing most of his attention on expanding westwards, uh, he had left the eastern periphery of the Benin Kingdom in a state of neglect. And by 1578, uh, this area, um, you know, they started to rebel. They started to rebel. He found them back in a state of rebellion because he had, they, in fact, as at that time, as at that time. They had neglected to pay their usual tributes, and um, basically they said they wanted to be on their own. So it was said that uh, Oba Urubua sent the warrior called Agba to reassert Benin authority and to, you know, 
start collecting back the tributes, such as uh, chalk. And um, according to Olukumi tradition, one unnamed Oba actually lived for some time in Ukunzu and waged war from there to reassert control over the settlement west of the Niger that had begun to assert their independence. So this Oba actually left Benin, went to Ukunzu, lived there for a time, and was waging war from there as at around the year 1580. So Benin had reached its greatest territorial extent and controlled uh, the region. Um, the controlled region. Sorry, does someone want to say something? Yes. Uh, can I call me concerning the uh, Obarugwa? Okay, all right. It, uh, all right. Yeah. Let, let Mr. Vic wait. Mr. White Lion, when you're done, then we can take contributions. Okay. Um, so by 1580, uh, 1580 was actually the year when Benin had reached its greatest territorial extent and controlled regions of trade along the entire seaboard um, from the west in Lagos to the Niger Delta. And, um, you know, um, but of course, the only reason why I'm talking about this was that um, there was actually a tradition that after he came back, the regions west of the Niger had already begun to revolt and he actually had to shift bases and go live in Okunzu to bring these areas back under control. Uh, Oba Orobua's successor in person of Oba Eheng Buddha uh, continued these campaigns uh, and it was at this time during Eheng Buddha that, um, you know, tentatively the boundaries between the, the Benin and the Oyo uh, spheres of influence was said to have been set in Otun Ikiti. Some trees were planted there and uh, it was agreed between these two uh, monarchs that the areas that would be south and east of Otun would be, uh, you know, areas under Benin sphere of influence and the areas that would be north and west of Otun Ikiti would be the areas under the Oyo sphere of influence. So it was under Ehenguda that this agreement uh, was made. So, um, even till today, right, amongst the people of Ukunzu, uh, during the coronation of any of their kings, uh, they would usually go to a sacred grove called Oro Buddha, or Ohun Buddha in Ubudi. The Ubudi people would pronounce it as Ohun Buddha, and uh, the Ukunzu people would pronounce the place as Oro Buddha. And, uh, of course, either it's Oro Buddha, or it's, uh, either it's Oro Buddha or Ohun Buddha, both seem to to sort of be a reference to either of both Ehen Buddha or Orobua, uh, the two preceding Benin kings who followed each other in succession. Uh, so they, they seem to be either of um, the, the, those kings' names. And um, the, legacy, <clears throat> the legacy of the, uh, Benin, the Benin aspect of uh, the Olukumi people's, um, um, uh, Olukumi people's uh, provenance seem to be, you know, Still seem to still seem to feature strongly in some of the things that uh, um, they do. So that's just a short um, um, narration of uh, you know, like I said, I quoted the king, I quoted the Obi himself, and uh, that was what he had to say about the origin of his town. Uh, that's in this case Ukunzu. So um, I'm done with that part of the submission. Um, I think Mr. Vic said he had something to say um, about uh, Orobua. The seafaring Oba of Benin, please. We can take the mic. Okay. Uh, talking about Oba Rugba and his uh, presence in Lagos, there is some there is something that uh, that led him to go to Lagos. It was an Ulu of Ori in the person of Ulu Irame. So Ulu Irame, when he tried to take control over the Wari area, he had to. He had to come into agreement with uh, Obarugwa because he had a fight with one of the Aborigines who was called Olagwe. So it was during this fight that he had to invite Obarugwa to join him. So they came together and they teamed up against Oro, uh, Olagwe. So Olagwe ran away from Wari and ran to Mehim. He founded this present day Mehim Kingdom. So, Mahi. Yes. Mahi, that's in the Laje. Yes, yes, in the Laje. So, why Olagwe, Olagwe was there? They took the word dead again. 
to, to Mayim. So Olagwe ran the game from there to Lagos. It was there at Lagos they, they, uh, they had him killed. As used to have it. So it was this time that Obaroba had to see what's going on in Lagos and saw the trade there. So what Oba uh, Olu Irame had to move into the uh, area Oba Lugba, uh, Oba Lugba, he had to after returning to Benin, he made Lagos as in he tried to est- uh, establish uh, influence there. So that is the first time Oba Lugba got to Lagos, and that's how his presence of Benin started coming in. Then from that time onward. Obaroba, he, on this side, it is reality that when he was trying to return, he was attacked by the Mahi, the, as in the, the children, the descendants of this uh, Olagwe. He was attacked and he escaped narrowly to the bush path. He escaped to bush path, to bush path, to Akure, then he got to Benin. That's how he, he escaped and he never went to Lagos again. Then, when this man, uh, this Oba, Oba Buddha, who was a son to Oba Rugwa, when he took over, he continued that same trip. On his journey to, to Lagos, he was attacked again by the Lajas, the Mahins. And that was where he was drowned and killed. He was buried dry right there in the Lajas waterfront there. So, so on that time onward, Benin influence uh, in Lagos started dwindling, and that's how the Benin influence died down. So that's what my own uh, contribution to add. So thank you very much, Mr. Vic, for uh, you know uh, shining the Shakiri perspective on uh, Urubua's. Uh, <laughs> Orobua's adventure west into the area of Lagos and, um, you know, the part the Shekiri played and uh, as well, including um, Olagwe and the Lages, uh into, um, you know, the seafaring uh, escapades of Orobua. You know, we also know of, in, of the narrative that it was actually the Shekiri and the Lages people, together with some other riverine people that were actually at the forefront of, um, uh, um, you know, Benin's success uh, in actually you know, expanding west, even though um, <laughs> they had two unsuccessful attacks in Lagos. So I'm not even sure if to call that a success. But anyways, uh, in expanding Benin's influence further west uh, towards um, the areas of coastal Ijebu and um, Lagos. Thank you very much, Mr. Vic. Um, if there's under any other person on stage who has one or two things to say about what I just read about, um, you know, the historical origins of Ukunzu, they can go ahead. Otherwise, I will just continue and go on to the next town. Uh, there's actually a question at the, uh, in the chat. Uh, someone was asked. Uh, someone asked uh, about the Ukunzu, and I uh, said, uh, if uh, uh, the um, uh, Lukumi people are Yoruba and they are the uh, original uh, land owner there, so I uh, said, uh, did they rename the town Ukunzu after settling there? That uh, if they are the original owner, why would they name the place uh, an Igbo name? So the original name of Ukunzu is not Ukunzu. So Ukunzu is a later day. That one came later, later, later. Like I said earlier, the actual name of the place is Ekoefun. So, which means like the place where they used to mine chalk. Chalk is Efun in Europe. So it becomes my mine Efun. So it was later. Eko Efun and Ukunzu actually means the same thing. One is in the only difference, one is in Yoruba language, which is the original language of the place in question. And Ukunzu, which is the later day name that came after, you know, when they started acculturating gradually. That was when Ukunzu came in. So the original name of Ukunzu is not, it's actually Eko Efun, not Ukunzu. So Ukunzu came later on. So I think that answers that particular. Um, question to why Ukunzu actually, in fact, if you go to like um, Ukunzu pages, uh, um, Ukunzu Developmental Union and so on and so forth, you still see the two names in use. It's not even like they've totally forgotten that they actually used to be called a Koefun or anything. They still know that the place is a Koefun, but just that Ukunzu seems to be more in more popular use now than 
the original name of the place, which was Ekwefun. So both names are still in use amongst the natives, but uh, one just seems to have a um, higher popularity than the other. So I hope that answers that. Um, so basically you're saying that the Ukunzu is not a name from antiquity. No, 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 it's not a they, name from antiquity. It's a name that came there. later. It's an addition, like, yeah. They got there and they named their thing, their Yoruba name. They, yeah, exactly. Yeah, then later with mix, mixing with other people, one other name became popular. Got it. Okay. Um, going to the second town in question, um, the two, like I said earlier, these two towns are at the core of uh, the Olukumi people and identity. So all the other towns, either by second degree migration or third degree migration in one way or the other, trace parts of their, uh, you know, of, of, of trace their migration back to these two places. The second town in question is Ubudu. Ubudu, or also in full, Ubudu Mila, which, like I said earlier, uh, it means uh, the forest saves me to prosper. The forest saves me to prosper. And the reason behind this name, uh, you know, will actually be clarified from, uh, from the narration that I'm, I'm about to give. Uh, so the people of Ubudu Mila had already been established at their present location for so long um, as it is on record from oral tradition that the people of Ubudumila actually helped uh, an unnamed Bininoba to chase back a people referred to as the Ota, um, you know, to the other side of the of the River Niger in the early 1500s. To be specific, between 1515 and 1516, the people of Ubudu said they helped a Bininoba to chase a people known as the Ota back across the niger so when i added one and two together did some re research actually discovered that the people referred to as the altar were actually the people of ida and in benin tradition they were the ones who were referred to don't forget that the ruler of ida or the igala people is referred to as the Ata. so the people that the ubodu people um claim to have helped the benin oba chase back across the river niger were actually the igala people who had engaged in a war with the Benins in between in, in, in between the years 1515 and 1516. So the Ugodu people as at that time, 1500s, had already been on that land. Right? So it's not like when we're talking about this migration, it's not the migration of 1700, 1825, 1914, or anything. No. As at 1515, the people of Ugodu were already there. Right, helping the Benins to chase back the Igalas across the river Niger, but um, that apart, um, like I said, Ota was what the Edo people called the people of Ida, as well as their king, also known as the Ata. Uh, but in Ubodu, or but uh, in Ubodumila as a town, uh, the Owo section of Ubodu claimed that their ancestors arrived in Ubodu from Owo as escorts of an Owo woman who had married an Oba uh, and gave birth to his first son. Uh, during, during that child's infancy um, uh, in the Benin royal court, uh, some Benin nobles demanded that the prince be executed, but the mother escaped with her supporters into Asan territory. Um, the name of the Asan territory where they escaped and settled uh, in en route to Ibudu is today known as Ewohimi, Ewohimi in Edo State. So Ewohimi still exists as a town. It's still an Asan town in present-day Edo State up, up until this day. So from Ewohimi, they continued on their journey. Um, according to tradition, they left Ewohimi and arrived at another Essan town known as Amaho. At Amaho, some of them stayed behind and did not continue on the journey. But, um, you know, amongst that retinue, um, a section of them continued onwards in the journey. And um, uh, at around the year... Um, around the year uh, 1460... 
uh, it was said that, um, you know, the people of Amaho described the people who came from um, uh, Ewohimi as refugees. And it was said that these refugees continued on that journey and went on towards and settled at a place where they met a virgin forest. And it was at this place where they settled and referred themselves and called themselves or christened themselves Ubudu or Ubudumila, which means I am saved by the forest to prosper. So that is the narrative behind the formation of Ubudu town. And um, according to records compiled by one prince, Onfri Oche, um, who is the who is the immediate Oliha of Ubudu? Uh, the first six Olozas of Ubudu bear purely Yoruba names. In order of succession, their names were Oba Adiola, who was followed by Aderemi, who was followed by one Ariyo, who was followed by one Odofi, who was followed by one Adetunji, and who was followed by one Oyetunde. That is what Prince. Humphrey Oche, the Oliha of Ubudu says. But after the first six kings, who were the early kings uh, of Ubudu that bore that uh, that bore purely Yoruba names, uh, over the years and after the establishment of uh, the Ubudu kingdom, the next set of Olozas, they were eleven in number, uh, had shifted from the original Yoruba names they bore and had already shifted, it was already in fashion then to adopt the new names as a result of gradual acculturative, uh, the gradual acculturation and process. So this led to the adoption of Edo names amongst the Obas, and this started in the year 1391. So from 1391, names such as Ogbomong, Ozolua, Ogbelaka, Izedome, Osakbolo, Esigye, Igbinadolo, uh, Osemwamen, and Ebo emerged as the Olozas of Ubudu. But then again, from the middle of the 19th century, the Benin influence had already begun to win, and the general fashion then was a shift from the Edo names to Igbo names. So these are the most contemporary, the Igbo, the, the Olozas bearing Igbo names were the most recent of um what continues you know of what seemed to be like uh you know a a a, a i don't know an epoch shift in the names that the olozas would bear so and as such started from the 19th century and uh, of course to the late 20th and 21st century right up until the present time the olozas started bearing names such as ochei dk is one and isin yemeze so the present Oloza, who is there right now, is uh, Oloza Ayo Isin Yemeze. So he is the most recent of them all. So um, going to the societal structure of Ubudu, um, traditionally speaking, um, you know, it can be said that the socio-political system of Ubudu very much mirrors what is obtainable in certain parts of Yoruba land. Maybe not all, but certain parts. Um, in Ubudu as a town, um, the society was divided or subdivided into a number of societies, some of which include um, a society in Ubudu known as Awo. The Awo in Ubudu are also known as the Indi Dibia. The Indi Dibia or the Awo. Both names are in use. So, of course, uh, Dibia is the Igbo, Dibia or Dibia is the Igbo um, uh, equivalent or equivalent of Awo or Babalawo in Yoruba. So there is the Ndi Dibia or the Awo. Uh, the function of this group or society um, um, were to be a herbalist in Ubudu kingdom. They also consult oracles and prepare herbal medicines for both the sick and injured from young to old. Then there is the society known as the Egungun. Egungun. The Egungun society uh, is a group or a society which originated, they said this Egungun society originated from Edo, according to what they said. Uh, they said they've had it since the 1390s till date. Uh, 
And according to them, the Egungun Society is a societal group that enforces laws, rules, and regulations in the community. Uh, they say it is equally, uh, the Egungun Society is equally used for uh, traditional entertainment as it is believed to be uh, a masquerade or group of masquerades representing their ancestors. So that is the Egungun Society that they have. They also have other societies in Ubudu, like the um, Igare. The Higare is a group of, so all members of Ubudu who are above the age of 70 automatically belong to the Igare. So the Igare is, is, the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the, is like the group of elders in Ubudu town. And um, this Igare in, of course, in Yoruba land would be, would be synonymous with Iwarefa or Iware. In amongst the group of um, you know <laughs> the the Oboni or the Osubo, which is like you know Osubo, getting into Osubo is is pretty much age dependent. But amongst the the uh, uh, the Olukumi people of Ubodu, anyone who is above the age of seventy automatically belongs to the Igare grouping. Uh, there is also the Ogun group, which is the Society of Blacksmiths. So if you belong to the Blacksmithing Society, you are in Ogun. There is also the group uh, known as the Olotu. So the Olotu is the community of chiefs. And there is also the Inwene. The Inwene is the female version of the Ogun grouping. So these are all... Um, these are all groups that can be found, you know, the way the Ubudu people organize themselves societally. Um, I talked about the Awu, I talked about the Egungun, I talked about the Inwene, the Olotu, the Igare, and the Ogun. And there is more, but um, these are the ones that I seem to remember for now. So um, that is that about Ubudu, traditions of origin and societal uh, organization amongst the people of Ubudu Mila. Uh, if there is anyone with questions, now is, the, is a good time to ask uh, as I take uh, a water break. Thank you. And there's a question uh, <clears throat> in the back channel by Mr. Biodrake. He said, uh, is it possible that because of uh, Lukumi's uh, interaction from the Igbo people, there were interchange of the words like Egungu, Tolo, Tolo, Inu, Itisi. Is it possible that these words originated from their Lukumi neighbors? That's the question. Sorry, Mr. Olabola, if you can take that, I won't be available for the next, like, five minutes or so. What's the question again? It's in the back channel by Mr. Biodun. <coughs> Voice in your load, yeah. Okay, sorry. Sorry, I just finished eating. Mr. <laughs> Katakpa Milori. All right, so the question is from Mr. Biodun. He said, that, is it possible, I mean, if you check the back channel, you will see it probably to understand better. That is it possible that uh, because of Lukumi's interaction from the Igbo people, there were interchange of the words like uh, Egungun, Tolo, Tolo, Inu, etc. Is it possible that these words originated from their Lukumi neighbors? I'm not quite clear, but my, my try let's see, to see if I understand. So, Mr. Building is assuming that the words Egungun, Tolo, Tolo, etc. have now been changed and replaced by other words. So they no longer use a gungun, they use something else to describe the same idea. So if uh, that's um, the impression I'm getting from, from that question. And um, that would beg, okay, I think it's, it's coming up to clarify. Mr. Abiodun, if you could please, um, re-ask the question and clarify because it's, it's sounding to me like those some words have been changed like Egungu have now been changed and some words have been changed and you're asking if this is because of interaction with other non olukume people maybe Igbo or Edo is that the question yeah, i think i'm having problem with my mic as uh, today okay yeah i think it's better now can you hear me now is it me or uh, everyone else cannot hear we can't, we can't hear you mr biodon we can't uh you're not audible
Mr. Abiodun Agboyan. It's still very, very, very low. But okay, let me just attempt to go ahead with the request with the question. So from what White Lion have said, I think White Lion is describing things such as Egungo still being practiced, still present. That's what I am able to take from that. If anyone uh, you know got something different, they could correct me. So if that's correct, if it is the if the idea is that they still practice Egungo, then the question of them replacing Egungo, etc. with other things doesn't come into play. However, we cannot deny the fact that if you have um, mixed with some other people long enough, and here we're talking about um, centuries, if not millennia, long enough, then you you begin to pick up new, you know, new words from surrounding cultures. So there may be several other words, I have no doubt. I mean, we listen to um, a clip, an audio clip from the beginning. So that's already, you know, lays that to to rest to say that yes they could recognize their yoruba history heritage and roots but at the same time they've um, come to develop a kind of uniqueness in that they must have drawn and taken from you know their surrounding uh, people and they seem to have been engulfed almost completely by non-yoruba people i don't think they share any frontier boundary with any present day yoruba you know area so they've been engulfed almost completely from you know top, bottom, left and right by non-Yoruba people. And um, given the number of time they've spent there, they must have, you know, taken, you know, cultures and um, names and other things from other cultures. And in fact, there, there are efforts to to tell Olukume people to say, you know what, let's start naming our own people, our own names rather than English and Igbo names. Let's start, you know, doing this and that. So there, there is indeed that, you know, angle of them borrowing. And that cannot be even explained away. And we've, um, you know, we heard that in in the clip, well, which we listened to at the beginning, in which we were only able to pick it, pick out some Yoruba words, and in fact, there are many things that that are not clear to us because perhaps because those are from other languages. So, if not Igungu, definitely other words, and many, many, many other words in that language would have come from other surrounding culture. So, I hope that answers the question. Let me just quickly like offer an insight on um, that question. Um, I don't know about the others. Like I didn't even hear the full list of the words, uh, but I had a gungu or a gungu. Sorry, a gungu in Yoruba, of course, but a gugu among the Western Igbos and parts of the Eastern Igbos too, like on nature and the rest, they say a gugu. But of course, in Yoruba, we know it's a gungu. What I know is that in Igbo language, um, there seems to be more. So some people say, Egugu. Some people say more. So to refer to masquerade, like I'm not sure. I'm not a native Igbo yeah, speaker. So if there's any Igbo, sorry. Some people say mau. Some people say mau. And some people say uh, some people say egugu and some people say mau to refer to the same thing, right? So this masquerades like some people say mau, some people say uh, some people say egugu. But in Yoruba, of course, we only know them to be a gungun. So I don't know if that, because if there is a place where there is only one word for one thing, and then amongst some other people, they have a semblance of that same word found amongst some other people, and they then I have another word again for it. Then it shows that mm, maybe like this other word must have had other sources, maybe either from Igala to the north or from like interactions with people further west. I have no idea. I'm just postulating at this point because I don't even have the idea to that myself. But I know that in Igbo language, there's Mau and there is Egungu, refer usually referring to the same thing traditional masquerades. So I don't know if that offers some insight into um, maybe a Gugu or a gungu has um you know possibly external origins or not at the same time it, it may not be it may not be external it may be a word that is also native to the Igbo people so i am not saying anything but i'm just offering more clarity and um you know we can all draw our conclusions yeah uh, can you hear me now oh okay Go yeah ahead. i have to show we can hear you now phone. Uh, yeah i don't know what's happening with clubhouse today this is second time uh, so what I was actually saying, because I uh, listened to a lady teaching Igbo the other day, 
and was saying Egungun is the same way they call it in Igbo and uh, Tolo Tolo or Toro Toro. So I'm just saying that, well, these guys have had uh, quite some interaction. It's possible that there are exchanges of their lexicon, uh, either from Igbo to uh, uh, Lukumi, because the guy who played his uh, video today, I mean, his uh, uh, audio today, also was, there were some Igbo in his language. Uh, I can hear Aussie saw and things like that in his language as well. Okay, I think I understand the question. So it's uh, it's the other way around. Not that um, the Egungun have been replaced by Igbo words, which I have no doubt that many words in the Olukun language must have had their Igbo, heavy Igbo input and other non-Igbo, non-Yoruba input from the you know surrounding cultures. Yeah, but at the same time, it, it doesn't have to be one way. It could also be the other way too. People, you know, draw influences from one another. It doesn't have to go only from one person always to the other group. It can go from the other group too as well. So yes, you may find those things in the surrounding, like the those Igbo groups who are who share like the closest proximity to the Olukumi people. Yes, you may find those influences going back and forth between those two groups. But to for those influences to now go deep into the you know core Igbo interland, that may be a stretch. To you know for you to now have those words prevalent in almost every Igbo um subgroup you find it, it will be hard to explain that to have been from the smaller you know olukumi influence you know now loaning those words not only to one tiny group of Igbo nearest to them but now to every Igbo that would be more unlikely so what would be more likely if you find those words like egungun toro toro in Igbo language and very common to all Igbo subgroups the most likely explanation would be that because the Yoruba and the Igbo and some other groups themselves, you know, they differentiated over thousands of years from one proto, you know, language and one, you know, archaic ethnic culture. So yes, they may be remnants of those same, you know, homogeneity still found in Yoruba. And there are, you know, there are many words like that that you find in, you know, common Yoruba and common Igbo. So that would not be, so I would, um, I would attribute such words which are very prevalent among Igbo and that, that Yoruba sounding, I would attribute it first to the fact that these two groups, you know, emerged from one same archaic, very, you know, ancient, you know, proto-culture, proto-language, rather than seeing those um, no, no, prevalent no, no. I words. I am I'm not saying, if you know, you know. Kilowi? White line, what did you say? Sorry, I wasn't saying anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would um, rather attribute it to those, um, you know, those times rather than to attribute such prevalent words in Igbo language that are Yoruba sounding to the Olukumi culture. But that doesn't take away from the fact that if you find those things in the, in the frontier Igbo areas, the ones closest to the Olukumi, some words like that, and you don't find such words in every other Igbo group, then you may easily attribute it to to the Olukumi influence, and you must, there must have been several other influences from those kind of Igbos to themselves into the Olukumi culture, if that answers the question. So just to add something to what White Lion was saying, I mean, this is a little off topic, yeah, about the Ogboni. So yeah, Ogboni, one may attribute that, that word itself, linguistically, to be elderly person. But in practice, actually, it is not usually restricted there's no strict, um, you know, regulation saying only elderly Arubo, Lumangwa, Nino, Oboni. Sometimes you find very, like, young people, they are members, Oshubo and Oboni. Yeah, you find that, especially, maybe not since ancient times, but we have this um, practice from, you know, some of us that are previewed to have seen some of these things happen. And in fact, some reports um, that are very old, from some of the European writers who says, yes, we see that the name and generally speaking, adults, older people, aged men. But yes, I tell you that you can find a small boy running around the street naked, also admitted into this um, the organization. So it depends on, sometimes it has to do with familial link. It has to, some, some of these things are, are lineage based rather than just admitting people as an organization purely. It has an aspect of it that is lineage based. Some of the titles in the Oguni, nobody can take it just because of Uncle Feje member. It has to be from that lineage. And one small boy might be the next person 
that is uh, that has a right to that seat in the Oboni Lodge on the Ochubo Lodge. So you can actually find small children as members, but generally speaking, at least from the name linguistically, it looks like it is reserved for the uh, more aged people. And I have, um, let me see, a report here from Burton was in Abeokuta in um, 1861. So if you go to page 251 of his first volume, Abeokuta and his Cameroon's Mountain, he was making exactly that point. It says here that um, the last paragraph of that page, uh, Mr. Bowen translates. So he's referring to Bowen now. And then he later added his own observation. He says, in quote, Mr. Bowen translates Oboni to be a sort of freemancery, a respectable elderly man. He now continues now. It is neither one nor the other. Any naked boy running about the streets may, when 10 years old, if a freeborn Egba of good, good repute, integer vete celeri, <laughs> some, some Latin words there, integer vete celeriscu purus, if he's of good repute, if he's a freeborn, maybe 10 years old, he may rise to this dignity and be admitted. Nor is it in any way connected with European freemancery. A favorite comparison with the uninitiated. So the, the uninitiated sees it as um, you know, free mansory, but he's saying yes, elderly, but then you can find a free you can find a small a little boy being admitted. And there is a Yoruba proverb that sort sort of um backs this up. And it goes back into deep antiquity. Yoruba so we be omodito ba mowe a bag by jung. Koto should be away young balagbambi. So that is to say, I mean, you, you don't have to be older to be admitted sometimes into the into the ranks and files of the elder people. Yes, generally speaking, it is reserved for the elderly, but you can actually find a little boy. And here is he's talking of 10 years old boy, Don Sarikiri, provided he meets some criteria. So I thought I should add that to it. Yeah, I, I just want to add to that um, because that's one thing that I know for a fact that you know when it comes to Oguni, yeah, you have the general age, good studying and society criteria. But as Mr. Labala said, even within the Oguni, the, the, there are reserved Oye delay in Oguni. That's one thing I know for a fact. So just wanted to buttress that. So my own question is, um, the Iwarefa, um, are they young people? Like, can anyone be a, 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 a member of the Iwarefa? Or is it just anybody as well, regardless of age, uh, age range or age grade? So like I said, at Mr. Lukiti, mommy Lukiti, but she saw, in Oboni, it looks today like a sort of um, organization. I'm not even talking about the reformed Obunio, like like an organization where some members may be admitted based on, you know, just meet some criteria, be, be of good um, repute, you know, good person, honest and all those things upright. You may be admitted, provided you are a Yoruba person, etc., etc. However, still, there are some rules that are, that are family lineage um related no matter who you are you can't just come and occupy that thing so if for example no one you are i don't know the members but i i assume that the olu would be a member of the warifers for example so if the olu is there and i know for sure Uncle olu at least in some part of yoruba land it's a family related thing the olu of Oshubo, not just using the word loosely to mean the um a babala word. the olu of Oshubo boni now so I know for certain we pay it is AB related at least in some places. So nobody can aspire to that seat. It has to be someone of that lineage. So there is someone toku. So if um it's a little boy, Lenny Toku, yeah, that's the person we can find from that lineage that is available for that role, then that boy would be the Oluo. And if Oluo is a member of URFA, then a little boy can be in that sense. So you see how it goes? Generally speaking, it should be an elderly, but there is nothing strictly restricting a small boy to, to aspire to that role, especially in the case of um, 
roles that are related to family and lineages in which any any other person cannot just aspire to. Idili walu ni uyeye, awala manje, for example. So whoever is um, remaining, it could be a boy. So, I mean, they would want to prioritize an elderly person, but there are cases where that person is not available and the person that is younger, then he aspires to that throne. And if that throne is one of the URF, which I assume in the case of the Oluo, then you can have that little boy. And as we've seen the case of um, abortions observation, he pointed out the case of one 10 year old running around, provided he's this, is that, is this, freeborn, etc., uh, etc., et then he can be a member. So just to add uh, to that, two of again into my J, that means nobody occupies that position until there's somebody suitable to that. So it's not something that. Oh, by force, by force, it has to be occupied. There are instances that if there is nobody available, as they will say, you buy what we call. All right. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Olukotun, Olukitie, for, and thank you also very much, Mr. Olabola. Um, just to go back to um, you know, the focus of today's topic. Um, we already talked about Ubudu, and we already talked about uh, Ukunzu or Ekwefu. We talked about, um, you know, um, organization of society in Ubudu, um, the different groups that make up society in Ubudu Mila Township, the Awu or the Ndidibia, the Egungu, uh, the Ulutu, the Igare, um, the egg bill, and so on and so forth. So, like I said, uh, these two towns are at the nexus of um, of Ulukumi identity, so to speak. So, all the other towns, uh, Ogodo, Uboba, Ubulubu, uh, Aniofu, and so on and so forth, they all trace their origin back to these two. Um, and um, so that is why for all the other towns uh there really isn't any tradition of uh origin uh so to speak because they all trace their origin to either ubudu or kunzu for example in ubulubu township um the, the history of the town or village says that the people of ubulubu came from ubudu and um uh and ukunzu and that it was a relatively late uh, Ulukumi town to be founded uh, chronologically speaking and for the town of uh, Ogodo, Ogodo traces its origin back to the village of Uboba and then the village of Uboba in turn traces back its own origin uh, to the village of Ukunzu so you can see how you know all the other villages all the other towns just in one way or the other just go back to these two main ones um, so apart from these um, series of towns that are already that we've already enumerated earlier uh, to be the purely uh, Olukume towns. There are also some towns and uh, you know um, settlements that are of partly Olukume origin. They are not fully uh, Olukume, but some certain quarters in those towns claim Olukume origin. I already talked about the Onishaku quarter of Ubuluku, for example. But according to their own oral legend uh, in Ubuluku, uh, they claim that um, it was one warrior who went by the name Jowasoro, who migrated from the town of Elisha, now in the present day Oshun states that came with his retinue of people and, uh, you know, constituted the Onishaku quarter of Ubuluku township. We also have a group of villages known as the Ubekenu, which are part of Onichaubu. So Onichaubu normally are part of the Ezechima clan, but um, there is a certain group from among them that don't claim uh, Ezechima origin. Uh, they claim that they are uh, ancestors came from the Akoko area, to be precise, they, that their ancestors came from Ikari Akoko and, uh, you know, settled in that particular area. So, all these, all these areas, um, 
all these uh, quarters of uh, surrounding towns um, are not part of the Olukumi people, although um, there are people in certain quarters of those towns that seem to be of uh, certain Yoruba provenance. But when talking about the Olukumi specifically, we are referring to the people who refer to themselves as the Odiani. So all these other areas, uh, Onichaku, Inubuluku, and the Ogbekenu villages of uh, Onichubo, they have some Yoruba elements from, you know, within their ranks on file as a population of people, but they are not within the Olukumi proper in that sense. And um, what else? So um, within the Odia... So, White Lion, yes. sorry. Yeah, I think what you're saying now is so this is clear evidence of those who have migrated and settled. So, yeah, so these ones migrate exactly, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Versus the indigenous autochthonous people. Yes, yeah, so these ones in the case of uh Oni uh the Onishaku people that came, that went and joined the people of Ubuluku and uh the Ubekenu village group that joined Onishubu, these ones are not so these ones came and joined uh, the Ezechima people, for example, in the case of uh, uh, Onichugbo. So they came and joined those people there. So they are not the first people to settle in that area. They were the, uh, it seems to me, well, if I were to judge anyway, it seems to me that the Onichugbo people were already there. And then these Ogbekenu people came and now joined them. As opposed to the case of, for example, Ubo Dumila or Ekwefun. These ones came to that place, met Virgin Land, and settled there. So these are these are the two classic examples of uh, infusion. So, so these these two cases are slightly well, is it slightly? Are different because in one case they came and joined some other group of people and integrated themselves. In the other case, they came, settled, and um, received infusions of people from the surrounding area and continued to maintain a distinct identity. So that's the main difference between villages like Ubulubu or Ogodo or Ubudu and um, villages like. Uh, uh, the Onishaku village group of Ubuluku and the Ubekenu village group of Onishubu, for example. So, yeah, that, thank you very much for that insight, Mr. Uh, Ulukiti. So, um, within the Odiani clan, I've seen narratives that says only Ubudu and Ogodo have a traditional, herit uh, a traditional hereditary kingship system. Meaning that they pro they practice uh, primogeniture, so which means whenever the king dies, the the, the, the title just immediately they already know the next king, right? The crown prince, which is the eldest male born. So whenever the king passes on, um, in the case of uh, Ubudu, the Oloza, whenever the Oloza passes on, they already know, pam, the crown prince becomes the king. So apart from Ubudu, the only other town that has that amongst the Odian is Ogodo. So all the other towns use a system known as the Okbala, um, the Okbala Obi system. So the Okbala Obi system is sort of like a fusion, like it's a, it's, it's an hybrid between the Obi system and the uh, the Okbara or the Okbala system, which is sort of like a gerontocracy. It's like it's 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 a the eldest the eldest person in the community sort of seen like the sort of like the default leader of that community and the ob system is sort of it's monarchical or monarchical in in outlook so the okbala ob system that is used and uh, in the other um in the other towns is a fusion of the ob or kingship system which was gotten from you know uh, uh, which is a Benin, which is as a result of Benin imperial influence, and the Okpala system, which seems to be what was actually um, um, the Okpala system was borrowed from their Igbo neighbors. So, um, if you go and look at the Anioma communities, for example, the the Western Igbos, um, for a lot of them, while the OB system seems to be at the top and sort of like um, rules at a higher level, the people who have the real power, the people who rule at the base of society, go, 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 the people who are actually, um, um, who, who seems to have like what I would call like people power, you know, is at the, at the Okbaras and the Okbala and the Okbala and the rest. So it's sort of, that's, that's, that seems to be like the system that was originally, um, you know, original to the people before 
uh, the imperial expansion of Benin, so to speak. So for the rest, for the apart from uh, Ubudu and Ogodo, that seems to have like a a a, a hereditary kingship system, so to, like like uh, kingship by primogeniture. They also have Okwalazo, but um, they are the only ones who have a kingship system that is straight from father to son. All the other towns practice strictly. They 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 picked they 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 select the obese strictly through the Okwala OB system. So I don't know if, the, if there's anyone here more familiar with that kind of system. I'm not really very conversant with it. But, um, you know, from what we've researched and from what, uh, you know, we've read, that is what we know about um, traditional relationship amongst the Olukomi people. So um, I don't know who was saying earlier um, that um, uh, one, of the, one of the main singers in Style Plus, was it? Um, was it Zeal? Zil Onyecheme of Style Plus was um, was an Olukumi guy. Um, some other popular uh, Olukumi people. There is a uh, Nduka Nduka Ubade, uh, who was the captain of the first ever eighteen under eighteen Golden Eaglets that brought the first World Cup to Nigeria and Africa as a whole in the year nineteen eighty five. That was the under eighteen World Cup in China. And also there is a Hel- uh, Helen Anya Melune, who was um, who was Miss Nigeria in the year 1958. She was also an Olukume person. So um, that would be the end of uh, you know what I have here on the Olukume people. Um, I think from here and forth, I think the ground. I'm done with my submission. The ground is open for discussions. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, White Lion. I, I really appreciate this lecture today. You know, this is so, this is tantalizing, <laughs> you know, like uh, my brain is bursting with uh, all this information. Thank you, Olabola. Uh, thank you for everyone that contributed to the discussion. Uh, actually, like, you know, while we were discussing and then I just uh, look at, okay, uh, what uh, if he said earlier, like uh, the, you know, they're working towards, uh, you know, not letting go of the identity of the Olukumi people and all that. <clears throat> but then I look at, uh, even uh, she was on the stage, her name uh, is Ifi, which you can see that's Hebo name. And uh, you mentioned Uduka Wala, that's another name, you know, and many of them, you know, so like... Uduka uh, Ubadi. <laughs> Ubadi, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ubadi. Ubadi, 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 yeah. So, like, most of these names are Igbo name, you know. So, is it like uh, they've, uh, is that the dominant uh, culture? Is the Igbo culture there the dominant, you know, like uh, for them to be, you know, names? Because what is in the human life, name is so important. Name is very important. So that's, uh, you know, I just wonder, like, when I see names from most of the most of the people from this place, and you see the name, you know, you say, okay, this is my name, but at the same time, this is who I associate with and all that. So, I mean, how does it add up, you know? Yeah, so um, to your question, um, the vast majority of Olukumi people, in fact, I would say maybe 90% safe, um, have Igbo names. So um over the years for example you can see a clear example of the king list in uh in uh in ubodu uh the first six olozas had yoruba names the next 11 olozas had uh edo inclining names and then from there uh, henceforth they, they they've had Igbo names i think the last five olozas have had Igbo names so um, it's been a journey so far, and for the Olukumi people, um, you know, in the in the majority, like I said, um, in terms of names, I I know when it comes to names, they've been completely acculturated into the um, uh, into the Enuani Igbo culture of the West Niger. So now they they bear Igbo names in the majority. So I think that much is clear. They bear Igbo names in the majority. And you may even meet an Olukumi person. Like you said, names are very important. You can meet an Olukumi person and not even know they are Olukumi because they have Igbo names. So um, when having the discussion from that point of view, I think it's safe to say that um, they've been completely Igbonized in that sense. Except, oh, except for the few, um, you know, who choose to probably... Um, 
name their children Yoruba names, or for example, in this case, the king of uh, uh, the Obi of uh, Ubudu, whose name is first name is Ayo. But then, even at that, even at that, their son names, their last names are still are still Enuani Igbo names, right? So, if your personal name is is Yoruba and your last name is so, it, it doesn't ensure continuity or anything. It just means that you fancy a name and you and you and you and you and you choose to go by that name, right? Your children will still have your son your son name. So, um, but like I said, there's been um, revival attempts amongst the Olukumi people. I don't know how they plan to go about it um, to ensure the continuity. White lion. Sorry yes. to interrupt. I just want to clip. Um, Say something about the whole surname thing. So I'm not sure that's a uh, using surname is a good way to look at it because we have to understand uh, the concept of surname. <laughs> well, the concept of surname where we come from is quite arbitrary. Somebody's surname was someone's first name at a point, and then when we start adopting the European method of having surnames, then we just choose one of our ancestors' name. I use that as a surname. So if you chose one that was being an Igbo name, then you know, if it was at a time where many people were bearing Igbo names, you would now see preponderance of um, Igbo surnames. Um, I, I'm not sure it says one thing or the other. But speaking of the culture, for me, um, it's clear to see that this is where two cultures meet, right? And usually when civilizations meet, they clash. But in this case, rather than see a clash, what I see is a blend. And these people are in their own way, forming their own unique identity where you are seeing hints of Igbo, Yoruba, Edo, Igala, etc. I think what is what would be more fair, fair to say is that this is uh, a, a, Lukumi cult, a Lukumi culture or an Anyocha culture that has infused different aspects, you know, uh, of, of um, environmental um, cultures uh, and ideas and they are their own people in many ways as opposed to trying to say oh are there more Igbo are there more Yoruba are there more Edo are there more this are there more that and um, I guess that's my submission thank you all right thank you so much um, uh Otumba before you go uh yeah. Mr Santiago Tosan Tosan has something to say please Mr Tosan right. you can unmute yeah right. okay um thank you good and um, good evening all uh, sorry, Mr. Tosan, Mr. Tosan, your voice is low. Uh, maybe if you're using an earpiece, you can unplug uh, and speak directly into your speaker. Okay, can you hear me properly now? Um, your voice is still low, sir. How about now? Can you hear me now? No, not really. There is no improvement. But um, if, if, if you can't find any solution to... Uh, the volume thing, uh, you can go ahead. Can you hear me okay. now? Yes, that's yes. much better. You can no, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just recall. Um, I said like the Olukumi people, just like the Shekiri people too. You know, we speak, our language is more like Yoruba language. But you know, over time, we've been, you know, culturized by um, I the Ijaws, Urobos, and Edos from um, the Beniz and Edos. So that's likewise the Olukumi people too, because of where they are, they are more closer to they are in an they are in an uh, not local government. So they are closely to the Igbo speaking people. So over time too, I think um, the Igbo culture has inflated their own culture and you know and has covered most of their cultures. But like we rightly say, they choose their king through the Okpala OB system. And that is what is done in all parts of Igbo land. So I think because of their, where they are situated and people that are, they've been close to the Igbos. So with time, you know, the Yoruba culture is not, they are not familiar with it. And it's what, what they see around them. Like Yoruba is when it's a way back, so they've been, you know, they've mixed freely with the Igbo people. I think that's why they are trying to get more of Igbo identity and most of their names are sounding like Igbo names. That, that's what I feel is their problem. So thank you. 
All right. But the only difference with the situation of the Shekiri, apart from the cultural, from the, um, you know, general acculturation, is that the Shekiri still have their Yoruba, uh, their Yoruboid names intact, you know. Yes, um, and our language. Yes, and the language is still exactly. Yeah, uh, the language is intact. The names are intact. But, you know, in the case of the Olukumi, the language is dying and the names are, you know, yeah. yes, yeah. 90 or pretty much 80 to 90 percent, um, you know, unless there is a revival, you know, <laughs> I would say maybe at the end of the century, there wouldn't even be if, if, if fr frantic efforts are not made to preserve that culture. Right. But um, thank goodness, if he already, you know, expounded on um, efforts being made to ensure that uh, the Olukumi culture does not go um, into, <laughs> does not enter into the history books in that sense. So, um, I, I mean, I was really gladdened when I heard that. But yeah, so apart from that, um, that, that seems to be the only difference between the Shekiris and um, the Olukumis in that sense. Mr. Vic, you the flash, please. Um, you can take the mic. Okay. Um, I would like to know what can, consider the fact that this language is fading away, what can the generality of the Yoruba do to help salvage the situation? Because that would be a nice thing to do. So, like I said, I already talked about Professor Arokoyo, um, who already helped compile uh, both a talking dictionary as well as uh, a published dictionary of the old Lukumi language that has presently, it has, uh, uh, you know, more than, it has, what number did I quote? Uh, it has more than 2,000, it has more than 2,000 words in entry. And... Um, Professor Arukoyo has done, you know, a lot of field work, has done a lot of research. And uh, the, the, actually, the, the last Ulukumi, the last edition, uh, which was published in 2021, um, is not yet fully available. But the edition which was published in 2017, which had uh, more than 1,500 words, uh, uh, Ulukumi words entry, um, you know, is presently being distributed in the various Ulukumi villages. So these books are being given out by um, by um, living, there is a group known as the Living, Living Tongues, Living Tongues Association or something like that. So they are in the Ulukumi villages now helping to preserve the language, um, you know, distributing this dictionary and ensuring that the language does not go moribund. So that has been an effort by one Yoruba professor that I know. But of course, I know, I we all know very well that uh, even more can be done in that respect. And um, I am also happy to announce to you, if anything if he said here is to go by that, the Olukumi people take their identity very, very serious. Okay, thank you very much. You see the problem with the Olukumi people too, it's just like the Shekiris too. Because if you see the... Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes, that's yep. much better. You can no, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me just call. Um, I said like the Olukumi people, it was like the Shekiri people too. You know, we speak, our language is more like Yoruba language. But you know, over time, we've been, you know, culturized by um, I the Ijaws, Urobos, and Edos from um, the Beninese and Edos. So that's likewise the Olukumi people too, because of where they are, they are more closer to, they are in Anna. They are in Anoshanon, uh, Anoshan, not local government. So they are closely to the Igbo speaking people. So over time, too, I think um, the Igbo culture has inflated their own culture and, you know, and has covered most of their culture. Because, like you rightly said, they choose their king through the Okpala, OB system. And that is what is done in all parts of Igbo land. So I think because of their where they are situated and people that are, they've been close to the Igbos. So with time, you know, the Yoruba culture is not they are not familiar with it. And it's what what they see around them. Like Yoruba say when it's a way back Pella So they've been, you know, they've mixed freely with the Igbo people. I think that's why they are trying to get more of Igbo identity and most of their names are sounding like Igbo names. That's that was what I feel is their problem. So thank you. All right, but the only difference with the situation of the Shekiri, apart from the cultural, from the um, 
you know, general acculturation is that the Shakiri still have their Yoruban, uh, their Yoruboid names intact, you know. Yes, um, and our language. Yes, and the language is still exactly. Yeah, uh, the language is intact. The names are intact, but you know, in the case of the Olukumi, the language is dying, and the names are, you know, yeah. yes, yeah. ninety or pretty much eighty to ninety percent. Um, you know, unless there is a revival, you know, I would say maybe at the end of the century there wouldn't even be if 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 frantic efforts are not made to preserve that culture, right? But um, thank goodness, if he already, you know expounded on um, efforts being made to ensure that uh, the Olukumi culture does not go um, into, <laughs> does not enter into the history books in that sense. So, um, I, I mean, I was really gladdened when I heard that. But yeah, so apart from that, um, that that seems to be the only difference between the Shakiris and um, the Olukumis in that sense. Mr. Vic, you the flash, please. Um, you can take the mic. Okay. Um, I would like to know what can, consider the fact that this language is fading away, what can the generality of the Yoruba do to help salvage the situation? Because that would be a nice thing to do. So, like I said, I already talked about Professor Arokoyo, um, who already helped compile uh, both a talking dictionary as well as uh, a published dictionary of the old Lukumi language that has presently, it has, uh, uh, you know, more than, it has, what number did I quote? Uh, it has more than 2,000, it has more than 2,000 words in entry. And um, Professor Arokoyo has done, you know, a lot of field work, has done a lot of research, and uh, the, the, actually, the, the last Ulukumi, the last edition, uh, which was published in 2021, um, is not yet fully available. But the edition, which was published in 2017, which had uh, more than 1,500 words, uh, uh, Ulukumi words entry, um, you know, is presently being distributed in the various Ulukumi villages. So these books are being given out by... Um, by um, living, there is a group known as the Living Living Tongues, Living Tongues Association, or something like that. So they are in the Olukumi villages now, helping to preserve the language. Um, you know, distributing this dictionary and ensuring that the language does not go moribund. So that has been an effort by one Yoruba professor that I know. But of course, I know I we all know very well that. Uh, even more can be done in that respect. And um, I am also happy to announce to you, if anything if he said here is to go by that, the Olukumi people take their identity very, very serious. So back to the topic of the room, uh, the Olukumi people. Uh, like I read in the chat, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know if uh, Queen Shiba would like to come. So I read in the chat, like uh, talking about uh, who uh, was uh, indigenous, who was there, and and you know, I, and I think uh, Labola already uh, answered that. I think at the point people migrate to somewhere, they move to a place, you know. As Yoruba, I can say, okay, whether or yo or something, we move from, it started from Ife, from Ife, you move to this place, uh, this king went to this place to, you know, to establish this land and all that. But it depends on the who got to that land first. You know, like if you say, oh, these people are indigenous to this land. So that means that people got to that place first. You know, so, and uh, in the account or oh, from the readings uh, by White Lion, uh, the Yolukumi from their own, um, from what they from what they wrote, like uh, they are indigenous to where they are today, you know. So that I just want to hear Queen Shiba probably have uh, some uh, uh, a different thought, um, you know, different uh, perspective to that, you know. Yeah. So um, it's a very tricky topic or tricky situation. I'll put it that way because. Uh, time has uh, gone um, when you really look at the actual history. But when you look at it, they when you talk about indigenousness, they have assimilated into the uh, Anioma uh, land and culture, but they actually did move to that land and the Anioma people were actually there before them. But it's not there is no dispute. So that's why I say it's a bit of a tricky one. There's no dispute as to whether they 
currently own the land or they don't own the land. That dispute is not there because they live friendly with um, their Neoma people. There's no, they don't have like, uh, what's the word? They don't have like communal clashes over land or ownership of the land. They've been accepted or live like that is where that is. I mean, that's their land, right? But if you want to talk about the real history, the history of that place is an actually um, an Anioma uh, land, but they migrated. It's well known. I mean, I'm just trying to find the the history. I can read it out to you. But it's well known that they migrated in the 1800s, which I mean, they can give me a few minutes and I can read that out for you. Um, Anioma people have been there for for thousands of years, so. I don't really know where um, that um, narrative is that, uh, you know, they were there before the Anioma people. That's not correct. You know, I'm an Anioma person, so I find it very strange for that statement to be made. But we all know that we have Yorubas living uh, amongst us, but have uh, assimilated or accepted the cultures. So if you, you will find that there's two the two cultures there's the Igbo culture and the Yoruba culture sort of a blend so it's the same inter there's a lot of intermarriages there's all of that happening so you know it's not correct to say that that land was an original um Olukumi land it was a land that they mig migrated from in fact if you go on in if you maybe some of you might just want to go on the internet and just google there's even a map which describes the migration, the migration pattern from 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 uh, from the Yoruba land and then into into uh, you know that particular area. But if you give me a few minutes, I can read it out for you because I have that history. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, talking about um, traditions of origin and. Um, Referencing the 1800s, I don't think uh, that can't even be referred to as uh, that's just, I mean, 19, 1800s, um, the OU Empire was already at the brink of at the brink of collapse. And so, that, I mean, it's very, very recent. Um, um, I, I also have a reference here. Um, it's the Igbo and Ibibio speaking people of southeastern Nigeria. It references all the Igbo towns chronologically and lists their tradition of origin. Also talks specifically about the Odiani and their traditions of origin. And it's certainly not from the 1800s. Even talks about the towns that have Igala traditions of origin. Um, you know, parts of um, 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 parts of Ila Township. Talks about Ebu. All these places certainly didn't settle there in the 1800s, like the times they settled there. In fact, there is a tradition of origin that some of these towns were formed after the Benin Igala War and the people who chose to stay back because they could not return back to Ida. All these periods were not certainly not in the 1800s. Maybe, I don't know, it could be... I mean, yes, I understand what you are saying when you say um, some people maybe have traditions of their of them coming into the, those areas at one time or the other, but I don't think if there is any time um, time of reference, it would certainly not be the 1800s. Maybe um, we could say uh, there were maybe groups of people that came later from somewhere and they knew where they came from, and that was in the 1800s. But Ubudu and uh, Ukunzu certainly didn't settle there in the 1800s. But um, I will let you read um, the sources that you have. Yeah. So another thing to add is this. If you have any tradition of origin, so the assumption is that this is coming down from the past, this so collective social memory of a people in the distant past, and they gradually transfer that information to the next generation, the next, the next, all the way till it gets down to us. That's the assumption. That's the idea of traditions. So any tradition that anyone recites to you, and then they said, in the year 18 something or 15 something or 16 or 12, we got to something something. Our tradition says it. They put that year as part of the tradition, no, not history, history and figuring out the year later. If anyone recites any tradition to you and they put a year to be the part of the tradition, that's a lie. At least that part of the year is a lie. 
we don't have in ancient and times in this part of the world we don't have the idea of year 2000 year 18 something we don't have it so what they would have narrated from the distant past down to us would just be the stories they don't have the idea of we are narrating this thing today in the year 1200 pass it down to your generation and then we pass like that and then the story comes down to us with the year no that's the matter so whatever you have today with people putting years to something it's either people just arbitrarily lay men lay people arbitrarily putting years dates to something or historian doing proper work to put years to it it's one of those two it's not okay. the tradition itself coming down to us from the past with the year we don't okay. there is no such thing I haven't mentioned the traditional, so let me read no, it no. out. Hold on, I'm let me. Saying, I'm not saying you mentioned. Hold on, let me let me because I'm talking, oh. right? Okay. Yeah. So that's on that's on the one hand. On the other hand, when we say something like um, the fact that they migrated means that they are not the owner. No, that's not how to really establish. Everyone actually migrated. We can ask the question of where did Anyama people migrate from, right? So it's not a case of Anyama or this. We've heard from someone from Olukumi here today. We've had actual evidence, for example, a report from the year 1600, from the 1600s, a report, not a tradition. So the report would mean that someone who can read and write visited this part of the world from his own culture, whether in Europe. In his culture, he has the idea of dates. He came to a part of the world, he saw people. In his own report, he put that date thing and noted what he saw. And it goes back with his report. The report survives in some library today. The world has like interconnected today and we can find those reports. And he named that river, Olukumi River. One river in Nigeria today, the river Niger. And this was in the year 1600. So did the Olukumi people time travel that they had to come in the 1800s? No. So if you go by the concrete evidence rather than by notes and somebody writing something, anybody can do all those things. An Olukumi person will come here today and read things to you that kind of look, sounds good in the way he wants to. An Anyama person will read something to you from the internet from his own point of view. But do we go with one or the other? Maybe not necessarily. Maybe let's just go by some more neutral or independent report that looks like a concrete evidence and which one of which is that someone from a culture of dating people who write dates in the one we use today because our own system of dating is still the european way of doing it so they've had the system he came here saw some people saw a river around their area he notes down the name of those people and he wrote the year where he was noting this and that year predates 1800 at least so yeah you may want to consider what evidence really is is evidence just me reading something or me reading something that is dated at the time of the writing not me writing today and putting a date on that thing i'm writing today say this thing i'm writing today it must have been so in the year 1800 or 16 or 17. that's different from saying a writing not today but coming from the 1600 itself and with the date of that 1600 appended on it so those are two different things. All right, I'm not here to um, have any arguments, <laughs> but I just wanted to challenge those thoughts because uh, those people from Anioma would actually not take it very lightly in terms of if you're trying to push a narrative that, um, you know, the land that is there belongs to, you know, uh, does not belong or people who are living there if i let me know if i don't want to cause any issues but you know it can be a little bit confusing when you push a particular direction in what you're saying because she might not actually be correct um when you're looking at things like this you must also understand that you know the people we're talking about have 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 lived in that place for a while and and they know the Igbo people are not people who you know encroach into people's um uh, or try to destabilize people's communities, right? They're very welcoming people. So they did, the history that we know is that the Olukumi people migrated to those areas and they were welcomed when they migrated there. Okay, so I'm just going to read a little bit for you. Odiani clan com comprised of eight communities which are said to be, to have historically emigrated from a cocoa area of Yoruba during the wars 
which raised which raged in that part of the pre-colonial Africa. During the 18th century, when they arrived at the at the present day Delta states, the Yoruba Edo uh, emig emigrants also, and the Igbos from the east um, of the Niger, Niger River have been on ground for a minimum of sorry, hold on, I think I'm getting lost in my communication. Unable to communicate, sorry, a minimum of three centuries, sorry, a minimum of three, un unable to communicate with the hostile people or all around them. That's where they were coming from. They, they, they came in contact. Sorry. C can you take that line a bit? Just go back two steps because I'm actively listening. I really want to respect what you have. So I'm taking down notes. Just go back uh, maybe me, a few words. Yeah. And let me read it again. Okay. So it says that. Hold on, I think I'm going to read it from the, the top. Anyocha North local government is the smallest, most northerly, and most rural of Delta State. It consists of 16 communities grouped into three clans, Eze, Chima, Odiani, Idumuje, Idumuje, sorry. Odiani clan comprises of eight communities which are said to have historically emigrated from Akoko area of Yoruba during the wars which raged in that part of pre-colonial Africa during the 18th century. Um, sorry, during the 18th century, when they arrived at their present day Delta state, the Yoruba, the Yoruba Edo emigrants and the Igbos have been on the ground for a minimum of three centuries. That's what it says here. But it, what I'm understanding here, because I'm just reading from a post on Facebook, which I'm, again I'm not going to say that this is this is a, this is a, a scholarly work, and it is on the Odua People's Sovereign Movement. So I'm reading from your own Yoruba um, Facebook page. So if you guys want to go and have a look, Odua People's Sovereign Movement on on Facebook. I just quickly checked this, but I know I've I've got some scholarly work which I haven't got at hand with me. But from my from my research, it says eighteenth the eighteen um centuries when they migrated to that place. So I don't understand when people say, uh, you know, that they've been there for a very very long time. There's it's it's well known as well documented, well researched. But what we uh, can thanks do... thanks Queen Shiba. Sorry for like I just want to like quickly clarify something before we the whole thing gets complicated, so we can see what's going on and we can put our emotions aside because um it's getting hot no, small, no, small. I'm emotional for me because no, no, i'm not, not from, you i'm not i'm not saying you i'm not from that particular area but yeah i'm not I'm, saying i'm not saying you seriously what i'm saying is that for you to say if you want to talk about the if you want to talk about where the where people mm. are from olukumi is a migrant the people who are there they know they themselves know they migrated right because they are surrounded by eagles they migrated to that area. In fact, I can put a, 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 a screenshot of the migration pattern on my on my my uh, PTR, so you can see it. the The point is, everybody knows that. So there's no. I mean, everybody in the Igbo side knows that that was a migrant, uh, a migrant set of people that came. But they now they are like they are part and parcel of that land. They've been welcomed. Igbo people don't fight other people. They've been welcomed. The, the land that they currently own right now, nobody's taking it from them. They are well, you know, integrated into that uh, community. But what we must be careful is that narrative of saying that they got there before the Igbos there. That is incorrect. So that's something you must, you know, make sure you correct because when you when this kind of narrative starts, it starts very small, small, small. Before you know what's happening, somebody will now tell us that Yoruba, the land, the Igbo people land there belongs to Yoruba. That is not correct. So Olukumi is very, very well known. They moved there because of some war that happened and they migrated from Yoruba through to Edo, through the Edo area and into that particular land that they are. So you know, I don't know where you're. Maybe you might want to point us to some uh, scholarly work. So, I've not finished my point. Let me finish my point because I did allow you to come to finish your point. Um, how could you be? How can you be surrounded by uh, by Igbos and then you say that you own? You know that you are indigenous. It doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. Then the second thing I would like to say. Is that let me just let me just uh, say this. 
you know, if you, if for example, Igbo people migrate to Yoruba land, right? Um, maybe in the 18th century or something, uh, you know, maybe as a result of a war, maybe they were fighting a war with the Shekiri or something and they migrated to a particular point in Lagos, right? And they've lived there, or let's say even Oshun State or Ondo State, and they live there surrounded by Yorubas. And then one day they say, oh, we, we are the own, we are, we, you know, we are the ones that are indigenous and we own all of these land. It's not, it's not correct. You know, we've, we've been there, we've integrated. Mm -hmm. No one is chasing you away. You know, that's, that's their land. Okay. But when you talk about migration, we must also talk about what the history is. The history is well known. It's well known that they migrated. They themselves know that they migrated. So I don't understand this whole narrative that they that they originally owned the land. Yeah. So what I, what I wanted to point out is this: the first thing. So, is so about... Mr. Alabala, before you go, let me just ask Queen Shiba: Were you here when um, the narrative of we saying they own the land was being said? Were you here at the time? Were you in the room at the time? When we talked about the history of these communities, were you were you around? I was listening to part of it, but I've not listened to everything, so maybe I've missed that. Okay, uh, Mr. Olabola, you can you can go on because I didn't notice if you. I didn't think you were. I don't think you were around because I know when you came into the room. So, but Mr. Olabola, you can go on with what you wanted to say. Yeah. So, from the question, White Lion, as it looks like a preconceived notion. So I'm going into the room. No, let me, you would you would what, remember that you would remember what that I, I saw you, right? Yeah, no, sorry, one yeah. second. Just yeah, you would you, remember. I saw some stuff that White Lion posted, and that is why I came off stage. That is not correct. Okay, that's why I came off stage. Wait, what, what, did, what did I post? What did you post? I saw it on your on the chat. Sorry, I don't okay. want to derail the room, but I just feel like no, no, but we, we are already to... in this, so you must stand by your words, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are my words, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what did he post? I, well, you want me to read it out for you? I can read it out. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I want Hold to read it out. I'm just going to get it. Okay, so why you I think he's out? referring to uh, somebody said the Olukumi people migrated into that place and met Igbo people there. And I'm, I replied and said, according to the narratives of the Obi of Ukunzu, that the Olukumi people were there. And then other migrants came and mixed in with them at that place. So that's why I think that is the post he's referring to. So uh, that was what I posted in the okay, back. Okay, so if so, that's the post. Okay. No, that's not what I stole. So okay, anyway, go ahead. do you have go a very bit <laughs> Kushima is not normally come to come to disrupt, but this is my this is like the you know, Anioma people, and I just I just want to make sure that we are not creating it because I know this app how people change things on this app and then before you know what's happening Igbo people are being uh you know you imagine know, also lies. yes so that's why i mean we already have a conversation had a conversation about oh look at me before we very very everybody respects each other everybody respects their space there is no fights there's no communal clashes you know so, the, so, the, Queen, all... the thing is the thing is in an north right there are three clans of people like you're, you even you you already read it right yeah. Oh, there is the there is the Idumoje clan that have a, uh, Ishan links, right? So many of them have an history of migration from Esan land. That's the Idumoje people. We are talking about Idumoje, no, Idumoje, Boko, and the rest. There is the Ezechima clan, right? Onichalona, Ubongpa, and the rest. And then there is the Odiani, or the Olukumi people, right? Now, this theory group of people that are assembled in Aniocha North, right, have their own villages. It's not like these people are interspaced between, so like, it's not like you go, you see one uh, uh, Idumuje town, the next one will be an Izechima clown, uh, town, the next one will be an uh, Olukumi town, no. They all have their defined territories within that local government, right? So the people who settle in a particular area are not settling on people's land if they settled in that area from antiquity. They are settling in their land within that particular general geographical space. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, take for I example, don't. Take, That's for example, it. the Ebu people, right, uh -huh. who are Igalas, who are settled at the northeastern extremity, right? of that area 
in, I think, Oshimili North, right? Those Ebu people that settled in that place own the land on which they settle. When you say own, you have to define what that means. Own in terms of... They came there, settled no, there, and established day. themselves. Okay, fine. No, that is fine. That's, population. that's what no, it means. Indigenous, come on now. They see they settled can I, there. Can I say a few things? It's, I, I, it's I like just... me. No, hold wait, on. wait, 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 wait. What do you mean they are not indigenous? No, hold on. If so, so wait, wait, wait. The Benin, the Benin people of Ozanogogo, are they indigenous or not indigenous to Ika Northwest? The Benin people the Ozanogogo of Ozanogogo people, very close to Albo, are they indigenous or not? What do you mean can by I, can I Ozanogogo? In here, please? I'm telling you that so the Ika. Oh, there is an different. area there that speaks a Benin dialect and are indigenous to that land. So, and I'm asking you now that those people from Ozanogogo are it they indigenous to that question, area? He's or they are the question. Not Listen to the question. Is very the whole thing. No, he's a, these are dialects. These are Shiba. dialects. One second. Shiba, of course, they are dialects. Uh, Deka, Shiba, wait, let's, let's make this thing very orderly. So, we're not going to like be doing this back and forth. Um, while White Lion is asking his question, if you are talking at that same time, we are just going to go in this visual circle because you would not even listen, you would not hear that question and you want to answer that question which you didn't hear. So it will be best if you let him ask that question. If there is something you don't understand, ask him, like, no, ask the question again. When that question is clear to you, that's when you begin answering. Do not begin answering a question that you've not heard. I think that's the fair thing to do. So let's not do this back and forth. Like while I'm talking, you're talking. We are just fighting for the loudest voice, not to pass anything across to the other person. Like you know that whatever I'm about to say, he's not listening. Nobody can hear because we are making noise, but I will still talk. That's not what we want to do. That's not productive. Let's yeah, exactly. Talk. Thank you very much, Mr. Alabala. So my question was just simple, right? Um, my question was um, in the definition of who is considered indigenous and who is not considered indigenous. I asked uh, based on an example. I cited the ethnic Ozara people found in Ika South, right? After Oga, like you know, now if you're traveling that Benin, uh, that Benin Asaba road, right? Immediately you leave Abudu, you enter Ika South, right? Now in that Ika South right it's majorly Ika people that are there we know but there is a particular part of that local government that speak Osara Osara is not an Iboid language it's a doid very very close to Isha and Benin they are settled in Ika South right but their very close neighbors are Ika people Boji Boji Owa Albo Main Township and the rest right so now I'm asking those Ozara people of Ozanogugu, right, and the surrounding areas, they are, not that, they are not that much, but they are there. Would you consider those people to be indigenous to that land they are settled, but which is presently in Delta State? On the other side of the equation, would you consider the Ibanke people, right, that are settled in their indigenous land, but which is now in Edo State? Would you consider those people indigenous to those places or would you call them migrants into the Benin kingdom and Benin land and are considered settlers so that's just my question it's very simple it's not complicated at all can i speak now please no i mean queen shiba is queen shiba there she's probably busy maybe someone else can, can i speak now please? yeah I'm not, busy. I'm not busy one second so ibanke people yeah ibanke, ibanke people and Osara. yeah ibanke are Igbos, okay? Igbanke people are not Edo. They are Igbo people. I'm from Ika. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I know what you're talking about because you see the languages, when you look at um, Edo, Edo states and uh, Ika, uh, they are very, very close in terms of, there's, a, there's an area where there's a mixing up of languages because they are at the borders. Yeah, so you will find people who actually speak a do in those those border areas, because you re must remember the, the whole country was cut up in different different ways that are not actually supposed to be anyway. But when you want to look at the clans, the Igbo people are Igbanke people are Igbos, but there are some part near Igbanke that speak a do. Those ones are a do people, yeah. But that that is their land. They they speak Edo. They are, that is where they are. 
the the Igbo people know where their where their land is. Exactly. So no, no, no. No, no, wait, hold on. Queen Shiba, you're not answering the question, no. No, wait now. I'm answering your question. Ozano go go, they are indigenous. Yeah? Those people, they have a mixture of languages because of the close proximity between Edo and Ika. Okay? But this particular one is a different one. Olukumi migrated. Wait, but Ozano go go migrated at one point or the other too. too. Everybody they migrated, migrated. Queen Shiba. Okay. No, hold on. You you're not you know you don't understand this whole gist, okay? If you don't really know the thing, maybe you just wait till I, those of us who are from there can tell you. We've read Let narratives from the obese. We've read narratives from the obese. We've had people know. from there here on stage. You're not interrupting me, and you said people should not interrupt. Why? Okay, you sorry about that, but you can continue. You, but I just wanted to, to tell you that we've been past this. We've even had another look at me person. Wait. You're, you're, if you don't want me to speak, I can just go down. There are some. There are some. Let me let me read out the villages that were cut into a do state that are actually Igbos. Igwanke, Oga Iru, Etu Etu or Haeze or something like that. Ekbon is a mixture of Edo and Eka. We are actually very, very similar. We, I mean, we when I say similar, we we understand each other very well. But Ekbon people, we know that there's a mixture of Edo with Eka. Okay, then you don't have the you have then you now before, when you start going down down uh, east you, before you now be find okay more of the Igbos very very Igbo speaking, but you will find at the corners like just before you know Edo you will see the mixture, but they know that they are Igbos. Okay, now these are not a migration from one place to that place. For example, Ika people now did not migrate from one location to. To come into Ika where, where they are now. No. The same thing for the Ozanogogo you're talking about. They are indigenous, they've been there, but there's a mixture of languages by, by reason of their proximity um, to, uh, to the Ika speaking areas and the Edo speaking areas. Okay? So that is where they are. That they've been indigenous there thousands of years. But you now have an Olukumi people who actually migrated from Yoruba land to that particular place they are in, in the middle they are in the middle of Igbos, surrounded by Igbos. if you go and look at the map so this narrative of that that land is in they they owned it before no in fact what uh, what the white lion said was that they were there first and Igbos migrated and met them there and that is why i came upstate that is, is completely Incorrect. Um, okay. Let's let's be yeah, so, 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 um, can I can I hold on hold on I, please hold on, on. let her, oh, sorry please let her <laughs> random let her finish her submission. She, no, she I think she has finished. Yeah. I've not so, finished. She has I'm, not. Let her finish her submission yeah, before we come in. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, this is Yoruba Nation, and I respect your your club. Okay, I've not come here to uh, cause problems or anything. But the reason why I came up was because of what I read, and I I'll read it out again. So that nobody will not say, okay, Kunshibia came here to say say rubbish or whatever. You, um, White Lion, please check what you said in the chats. You said that the uh, Olukumi people were there and Igbos migrated to meet them there. That is what I came up here stage to correct. That is not true. It's not true and nobody should run with that narrative. They migrated to that particular place but that particular land already was an Igbo land. They came there and they've been accepted. They've integrated. They, in fact, there's no even right now when you get to all those places, there's no, there's no two, there's no question about whether that is their land or not right now because they, they've integrated so well and they, and if they speak the language, they're all part of the same, right? Right now. Yoruba, nobody comes and says, oh, this person is Yoruba, this person is Igbo. No, they, there's just been a lot of, uh, what's it called, oneness with the people that are, are, are in those areas. So there is no dispute. But what we must not allow to, to, to foster is that narrative of they were there and Igbo people came to meet them there. That, that statement is full of a lot of wahala because that will be something that can happen later in the future. Someone will now say, Igbo land now that is there belongs to Yoruba. Let's not create, create, create narratives that are not correct. The fact that people were there and they might get there 
was was something that happened is recorded well in history i wish i have my ubodu book i have a book ubodu uh, 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 this thing on my my shelf i can get it in fact whilst you're talking i can get it out so that i can read it out because this one i was reading earlier was from facebook but I'll, i'm done for now yeah uh, uh, yeah sorry okay um can i can i just respond to that very quickly right okay so um the narrative right um or where the confusion seems to be to be entering the picture is that queen shiba is packing the whole of western Igbo land as a whole right as one monolithic piece of land that has always been Igbo land right and some people now came and joined them there let me read what i said in the back chat and what i was actually referring to um is a no no ugo said or the Ani clan is because of the Aboriginal Igbo they are mixed with. I now replied, uh, uh, Ugo is a no no, and said, No, Igbos actually came there and met them already there and mixed with them. So, in this particular instance, I'm not referring to the whole of Aniocha land, I'm not referring to the whole of Enuani people, I'm not referring to the whole of Anioma land. I'm referring to the Odiani villages, the Olukumi villages, gong, 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 gong. those are the people I'm referring to. That those people have already been settled in their villages. Some people later came and joined them in those villages. I'm not saying that Olukumi people owned Anyoma land and then Igbos came and met them in Anyoma land. And I'm not saying the Olukumi people settled in the area of Enuani and then Igbos came and met them in Enuani. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying amongst themselves in their villages, they've been settled there and then some Igbos came and mixed in with them. And this, uh, um, what I said is corroborated by the official account of the Obi of Ukunzu. He said it, right? So this is not even me even saying it in this instance. Now to the question of migration um the story uh, the the question i asked about was anogogo and the story i asked about um um uh Ibanke in edo state now the issue is everybody migrated from one place to another in the course of history at one particular time or the other right i already talked about um the reference of um um the Igbo and the Ibibio speaking people of uh southeastern nigeria by i think it was by gh ford where he classified the, vill the different village groups of Anyoma land and their traditions of origin. And it said specifically that the Odiani, who had been settled in that area, have a tradition of origin from further west. I think that much is not in dispute, right? I think now the issue here is that um, uh, um, the area where the Odiani are settled and the villages where they are settled Queen Shiba seems to think that maybe because they are an island language group in the Enuani area, then that means that the villages where they are settled, maybe they met some people there and took over those land from them or something like that. But the truth of the matter is that the, those areas where they are settled were actually virgin land at the time when they got there. The other Igbos that came and settled in those other areas, or even if there were Igbos there around the surrounding settlements as at the time, as at the time they settled, were not settling in the same place as the place where they settled. And also to correct this common misconception that they are completely surrounded by Igbos. No, they are not completely surrounded by Igbos. They are, set complete, they are surrounded by Igbos on almost three sides, but not quite three, on sort of like an arc, two sides and maybe like a three quarter on the on the third and then on the northern side there is eastern land when you live there you enter Ohodua. Ohodua is in every state. and then on the eastern side from um from what's it called um from from um ogodo you can go and travel and enter a and cross the river and enter into Kogi states. So they are not really an island, so to speak. They are not surrounded 360 degrees. They are surrounded, yes, on, 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 um, on two sides, on almost three sides, they are surrounded by, uh, by Enu and the communities. But on one side, they are surrounded by Eastern communities. And then partially on one side, they are, they are, they are bordered by the Igala. So I think that is where I don't know. Leave that clears up some air, but that is what I was referring to in the back channel. Um, yes, I think Ola Bola wanted to go next, actually. But um, who is that? I think that that's. Uh, that's, 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 that's 
that, I think that's think. Okay. Um, maybe think and go, Mr. Alabala. Okay, so <laughs> you know the interesting thing about this whole thing. I've been listening to this room, but um, I initially did not want to get into the polemics because um those towns are actually on my way to on the way to my own village which is on the Cholana. and um we have very close interaction with the ulukumi people you if you are coming to on Cholana, you have to go through i mean one way to go in, get to my village is to go through isiluku and once you go through isiluku you also have to isiluku is bordered by onichubu and at some point, you have to detour somewhere within the Seluku town, heading towards the Olukumi villages. So that's how contiguous they are. And from, from Isoluku to my village is less than 15 minutes drive. So that's how contiguous we are to those um, towns. Now, uh, what I find interesting is that um, Somebody, please mute that can shut. Please continue right now. Uh, continue. Okay. Yeah. So, um, we, there's a danger of um, us um, looking at this history from some of the um, claims that were made from the Benin Empire. This this has always been the problem we in Anioma have always had. The, there's always been that attempt to. Um, revise our history, which actually predates the Benin Empire. Um, and um, this was actually encouraged by the U European writers who apparently um, did everything to, um, I mean, tie up uh, otherwise independent neighboring um, states to the Benin Empire. So if you say, because everything looks seems to have looked like it started from the 12th century, more or less. Uh, the Inri civilization was prevalent as far back as the 8th century in all of those areas. And um, <clears throat> there were several waves of migrations, uh, inclusive of the Ezechima migration, the back migration from Benin when the when is the Chima an Inri priest uh, emigrated to Benin initially and moved back uh, through Anioma on his way back to uh, the the center of uh, Igbo land or the parts of Igbo land which were I mean, terminated around Onicha. Now um, <clears throat> the for the, uh, the the history actually that we know and the account there is that the Olukumi people migrated to that area, and it was as a result of a lot of wars that were going on at the time, and this also coincided with the uh, rapid expansion of the Benin Empire, and um, the Benin Kingdom was making westward and eastward expansions, and this led to all of that. Um, all of those disruptions and uh, people moved. Now, if you say um, the people, uh, the Olukumi people, have different neighbors, how come they are they were mainly? I mean, the dialectic uh, interactions are more of Igbo than of their other neighbors, Igala and the Ishan. The, the, the work you were reading also stated that you can find Urukumi people in parts of Ishan. So that already shows the migratory path in which they took. They came from that direction via the Ishan towns uh, from Yoruba land, via the Ishan, uh, the Ishan towns into uh, what is today known as the Anioma area. And that is how um, they have um, integrated into that area. So we need to be a bit careful with the fact that we can establish that by the mere fact that you come into an expanse of land contiguous to a people 
who have existed for hundreds of years, even before the Benin Empire, uh, that we can now say that they are indigenous to that area. I'm not sure it's exactly the right way to present that history. And uh, it, we can also say the same for anyone who actually could have walked into, I mean, the Benin also expanded towards Lagos and claim that uh, parts of Lagos were their fishing routes and all of that. And if there was any um, westward expansion into those areas by a couple of a group of people that who just went into, I mean, it's, it's also similar to what we are trying to avoid today when we say Fulani is just walking to some of the surrounding bush parts in our, or the bush forests in our areas. And in another, 200, 300 years, they claim to be indigenous to those areas. So we, we need to be very careful about that. And uh, uh, the, um, it's important that we just have that clear distinction. They have been, the Oluku people have been accepted and integrated into that part of um, um, Anyocha land. And uh, we have lived there, they have lived there for hundreds of years. They have their, they know they are who they are, they have, they do, but, they have the, the prevalent language, obviously, is Igbo. There, and um, it's obvious that there were that there was a migratory path to that place where they exist, where they, they now uh, exist, and the prevalent language they are spoken is Igbo. So let's not try to um, overflog an issue that clearly. Um, it, and also, there's also something I, I noticed when I checked. They say, I mean, from some work I saw, it says that there are about 17,000 native speakers. If you do a population regression analysis, uh, um, regression analysis backward by about 400 years, maybe to 1570, maybe, uh, I mean, you will have maybe 1% of that population existing at the time in that area, so which is less than maybe just slightly over 100. Assuming that the average size of a family is about 20 people, you will know that maybe that was just about six or seven or eight families that moved at the time. So there's no way indigeneity can be ascribed to that kind of um, Many speakers at the time, and as far back as 1570. You know, so that's just what I wanted to say. I didn't want to. I didn't want to come. To, I just wanted us to go with the academic work, and um, but let's not dwell on the polemics and just understand that these people have a heritage from Yoruba land, and uh, they are they've been accepted by us um, in Anyocha. Are you? Um, Vic, you can go. Okay. Um, as as a Delta, so I want to come in as an insider as well. So I've listened to Pinshiba. I've also listened to Mr. Tink. So I heard him saying that uh, the Olukumi people, they are migrants. Well, the facts on ground and records, historical facts that were put down even by Anyoma historians. An example is Emeka Esobwe, one of the best historians in Anyoma. He made it clear that the Olukumi people, they are one of the oldest people in the Anyoma region. This, was also, this is also prevalent in Benin histories, where they tied the Olukumi history with that of the Obaiweka, which puts, puts the history of Olukumi people to about 800 years ago. It is there in Benin history. I'm coming. I'm coming. Hello. Sorry, sorry, Vic. Vic, hold on. Okay. I actually moved you down, think. And in fact, without explaining, everyone would know why. And the reason I would explain is that while you were talking, you would notice something happen. You know, people, when we talk, we hear people, we see them 
we, we think we have the power to make them mute. No, we don't have any power to make them mute. They actually mute because they want to be responsible. Like, yes, I don't agree, but speak. That's what it means. So what you are doing by unmuting is to tell us that you don't agree with Vic. You don't even have to unmute for me to know you don't agree with him. You could just have allowed him speak. Then take your time later and speak. But then you are muted and I'm saying, hold on, bro. You wouldn't listen. Okay. So that Vic can speak, you would have to go down, allow him to speak, then you come back up. I think that's a fair way to, to go about it. Can I go ahead now? Go oh, okay. Okay, so the, there are several historical facts to show that the Olukumi people, they are amongst the oldest people in the Anyoma region. Somebody is saying, uh, like Queen Shiba and uh, Ting is saying, the Anyoma people, uh, the Olukumi people, they migrated. Who did not migrate in that region? For example, he said he's from, uh, where is this place? Uh, Onisha Olona. Who are the Onisha Olona? They are descendants of Eze Shime. Who is Eze Shime? Some people claim that Eze Shime is, an, is from Ar Aro, which is Abia State. Others claim he himself claimed that Eze Shime was from Unri, which means Eze Shime migrated himself. In Benin, they put uh, Eze Shime existence to the 16th century. Now, a 16th century, a descendant of a 16th century migrant is saying others who have been well recorded since 12th century. He's saying the 12th century people, those who, who are supposed to be known as uh, the aborigines, are migrants. While he himself, who is a descendant of a migrant from Munri or Aro, is not a migrant, but is the aborigine. Uh, I don't know how he arrived at such logic. Also, in responding to Queen Chiba, Queen Chiba said she's from Ika and she said she's Sibo. Well, in reality, here in Delta State, more than 90% of the Ika people, none of them will accept to be called Igbo. In fact, the, uh, what is it called? This, uh, the Obi of Agbo recently banned any office chief that will come in Igbo attire and said they don't want anything to do with Igbos. On Ika, which is the mad piece of all Ika people, in 2020, they made a declaration that they are not Igbo and do not belong to Igbo. So also that anyone who is associating with Igbos is doing that on their own capacity and not as Ika people. Now, what I don't know the time you hail from in Ika land, but I do know that almost all the towns in Ika land are either from Umri or from Benin or Esan. So I don't know how you arrive at the point that you are an aborigine, why the Lukumi man is not an aborigine, because you are also an Im immigrant to this part of the world. Yeah, and to cap it all. Wait, I'm coming. To cap it all. In that, I'm coming. In that Anyosha region, in that Anyosha region, there are three groups. The Dumuje and the the Olukumis and the uh, Ezechime descendants. Now, the Dumuje are mostly Essence. The Olukumi people. The Olukumi people, they are pure Yorubas. Yes, we have a, we know that. Then, the Ezechime descendants. These three groups migrated. There is one that is an aborigine. If there is anyone that can be ascribed the status of an aborigine, is that of the Olukumi, which is the oldest. Because they witnessed the migration of the Ezechime children, descendants of Ezechime of 16th century. So you saying that uh, the Olukumi people who are well established aborigines are now migrants, and you a descendant of uh, Ezechime, who is a well known in all history, is a migrant, is not even from this part of the world. He was a native daughter, Ezechime is a native daughter that came to Benin to cure to cure uh, an oba. He was working in Benin as a native daughter from Muri. Other Igbo claim he was from Aro. If you say it's from Aro, Aro was in the 1700s, which means it's very, very recent. So I don't know how you arrive at the point of uh, Olukumi being migrants and you being aborigine. You are trying to turn logic on his head. So do you have any academic research to prove this? The last time you quoted, you quoted uh, a Facebook post, which is very laughable. You should go and search. You are saying things that I didn't tell you. No, I'm not responding to you. I'm talking about Shiba. I've responded to you earlier. 
So Emeka is so well, it's an annual my historian. He made it clear that the people of Olukumi are amongst the ancient people in that area. Benin also collaborated this fact, and there are also historical uh, European records that talked about Olukumi in the 1600s. So you put in the history of Olukumi at 1800 is laughable because there's no academic work to back such. So this is what I have to contribute. Thank you. Okay, so can I respond now? Please, think one second. So this gentleman, right, when you come on the stage and you want to talk about... Is it possible for you to Vic, mute? can you mute? Thank you. Please, can you mute? Okay. I cannot come on a stage and talk about a dope people the way you just spoke about my Very condescendingly and very, very annoying. Very, and very rude, right? You cannot come here. I, don't, I know this is Yoruba Nation, but you were very rude. You come here and you talk about my people like you're talking about some, some refrats. Are you all right? Now, let me address you. They are empire builders now. No, empire exactly. builders. I, I, I haven't come here to talk about Edo people migrating from somewhere. How would you feel if I tell you that Edo people actually are not indigenous to that land, that's where you are? How would you feel if I tell you that you migrated from another country to where you are now? Let me say from Ghana. Don't come here and, and, and talk down on a people like you think you know. What history have you read? What history have you read? Your own version of history because you want to claim other people's land? Because the adult people want to expand? So you have the audacity to come on a stage and talk rudely about other people's, other people's, uh, 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 um, what's it called, uh, ethnicity? Are you okay? Now let me address you. I am Ika. You cannot tell me whether I'm Igbo or not. You have no right, no right in this earth, in heaven, and everywhere else to come here and tell me that I should not be, I should not, I, uh, that my, the car people you know don't identify, identify themselves as Igbo. Who are you? Who you be? I'm sorry to everybody who's the, who's the moderator in this room, but when you see someone that comes here and, dis, and disrespect other people's cultures, they should be called out. Vic or whatever you call yourself, right? I will not come here and tell you that Edo people should call themselves Yoruba. I won't tell you to call yourself Isham or call yourself uh, uh, Shakiri. How dare you? How dare you come here and tell me as an Ika person, an Igbo person, I should not call myself Igbo. That even my king say I'm not Igbo. Are you all right? What nonsense is that? And this, this whole narrative where some people think that they have a right to talk about Igbo people's land and Igbo people's culture and Igbo people's language, the way they think that is right, this thing needs to stop. Who are you? If I don't encroach into your, into your own language, I don't encroach into your ethnicity, how dare you come and encroach into mine? Because you have mouth. Hello, Koshiba, please. Let's, no, I'm uh, sorry, Otumba. I'm sorry. I'm let's, sorry. Let's when you people saw down. how disrespectful he was. I, so let I, me I really take you. exception to this let big guy. This is what the adult guys way. do all the time. Uh, let me address thank him that What do you guys think Otumba, you are? I'm sorry. Just bear with me one second. Thank one second. I'm going to calm down. I'm going to calm down. Please hold on first, Konshiba. I get where you're coming from, but regardless, let us ensure that uh, we maintain a, a very uh, appropriate temperature of the room, such that things do not get escalated. Uh, it is unfortunate that you came to the room a bit late. Uh, the intention uh, for setting up this room is far from what we are, we, are, we are saying here. We just wanted to connect with our brothers and sisters uh, in that part of where we call Nigeria today. So, you know, whichever way you are feeling right now, you totally have the right to do, uh, to do so. But please, let us just ensure that we maintain decorum. Uh, yeah, 
Quinshiba, please, you can go. I respect and, and sorry, what? before Quinshiba, before you go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, like Otumba said, he's a uh, let's uh, respect uh, each other. You know, uh, actually, this room, uh, the discussion from the onset wasn't about Igbo people or, you know, like we were just talking about the Anioma, uh, the Badiolukumi people, you know, and where they are today in uh, in Nigeria, you know, and the land and all that. That was a discussion, not uh, talking about the Igbo or talking about uh, who owns the land and all that. So we were talking and we had a. Uh, we had someone from the Olukumi that was here, and uh, she talked about uh, their their history. You know, we can. So that was uh, what this room is all about. So I just want us to like uh, take it easy uh, in the room. Yeah. No, let me just warn you, Vic and your Edo people. Uh, you see, we in Anyoma, we are very quiet. Think. No, no, hold on. Let me just finish. Wait, we are very sorry, quiet. Sorry. We fought uh, the sorry. British for uh, thirty-one uh, years. What? Hold on, please. Uh, Mr. Vic is not even a door. Mr. Vic is from Delta State. I just said something so. that uh, this is not about Igbo. When you uh, keep expanding your Edo. empire, you keep expanding your empire and into a normal land. So, we, 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 like, you're not even Vic, sure Vic if the not, guy is from... You're not even sure not if even the guy is from Edo. You know, you're not even sure if he's from Edo or where he's so, from. You know? Let me just finish. So All right. Let's take it I respect the moderator. Kushiba, please go ahead. Okay, I respect the moderator, so I'm not going to derail your room. But I would just want to educate Vic that I would really want you, when you when you're studying in the Nigerian construct, until Nigeria divides, if it's ever going to divide, yeah? When you go into conversations and we talk about people's ethnicity and people's um, people's languages and people uh, uh, where they're from, be very careful. Be very careful because you might, you might be treading on the on the wrong path and it, it, it's not it's not the right thing to do it, it's better to ask questions and say okay can you just tell me a little bit more if you say you're Igbo can you tell me a bit more why why do you say you're Igbo or if you say are you guys really Igbo you know try and ask for those kind of questions that you can be educated open questions and then I can educate you okay and just to let you know I'm Igbo full Igbo I'm Ika yes that's my that's my that's my clan yeah i'm 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 I'm, uh, I'm someone that if i if i try to i don't want to spend a long time explaining it to you because you really it's not really worth it but i want you to try and go and understand okay because it's not right when you tell somebody oh this person you you, you all the people i know i i it was no so for your information we are very very aware of what is happening from the Edo side. Very, very aware. Very, very aware of this whole narrative of wanting um, to make Ika people Edo. It's a very, very known fact. We know it very well and we resist it. Yes, there are some people that have been convinced to, to believe that, okay, they, sh they should call themselves Edo because of the way Nigeria has cut them. Some of them have been cut into Edo states, like for example, the Igbanke people, Iru, and a few other people that have been cut into Edo states. That doesn't mean that they are Edo. You might say, okay, the Ika people have a, a king that uh, um, aligns with Edo people because we know what the Benin Empire did a long time ago, where they sent their, where their kings were ruling in many places, not just in Ika. All right? So the fact that you might have a king that has some Edo uh, uh ornaments because i hear some people say oh, he has this in his house or he has this in his house. that doesn't mean that that person is a do and by the way a, a king or a, a leader that identifies himself with uh, uh so many things from the benin kingdom doesn't make him and his people a benin okay and i don't even know where that narrative comes from because a lot of people say oh he has this in his house it looks like a do no that does not make him an edo person and then when you talk about Eze Chima's clan, Eze Chima that migrated to Edo and was a was a, 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 a juju man or so, right? Are you telling me that he's the only one that existed at that time? There were people in Anyoma land. He migrated, he went there, he came back. That doesn't mean that everybody else that was there evaporated into the thin air whilst he was gone. So people be very, very careful when you try to, uh, uh, when I, I see this a lot, people try to want to revise Igbo people's history. I don't know why. You cannot revise our history. It is well known, it is well known that Olukumi people migrated. Yes, they have their own land, 
they are respected in our in our in our in our, in in in, in, the, in the in the area that they are but that doesn't make them the people who first of all get God there. And that narrative of saying, oh, Igbo people came to me, that, that is what I'm try I came here to correct. And I'm glad that White Lion, you know, tried to uh, explain what he was saying. Igbo people have always been in that land. That land belongs to Igbo people. Yes, we had migrants come in like you will have migrants to many other places in Nigeria. That does not mean that that person actually is the owner of that land. Or they are the ones that, uh, oh, sorry, indigenous to that land. Yes, they are now settled and nobody's going to chase anybody out of there. But they are Yoruba people. They, are, they speak Yoruba. That is their language. We all know where the Yoruba people are. Even Yoruba people are even in Togo, indigenous to those Togo land, yeah? But when you have people who migrate from their area to a place that is predominantly Igbo, then don't, don't change the history. And if you're going to try to say something else, then bring your, bring your sources. If you say I should bring my own sources, bring your sources. But one thing I would really, really encourage people not to do is to try and change Igbo history or trying to tell Igbo people that, oh, you are not Igbo. Don't try it next time. I don't know where you're from, but don't try it next time. Oh, oh, can I, can I, can I something? So, um, I've been waiting to respond. Like, uh, yeah, 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 okay, uh, Mr. Labola. Enjoy evening, but thank After Mr. Labola, Damilari, you can you can pick up the yeah. mic. So, I just want to clarify. Real quick, like two seconds, two two minutes. Okay, go. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not making a contribution per se. I just want to, you know, to in the path of what Otuba and Mr. Adams said. You know, I think there's some things we can all agree on. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, um, so when it comes to human settlement patterns, uh, for the most part, uh, natural boundaries such as rivers, lakes, mountains play a major part in setting boundaries. So why am I saying this? Uh, if we look at that region, we have the river Niger, the Benue, and, you know, and it has its own unique topography. So it will create some kind of natural boundaries where you will, where one people will meet other people that will cause what we see that area, a mix of peoples, right? People come from the east, the west, the north, the south. And as a result of that, there is no way we won't have some of this confusion we're having now. So for me, it's not something to cause acrimony. It's just something for us to see it as what it is. That is an area where different civilizations are meeting. No, so, but correct. They migrated. It is yeah, I understand. No, no, sure. like Everybody migrated. Wait, will. hear me out, please. Hear me out, please. I'm not making one claim or the other. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to encourage us to appreciate the fact that such a thing, anywhere you go in the world, right, it will not be unusual to find a mix of peoples that would lead to... because. When you have this kind of mix of people, and then we now try to do academic delineations, right? It will, you, it will always come to this, right? So for me, if there is no conflict of somebody trying to take somebody's blood or claiming one thing, I just see for what it is that, oh, wow, that is an interesting area where we have many people, and for the most part, they're living in peace. So I, I, I choose to see that from that perspective as opposed to resort to the acrimony that this thing is um, tending towards. So I just want to encourage us to, you know, appreciate that fact for what it is. That this is actually an area where you have many people that is relatively peaceful. Where how many places in the world can you can you say that, right? And I think that's a testament to the nature of the different peoples that are there. And that is something I would actually encourage us to celebrate, you know, and and, and to talk about and to say, wow, how can this be replicated all over the world? as opposed to focusing on uh, delineations because that is going to be very murky waters if we try to delineate here and delineate there. So that's just my own submission. And I, I appreciate everybody's sentiment. Everybody has a right to their sentiment on this matter, but I'm just trying to bring it to different I'm perspective. I'm going to accept Thank that. You. See, we're no, not no, going to accept it's that. Fine. Um, have a look at my one second. I want to say something. PR. I've been waiting. Have a look at my like, I don't understand how I've been waiting as a mod. When Shiba says I must be quiet. <laughs> so, like I've been really waiting to say this. Uh, Mr. Lukiti, I bomb me. Thank you for the, you know, peaceful middle way, Degba. 
Yeah, there's a lot of wisdom in that. And everything you've said is truth. So I would also you know, take that approach of um, the middle ground. Let's see what's really going here. Peaceful. Without having to sacrifice anything of the fact, the way I know it to be fact, at least. So what I hear Queen Sheba responding to, she has made her submission. Some things I agree with, some things I do not. But one thing I want to point out is that she started off by attempting to respond to certain things, uh, comments from White Lion. But if one pay careful attention to what she's responding to, she's actually not responding to what White Lion said. Yes, she's giving a response, but to something else. Maybe something that has been some rumors that have been flying around outside of Clubhouse, which she kind of conflated between with what White Lion said, because there's a thin line between what White Lion said and what she must have been hearing before now, which she's actually responding to, thinking she's responding to White Lion. So I'm going to like um, point out those two things and we see where they, how they are similar, but also point out how they are different. Now, this is what White Lion is saying. White Lion is saying that the Olukumi people migrated. They are Yoruba people, no doubt, number one. They are, at least in the sense of their Yoruba heritage, and not that they are Yoruba, Yoruba in, in the sense of, um, say, Ogun people, Ogun state people today. Yoruba in the sense of Agbada and Talking Drum. Uh -huh, in that sense. So they still, in the sense of they came from Yoruba land, that's the sense in which they are Yoruba. Not that they've not borrowed culture over the course of the centuries. No, not that. So they've obviously borrowed, and there's some unique identity. But in terms of their origin, Yoruba, pure, like that. So they migrated, they are Yoruba people in the sense I've explained those two things. However, wherever they migrated to to occupy that land, that specific one they dot is their land. Nobody did them a favor, say, oh, you want to live here? Oh, yeah, take. We will respect, respect you. That narrative of respect, no, that's not what White Lion, White Lion is saying. White Lion is saying they've migrated, they occupied a specific spot in which they are. That place is their land, is their indigenous land. Now, the the conflation, what's maybe maybe popular out there in terms of um, you know all these rumors and people being mischievous, is the next one I'm going to say, and you would um, you know put them side by side and see how they're similar and also how they can be mistaken for one another. So what people may, might have been saying out there, which Queen Sheba may want to be responding to, is that some people may have said that they migrated to that part, yes, which is similar to what Wala is saying. They are Yoruba, yes, similar to what Wala is saying. They occupy the particular land they dot, yes, White Lion said that. They are, the addition is that not only do they own the land they stay on, they own the region, that particular whole region, outside of their own specific land they occupy. So people might have been putting out this narrative that the Olukumi people occupy, they own their own specific land. In addition, they own the land, the surrounding areas where the, you find the Anyoma people today that they owned. So if that is the narrative, then I can understand why Queen Shiba is um, angry and disgruntled. Because that's not the reality. They did not own the whole surrounding area where you find the Anyoma people today. So if, because if they do, it would mean that the Anyoma people later came to meet them and say, give us all these other surrounding areas which belongs to you so we can settle on, which is not the reality. The reality instead is that wherever specific spot they, they occupy, that is their own. They did not beg people likewise for that. So it's not a case of um, Anyoma people also came. And this is them. Um, so we've seen the difference between what White Lion is saying and what the false narrative might, might have been out there. White Lion is saying they occupy a specific point and that's their own land, not the surrounding other areas. So the narrative which um, I think um, Queen Shiba is responding to is that they occupy their land, including the surrounding areas, and the Anima people came there to beg them for that surrounding area. So White Lion wasn't saying that. Now, in response, Queen Shiba responded not to White Lion now, as we have seen, but to that popular false narrative. But in responding to that, she said some right things and she also made her own mistakes too. And the mistakes I think she made is that, uh, well, they did not own the area in which White Lion wasn't even saying in the first place. Who owns the area in um, Queen Sheba's um, thinking, in our opinion, 
is that the animal if you own the larger area not only the land where you find the animal themselves including all the surroundings where you find ulukumi that's what queen shiva is submitting to us today i'm just rep representing her first so they own the their own area where you find them including the surrounding area where you do not find them and then the um the olukumi people came and said something like please i beg let us live with you and they've been allowed to live in where they are today the animal people did them this favor and they've been you know internalized and no wahala peace we respect them now it has become their own land that is our response to that narrative you would find out there which is not coming from white lion anyways but in that response there is a mistake so the mistake really is that there is no so there is no evidence this is just queen shiba's own talk and she's saying that animal people own their land including the surrounding areas then the um Olukumi people migrated later you will know they migrated but it's about the sequence now they migrated later to beg from that surrounding area and then they gave it to them no that is not accurate in fact there has been no evidence whatsoever except for the fact that um queen shiba said it and repeated it and repeated it that is not evidence so i would want queen shiba to respond i would be making reference to vic's um submission at least the part that has to do with them um, indigenous people not necessarily the part that has to do with them um, are you evil or not uh, that's by the by the way that's not even what i want to go into and i think that's uh, something we shouldn't do if a king of the anyama people says my people are not evil and one evil says i am one animal person says i'm evil well he's she he or she is evil regardless he, of what the king thinks that is, the king did not say that so i don't want you to carry on with that oh person. okay okay so i don't want to let i don't want to go into that anyways so i don't want to give him the opportunity to now quote and read the king that would be another message you know opening the can of worms but he is alleging that the king said that and you're saying it, 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 it. so we're just going to leave it at that I think I feel like it. So Vic, Mr. Vic, Vic yes, yes. can you mute? You would have the chance to respond, but you can. Yeah. Can you just mute for now? But yeah, Vic, I wouldn't want you to read whether the king says that or not because that would be away from the point. I would want you to focus instead. You've made some very valid submission. You referenced something. You did something that Queen Sheba did not do. You, Queen Sheba made a submission. You made your submission, but you went extra to now say I would cite an academic source and you quoted a, a historian. No, you didn't quote an Edo historian. You didn't quote a Yoruba or Olukumi historian, you quoted an Anyoma historian who is saying that the Olukumi people are indigenous to that land. Now, here is. Did he give to that? Oh, he cited, and I would allow him quote, and I would allow you respond because you did not respond at all to that. Yes, you did respond to him on the issue of am I Igbo or not, but that's not what we want to do here. I respect the fact that you are Igbo because you say you are Igbo. I am Yoruba. Respect that because I say I'm Yoruba, regardless of what someone else is, what someone else say on my behalf. So he is saying here that the Olukumi people are indigenous people in response to your own response to the popular narrative out there not in re your response wasn't to white lion we've clarified what white lion said and what you're saying so here we see a case of me i'm not even saying the olukumi people came before the anyoma people came i'm saying that while i agree with that scholarly citation unless we have some updates to that that is a scholarly submission and there's some un unanimity to that and we haven't seen and you cite anything the closest you've cited um queen shiba would remind you was that facebook post and what we find in that facebook post is that even though we didn't say you we didn't say queen shiba check take this link and read it out to us you said you wanted to find your own evidence you had the freedom to bring to us whatever you want and then you went to a post which you said is a yoruba but then we didn't say being yoruba so when you gave us that what we heard you read I, and I wrote it down as soon as you said it because I said, we say that again. Something about 300 years, three centuries. They've been there for three centuries. I'm not saying this is the fact or not because some of these things about dates, when it's not coming from historians themselves, people just speculate and put numbers. You said three centuries they've been there, but you said the three centuries, you said it for the Olukumi people and for the non-Olukumi, the Igbo people. The same number is what you attributed to those two people. So even if it's not 300 years, what you are, what is being implied from what you said, not even Vic now, what you said is that these people are just as indigenous as the Igbo people in the area. No. That's what, no, that's not, that's not what you wanted to say, but that's what you eventually that, read out Remember I was it. reading from a Yoruba thing. <sighs> let me, let me finish. So when you read, what you did was 
people wait i am going to bring my evidence queen shiba okay. is speaking now my evidence let me That's let me talk okay. please you know when you were talking we kept quiet not because you have the power to make us quiet but because we were respect respecting you in fact we kept quiet not because we agreed with what you were saying but because we want to allow do the same thing it should be that easy you said you want to give us your evidence and in searching for your evidence we didn't say queen shiba it must be yoruba it must be facebook nobody said that you brought out whatever you thought was okay and your evidence and you read it out to us yeah we're gonna allow you to say okay you take it back you're gonna look for another one we would allow that but i'm saying as that now what you gave us is something that says these people are just as indigenous to the area as the other person and each person is indigenous to the specific land they are on the Olukumi people are not indigenous to their land plus the surrounding area which you find the Anyoma. Neither are the Anyoma people indigenous to their land plus the surrounding area where you find the Olukumi. These people own whatever land they are on. I think that's a fair way to put it. Not only is it fair, that is the only thing that is substantiated by the evidence we've seen so far from Vic and from you, even though would allow you take back what you gave us as evidence and bring another one. So that's going to be my submission. Again, the last one, people migrating somewhere is not the counter evidence to them being indigenous. Is a Shima or whoever migrated to that specific region. Um, the people are Yoruba, you hammered on that, that they are Yoruba, they came from Yoruba land. That's not what makes people non-indigenous to another area. What makes them indigenous is that they have been there for long enough that we can remember. And um, they they don't have any recorded history from their past or from neighboring people of them begging or asking us, please, can we settle beside you? They, there is no such thing. That's what makes them indigenous, not the fact of whether they migrated or not. Migration does not make you non-indigenous. What makes you indigenous, on the other hand, is that you've been there for long enough, as we can remember antiquity, and there is no record from your side or from the other side of you coming to beg these people, like, can we please settle here? And... On the contrary, you'll find that in the case of the Lagos people and the Benin people, in the account of the Benin, the, whether from the Benin or the Eko people, you'll find the case of, we went there, we met them there. You'll find it in both people. Yoruba say that, the Eko people, the Benin people say that we met them there. But you don't find this thing in the Olukumi people saying we went to beg Anyama. You don't find it in the traditions of those Anyama people saying they came to beg us. What, in fact, in the historical conclusion of historians, you don't find it. What you find is that they are just as indigenous as each other. Each one owned their specific land, not the other surrounding region where the, where the other person came to settle in. So I think um, it's fair to leave it at what the evidence, as far as the concrete evidence goes, we've seen what Vic said. And again, your, the, the map, all these maps that people uh, you know, put up, let me just respond to that quickly because you've talked about it. So there is a difference between um, a map that was made, for example, in the year 1500, for example. In the year 1500, somebody came to Anyoma area, that's Anyoma slash um, the Olukumi area, and then said, oh, I'm drawing a map in the 1500s. That's one, and put that on one hand. Now, think about another one. In the year, let's say the Anyom, the Olukumi people came to um, the region, let's say they came there in the year 1300s, for example. And then while they were moving, somebody among them was sketching a map as they moved. As they move to another place, it sketches a map. So this is our migration pattern. And that map was there in paper and survived till today. Such map would count as an evidence of a migration pattern because this, this map is contemporary with that movement it seeks to describe. It was made from that time and survives and preserves was preserved till our time. This is different from what you find today on the internet of somebody in the year 2020, year 2010, year 1950, drawing a map. And this map he is drawing is supposed to describe a migration of 5,000 or let's say 700 years ago. You were not there to see how they exactly moved. This is just based at best conjectural and at best interesting. So whatever map you have of saying they came to Isha, this is a, not a map from that time from those people. It's a map of today and somebody ascribing it to those times. So then the next question we would have to ask is, okay, if we must take this map, now that we understand the context of this map, it's not a map from the time of the migration itself, it's a map from today trying to describe something that was that happened like uh, many centuries ago. So if we must even take that as evidence, if it is admissible, we have to look at who is drawing. On what basis is this person drawing? And I his, I hold on. No, you wouldn't tell him to, to do that. Even, especially the questions you're raising.
it's okay if you don't have answers. That doesn't stop the other person from asking questions. And um, yeah, you maybe have been used to being a moderator. I think you should calm down. You had several long time to talk when moderators calmed down and muted for you. Now you are the one telling the moderators, like, round off for me. No, it doesn't work that way. You should always pinch yourself and remember, wait, I'm not even a moderator. This is not my room. I don't even have power to control these people. Let me just mute and let them round up. Okay, let's remind ourselves of these things. So you don't have, we don't have such maps today. And whatever map you have, if we must admit it, who is drawing this? On what basis is this? Are these historians or somebody just waking up on Saturday and saying, oh, well, my computer, and then they draw. So what we have so far is an evidence, a scholarly one saying the Anioma people are indigenous to wherever land they are. And the Olukumi people are indigenous to whatever land they sit on. Neither gave neither of these two people gave the other person and say, okay, let's admit you in and we will not fight, we will not take your land from you. I mean, we'll give you. No, that's not the reality. The reality from as far as the evidence goes is that the Olukumi people are indigenous to their land. And we've heard from the Olukumi people themselves. A representative was here, here earlier. This is not us making stuff up. This is not some Edo person. Vic is not even Edo to start to start with. This is a case of an Olukumi people giving us an account of their own people and backing it up with some evidence as far as she can. But we've had another narrative from you, but there's no evidence for that. And we've had some from someone else citing a scholar from the Anyoma people saying what the Olukumi people say today. I mean, what more evidence do we need? Uh, thank you, uh, Labala. Uh, so, hold on, Queen Shiba. Thank you, Olabola, for your submission. So, we we'll got Kwenshiba, you are next, uh, but I just want to tell people uh, this is Yoruba Nation. We are here just to discuss, just to have a conversation about the Olukumi people. And earlier in the conversation, we had uh, someone uh, from the region. Uh, we have a uh, Olukumi uh, lady here, uh, which uh, she actually. An Olukumi lady from Okunzu, actually. Yeah. yeah. So and she's from Iroya family. So she like uh, she narrated their history and all that. But unfortunately, she's no longer in this room, you know. But uh, you know, so just to make it clear, this is not about Igbo. He has nothing to do with Igbo people. He has nothing to do with Edo people. He has nothing. This is purely Olukumi history, and uh, how they are, you know, how they are related to Yoruba and uh, you know, and uh, what happened uh, in the in those years. So this uh, this was what uh, this room was all about from the beginning. So it's not about one ethnic group, uh, you know, bashing another ethnic group or, you know, and all that. So I don't want us to make it uh, about that. You know, let's make this uh, about this. It's all, it's all about intellectual, you know, conversation. So let's make it what it is from the onset. Uh, Kunshiba, you can go. Then uh, we can go to the next speaker. So it's, it's an intellectual conversation. However, I could tell from Ola's, Ola Bola's narrative, you so want to change the script. You so want to change the history to fit what you ideally want it to be, which is that they own that land. They were there for a long time, from time and memorial, and they never migrated there. That is so what you want it to be. Unfortunately, that is not the truth. It's like me telling you, or you telling me telling you that Yoruba people from uh, Oshun State actually migrated there. And if, 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 for example, I maybe, maybe it's cl very close to maybe one of our, my villages and I want to make you feel like that is that place. You guys were never there. I could, I could go on that narrative. I can spend an hour talking about how is it that you guys didn't, mig you guys migrated, then you never was there. That doesn't mean that that is the correct thing. If you haven't cited any references to that, then that does not make it what you want it to be. Yes. Unfortunately, it sounds like, okay. How come is it that Yoruba people are in the middle of Igbo people? It's very, very concerning or very, very um, uh, interesting or it might be something to, uh, or to explore. How come? Yes, I understand that, that, that interest to understand, okay, is these people, are these people there? But there's also a fear that, ah, if we know exert ourselves in this place, maybe somebody will take, but that is not the case. But then we must not revise history. We must not revise things in order, in order for us to, to please, in order for me, Vic, in order for, in order for us to have this, our ideal vision of what we think that place should be. Now, I'm going to read out to you. Again, I take back that first thing because I know that that, that was not written by Igbo people. It wasn't written by Anioma people. It was written it was a Yoruba um, Facebook page, which I just stumbled on when I was reading it. But I want to ask a question because I sent this link to um, 
or to Otumba. There's a crowdfunder, crowdfunder.co.uk, which talks about the history of Olukumi. I did put it, I sent it to um to uh to Otumba. The project says it says you're trying to raise funds for publishing a book on the Olukumi people and assist in preserving their history and heritage. The project, okay, let me just read the part that is related to what I'm talking about. Um the project is aimed to raise funds, publish this book, blah, blah, blah. The Olukumi of, or the people of Odiani clan in a neutral local government, not local government of Delta State, are a small indigenous community which comprise of eight communities which that are said to have historically migrated from Akoko. I read that thing earlier, right? They are unique in every sense, right? and surrounded by predominantly Igbo speaking tribe. They speak a variant of Yoruba language, which surprising is yet to be subsumed by their dominant neighbors. I don't know why they call it dominance anyway, but they are, these people are raising funds to be able to preserve their, the history of, uh, uh, of Yoruba people in that region, okay? They themselves said, right? that the eight communities that are said to have historically emigrated from a cocoa area of Yoruba land during the wars which raged in that part of pre-colonial Africa during the 18th century. They themselves are the ones who wrote it. I've sent the link to, to, to uh, Otumba. I know of this history. I just, unfortunately, I don't have the book because I have to go and dig into my, into my uh, uh, stuff to be able to find the book. They migrated. It is well known. They themselves know it. So in as much as you want to make it that um, history that you want to be, that does not mean, it's like, it's like okay, fine. We have people who have migrated to Nigeria. Till mm -hmm. today, people still say, oh, Fulani are migrants. Of course, they, they, the land where they are, nobody's coming to take the land from them. But it's well known that they migrated. They themselves know that they migrated. We all know when, uh, when the wars happened. When um uh, uh, um is it Usman Danfode now who's who's the one that uh, came, right? And all the jihad and everything that happened, they themselves know their own history. But not not nobody in Nigeria is now going to go to the land that is occupied by the Fulanis now and say, "Give us our land back." That this is our land. But it's well known that they are migrants. It's the same thing. You've migrated into a place when there was war, and you have settled there. Nobody is coming to take that land from you, but you must not now discount the fact that there were people who owned that land, who that land belonged to. That was Igbo land, but now it now belongs to the Yoruba people. It does the Olukumi people. So this whole narrative that people want to create is going to cause problems. Let's not do it. Because all we need to just know is that, okay, Yoruba people are there, they are safe, they are fine, they're living with their neighbors, nobody's taking their land, there are no, there are no uh, tribal issues, there are no wars, there are nothing with Igbo people. And everybody moves on with their life. But when you try to say, oh, the Igbo people were, came to meet them, or the surrounding areas is this, and surrounding areas is that, it is not built on any facts. Because they themselves acknowledge their own history. That they were not, this was not where they were before. And we'll talk about this, this map that somebody wrote. That is actually from a, restor a historical document. I have saved that map on my phone for a while because I had, we had run it. There was a room that was on Olukumi a while ago. So I think the Igbo people in this room, we need to raise, create our own room and bring our own, his, bring historians. If we have to bring a Yoruba historian or Lukumi historian, let's bring everybody into that room and have a decent conversation. Because from what you're saying, Olabole, Olabola, you did not bring any historical effort, uh, uh, reference. I, I acknowledge I haven't brought any, apart from what I've just Googled on my phone. But I don't understand how people who are fundraising to preserve their history will themselves say that they, they migrated. It's with Otumba. If anybody wants it, I can send it to you in the back channel. That they might exactly so why would they themselves say that they are fundraising to preserve their history because they're a very small community in the midst of egos and they said when they migrated why would they they themselves say that and there's so many other if anybody wants to google you just google olukumi people it's it, it's, it's there can, it's Shiba, the, can you can, can you read further down two paragraphs further down from what you sent where is it okay okay hold on 
and be preparing to round up. I think I have the right to say no. It. Yes, if you, even, will... if you okay. even think you had it right earlier. No, it's. And, and the question about the room you are planning to open to, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's a good idea so that um, everyone can be yeah, prepared. So, so it, just let us know, you know, if it's yes. going to be, yeah. Yes. Uh, so uh, what, Lion, do you know this was what Ifi talked about? Ifi, the lady from uh, the Olu community. Chatoli said, now that history, the ancestral land, they don't even have charges on control. Right? And Koshiba, you need to go listen to this replay from Onset. This is someone from Olu community complaining about what you're just doing right now, you know? No, because go listen to it earlier. It's so not a go problem. listen to it earlier. It's not a quarrel. Let's allow, let's allow people to round up in the their next lands. One minute. But when you come and say Igbo people oh, migrated boy, there and think. met them, you have a problem. Uh, uh, Queen Shiba, are you saying the old Lukumi people met Igbo people on their village sites? See, see, hold on. We all know how the land. How because we are talking about village clusters of old Lukumi people here, but you, you seem to be talking about Aniota okay, or, or Anyoma land as a whole, which is up. different from what we're saying. Let me just round up. Let me just round up so you can so we can move on. So I am not saying that the Olukumi people came there and kicked out the Igbo people that are there and took their took their um property and moved there. That's not what I'm saying. We all know how things were in the olden days, right? You have a whole commune, a whole uh, a land mass that belong to people. It doesn't mean that they even have ra um, houses there. But what happens is that sometimes you will have farmlands. Like in my village, we have farmlands that I can't even see the end of it. Okay? That doesn't mean that that land does not belong to us. But it's just that we don't inhabit it. Okay, now these people came. Do you wanna do you wanna round up in the next I one? Minute? These people came and they, they've met a land and they settled in those lands, but that doesn't mean that the people who own those lands were no longer there. So I don't know how you guys are taking it. For me, we already wow. have a good relationship. There's a great relationship between Olukumi people and Igbo people. They intermarry, they do so many things together, but it's well known that they are migrants. So, so in essence, you are saying... Sorry, uh, they want Queen Shiba, uh, sorry, White Lion, they want Queen Shiba to read uh, the second paragraph of the page. If, uh, okay. if she can. I don't know, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have access to the, uh, the, the, uh, oh, the who wants her to the, read? That person should specify the paragraph. She second going on. Yeah, where, yeah where they it said is, the second paragraph where it says further down, further, further evidence as a match. Okay, so she's gonna see it now. Yeah, for that, that's like what? which, yeah. which further evidence, further evidence as emerged. Okay, further evidence as emerged to the dispute to dispute this variation of their history. No, that but that's like this is not that part now. There's a paragraph before that, before that one now. You want me yeah, to read she, he wants you to read that particular one. I, which one? I cannot just jump the whole paragraph before that and go to the third. No, you are you, you are reading it. You are reading it before. You are reading from. I already. Uh, okay, if you want me to read everything, I mean, you got it. You can put it up there. People can read it. You can read I it. Did, as, I, I don't. Let's just spend... save time. So so that um, when okay. Shiba doesn't hold right. the time, Mike Timo, do you want to read that place? Is there something interesting we need to know? Do you want to read it out for everyone? Yeah, I already I already pasted it in the chat because she stopped above and you know what what the history she was trying to. Uh, Say there has been disputed in the next part. But they are the ones that wrote that, that's what I want to when she bow, see. You're not the only one here. Aji, you're gone. Hello. Yeah, so, go so it says um further evidence has emerged to dispute this variation of their history. There is documentary evidence to suggest that the Olukumis occupied their present abode long before their Igbo speaking neighbors, including the Asabas, arrived in the vicinity. Who gave us this link? Uh, um let me just quickly respond to That's like, I two to things to, to, um so, so you see um like rhetorics versus evidence one will always win evidence always one thousand times it rhetorics would win if those people listening the, like they can't really understand anything that's when rhetoric will supersede evidence but with people that know what they're doing evidence would win 1001 times so what we've seen here is that um, queen shiba you actually misrepresented me you said i said the olukumi never migrated and i'm thinking right now everybody will, laugh, will be laughing no he said they migrated now so why would you misrepresent me 
I will leave that to them, to people's imagination. I never said they did not. They did migrate. But what the point I added is that when people migrate, this is not the sole evidence to say they are not indigenous to wherever they are. Somebody has given us the example of Benin, people who migrated to Lagos. That is That doesn't prove anything. To know that whether they are indigenous or not to the Lagos area, you would have to look at what their own accounts say and what Lagos people said. Lagos people said they met us here. Their own accounts say we met them there, period. In the case of the Fulanis that you mentioned, the Fulanis, we know when they came here, they didn't come to occupy a place that some people were not there before. The houses were everywhere, people were there, and they came to mix with them. This is clear in records of their own and the house own. The two sides balanced. But in so the case of the... Hold on. Are you, are, you able to, like, are you able to, like, mute? Like, I, I just say, hold on. I say, so your, lo your local people did not mix with... In fact, you know what? We're going to have our own room. I think it's, it's just pointless. <sighs> so I think you understand. You see the whole point now. At this point, it's becoming very embarrassing. Not on me, it, because it like be it is clear. You, but you cannot. It is. It is clear. You like change. you're doing some things. Like Honestly. I don't have too much patience to be muting you back and forth. Like like this is about. I should be talking. I shouldn't be babysitting. There is no evidence. You have brought nothing to say that the land where the Olukumi people are, they came and asked for it from some people who are already on that land. There is nothing so far. You've brought two types of evidence. Nobody sent those evidence to you and say, I'm a Yoruba man, I'm sending it to you with like guns point to your head, read it out. No, you search whatever you want. You felt like this is your best evidence and you read it out to us. What did we find from those two evidence? The first one, we found that the Olukume people were indigenous. You said 300 years, even though I don't agree with the date. But what you said is that that same date, 300 years, is the same time that the Anima people came. That's what your first evidence said. You read it out. The same date, both of them. Now you said you're going to take that back. Like, that's not your evidence anymore. Okay, bring another one. You brought us another one. The ad that other one, you were reading it and you smelt the rat at some point and you stopped. And someone had to complete it and said, these people are indigenous to this, pe to this place, to their own specific land. Not that the place where the Anima people came, that the Olukumi people owns it. No, their own village is their own place. They didn't have to ask anybody, I beg, let's live here on your land. There was no such thing. Your own evidence says that. Your second evidence after taking back the first one. So let's say now you're going to take back your second evidence, like, oh my God, I eat my words back. Let me look for the third one, even though you wouldn't bring. We've seen actual academic evidence, not even some blogs, not even some Facebook. And Vic has cited, you said, I did not bring any evidence. No, I did bring by referring to what Vic said earlier. And Vic wasn't citing some blogs. It was quoting a historian. A Benin historian? No. A Do? No. Yoruba? No. Shekuri? No. Olukumi historian, no. Anyoma, your historian, saying, yes, the Olukumi are indigenous, they've been there, they're the earliest, and so on and so forth. What more do thinking people want as evidence again? You said the map you have on your DP is a historical document map. No, like if, if you're just a little conversant with historical maps, you can already tell what a map that was drawn. <laughs> that map history. was produced by Paul Lovejoy in 2014-15. Like 2014. What are we saying? And the map doesn't even do anything, doesn't even change a bit to what we are saying because the map is just saying they migrated. And we are saying they migrated. Is migration the point to say people are not indigenous? No, there is something you need to check even for that. Okay, when they got there, their account said, we asked for this land from those people. If the account says that, then we can talk about not being, not being indigenous in that sense. But there is no such account from them. Oh, from your people, is there any such account? We don't have any such account. Oh, what do historians say? The historians don't say that. The historians say the opposite of what you've been saying, which is exactly what we've been saying and what Vic said by citing your own historian and what um, the, you know, the Olukumi lady said. So the whole idea of I said they didn't migrate is to put the wool over people's eyes, to, to make them think that migration equates unconditionally to being non-indigenous. No, that's not the case. You have to look at did the account say they meet people? Did the account of the other people say they meet us? You have to now look at that additional one.
before you can say they are not indigenous in that case. And in fact, if people have been in some place for me like hundreds of years that we can't even remember the specific date, it's enough to say they are, they are indigenous, which is met. This criteria is met by the Olukumi people. And in addition to that, their own account and historical submission says that they are the earliest in that particular one they are, or at least they didn't ask for that land from anyone. So what are we saying here? It all boils down to emotional argument. It boils down to having a preconceived notion, maybe some rumors flying around that you needed to respond to anyways, whether these people say this thing or not, I'm going to respond to it because someone said it yesterday in my area. So that's what I think is going on here. Let's just um, be calm. Come on, why? Let's not be emotional at all times. Let's just listen to the other people. Maybe what we think they are saying, they are not even saying that before we respond to something they didn't even say. So nobody is saying that the Anioma people came to beg for that land they are on from the Olukumi people. Instead, each person owned their specific spot and nobody begged land from anyone. They are all indigenous. In fact, the first line in your article said, small indigenous community. That's what your first article said. Before we even go to the issue of the next um, paragraphs, when, which was um, read out to us by that young man earlier. Uh, thank you. Hola, hola. Yeah, yeah, I I <laughs> can I please come in? Yeah, I think you can go ahead. Okay, uh, I was li I was listening and I was equally uh, laughing at your emotional outburst. You see, there's no point, there's no time I said uh, that you are not Igbo. I was rather quoting a comic that was issued by the Onu Ika, which is the mouthpiece of all Ika people. Which, which in that community they said they ain't Igbo and nobody should tag them Igbo. But I'm not here to discuss that. Since you say you don't want to hear that, then let's leave that aside. Talking about uh, migration, you have been hitting the point migration, migration, migration. I don't know if you can tell us the community in Ika land you, call, you, you hail from. I would like to know which of the Ika communities are you from? Is it Ibanke, Abavo, uh, Agbo, Owa? Which of them I would like to know the uh, particular community you hail from? Because from the records I have, and also from the works of uh, Solomon Lubejumye, who is an Ika historian, and also the works of this uh, Anyoma historian, Emeka Esobwe, in this the book name is titled The Study of the Origins and Migrations of Anyoma Settlements. In that book, he made it clear that the Olukumi people, they are amongst the earliest people in the Anyoma region. Now, you keep saying the Olukumi people, they migrated, they migrated. The Olukumi people, they are in the midst of, there are three clans in Anyosha. Among these three clans, none of them claims to be aborigines. All of them in their history says they migrated. One of them is the uh, Idumuje. Idumuje admit that, okay, they are mostly from Esan, Esan land. They migrated from Esan land. The other group is on a uh, Ezechime clan. Who are the Ezechime cl uh, clan? The Onisha Olona, Onisha Ugo, and the rest of them. Now, this is a Shime clan. They are children of Eze Shime. Eze Shime is not from Delta State. To... Eze Shime is a migrant. Some Igbo, some Igbo people claim that he's from Aro. Aro was in the 17th century. That was when Aro was founded. Other Igbo said he's from uh, Unri. But what we know about him is that he was a migrant that came from Igbo land and came to Benin as a native doctor. That is what all history recognizes him as. He was a native daughter and a friend to the Oba. You understand? So after leaving uh, Benin, maybe due to some dispute, I call it, the history said it was due to dispute with the Oba. So he left and was migrating back to Igbo land. Some of his descendants, they settled along the way, which is the Onishaoluna, Onishaobo, you see. Others crossed the river Ninja. They were actually crossed, they were already Igala people on ground. At this point, it was Igala people in all history that crossed Eze uh, Shime and his descendants across the river Ninja to the other side. Even at the other side, in Onisha side, there was already Igala people uh, on ground. Even Onisha history recognized this fact. So you saying uh, certain people migrated and others did not migrate, that is not 
That is not what history says. The whole history admit to the fact that the three groups in Anyosha they migrated. In your Ika, there is no Ika community that did not migrate. If you talk of Abavo, Abavo is he says they came from Munri, founded by Odogu. Other history, such as our history, also said some came from Benin, others came from Asia. There are even some Owa. No, there are, yes, or like for example, this uh, Boji Boji Owa. Do you know that Boji Boji Owa was founded as a Yoruba settlement, a trading spot? So, this is what I have to say. Thank you. You can go ahead. But don't keep hitting the point that uh, some people migrated, others did not migrate. All groups in that Anioma region migrated, including the Igalas, including the Asabas, the all, everyone. I, what is, uh, there's another, uh, there's an Igbo community called Igbozo in Delta State. It means Igbos are settled along the way. They were migrants. They could not, they couldn't continue the journey, so they had to settle. So they named the community Ibus or Ibus that settled along the road. So do, what do you now say? Are they indigenous? Will you say they are indigenous to Delta State or they are Igbo people from across the Niger? I would like to hear your view on that as well. So thank you. And truly, I am from Edo State and equally from Delta State. So I am a stakeholder as far as the history of these places are concerned. You can go ahead. Zik, are you busy or Shekin? I am good. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Vic. I, I think uh, one thing we should take from here is, uh, is this. We all, like, uh, you just don't grow up on the land and just say, yeah, boom. Like, you grow like a tree and say, okay, this is my land, you know? you migrate from one place to another like i i said earlier like people from ife like okay you can say people in the bad we have people in Ibadan now we have people in uh elisha uh, now we have people in uh, Ijebu now all these people like they move from somewhere we can trace it back to Ileife. we can you know they move from one place to another you know so when the people got to Ibadan. Oh, it's a bush, you know, a bowdo, you know, let's settle here and they name the place Ibado, you know. So it's like uh, when we're talking about uh, uh, this uh, Olukumi people. So one thing I, I wanted to ask, uh, which I think uh, is being clear now, is that the Olukumi people got to where they are today. Like, uh, do they, like, uh, was there an, like an Igbo people living there already? Like we we're, were talking about Fulani and Ausa. It's even it's it's not the same. I was were there. I was were they were established on their land already before the Fulani came in, you know. And then they mix with them as uh, should we say sojourner or as uh, whatever they they were back then. So they met the Ausa there. So the Olukumi got to that place where they are today. Like uh, they I don't, do they met the Igbo there and they just mix with them uh, as the Fulani or they got to that place. They, just, they see land, you know, which uh, say, okay, well, let's settle here and uh, let's call this place our abode. Let's call this place our land. You know, let's settle here and then let's uh, le let's live our life. So, like, uh, I think uh, one thing we should take away from here is that people migrate. So it doesn't matter, okay, where you migrate to. Or, oh yeah, who like I migrate, I migrate somewhere. I see a land and then I, I started living there. I put my tent. You know, I started, uh, you know, living life, you know, multiplying, giving birth to kids and all that. And from there, somewhere in the bush. <laughs> and from there, we build our own little village, you know. So and that, does, that's, that doesn't stop that. OK, why we are building village villages and uh, we are building houses on that land. It doesn't stop the fact that there are other people in our surroundings. There are other people that are around us also that actually maybe probably they came from somewhere too and then they they had they saw a land and then they started building their their own uh, thing too they started doing their thing so it doesn't stop that fact you know so i think that's just one thing i'll take uh, from this room it's not that uh, maybe someone is trying to subjugate or uh, i mean so that's just my own uh, point from from this so i saw something in the chat about um yeah, why do you, are the Olukumi people not saying this, not saying their history? So so that it's clear that we are not saying something that the Olukumi people are not saying. 
we are saying exactly the same thing. The fact of their Yoruba root and origin is what they say. There is no point in time where they ever denied that. So that's not even about, the whole back and forth is not even about that. So, and then uh, there has been an Olukumi representative in quotes now that has been here earlier. And then Botrest, exactly the same thing we're saying, recognizing, proudly embracing his Yor her Yoruba root and heritage. And she's from the royal family and this is the voice of everyone. There, I don't know of any Olukumi clan that says we are never Yoruba, we didn't come from Yoruba land. So the idea that we should let them speak for themselves, you know, has the assumption uh, that um, at its root, that we are saying something different from what they would have said. No, we are saying exactly the same thing. And we've had evidence of someone who was who is from that part of um, um, the country, so to speak, that has been here earlier saying exactly the same thing. I think the only correction is about the tussle between two Olukumi groups. Mr. White Lion is more conversant with their names. Which one is the headquarter or not? That's the only thing. And then she updated us that this exactly. Is so there's a tussle. It's not that one. We two, we claim that we are the headquarter. Oh, but Barry, it's, all, it's just about the issue of. To even expand so on that a little bit, the tussle is between Ubodu and Ukunzu for the headquarters of the Odian exactly. or the Olukomi people. That's 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 the only. That's the only uh, thing she updated that we us about on. in that area regarding yeah. or pertaining to anything at all. Right. So the everything else. The whole idea of we came from Yoruba land, the same. We have been saying the same thing. They didn't say anything other than that. So the whole back and forth with Shiba is not even about whether these people claim they are from Yoruba. In fact, she, Shiba agrees that they have, came from Yoruba land. And that seems to be what she thinks is an evidence that they are not indigenous, that she that they came from Yoruba land. So we are all on the same page as regards where they come from. We, Yoruba nation moderator, myself and White Lion, we are on the same page with the representative from um, Olukumi as regards where the Olukumi people came from. In fact, we are on the same page with Queen Sheba as regards where the Olukumi people came from. We are all on the same page. The only point of difference is with Queen Sheba as regards people migrating means they are not indigenous. No, you have to look even further than that. Did they say they meet people living on the specific land where they settled? No. And um, it doesn't have to be the case with the other, with the Anyoma people that um, is the Anyoma that came to ask them for land. No, people can just settle here and there are other lands elsewhere in the surrounding areas that other people can come to settle in later. It doesn't necessarily mean I give them those lands. My own land where I settled is just my land. And there are other cases where you own the whole surrounding area. But in this case, we, this doesn't seem to be the case where Anyoma people came to beg for land. Neither is it the case that the Olukumi people came to beg for, for land from the Anyoma who are already on that spot where the Olukumi people you know, occupy. But what the evidence seemed to say, at least the concrete evidence which we've seen so far, is that um, they are all both indigenous to that part. Anyoma people migrated. Let's forget that thing about they did not migrate. The whole Ezeshima thing, which um, Vic was trying to point out, is about migration. That's the whole point. Migrated from somewhere to somewhere. And if I either one, first hand migration or reverse migration, or there was migration. a migration. There was yeah. a migration. Whether it's the Benin one, which I don't agree with, or the Igbo one, which says it came from Igbo land first. It's Sha migration, Sha, and then settled in that part of um, the country. So it's migration. So if you want to go by a theory of if you've migrated, you are not indigenous. Then she would have to admit that, yes, it's a Jima migrated, and we are not indigenous to our nature, which will be, you know, can that I respond? Really... Sorry, uh, Kushiba, actually, uh, uh, thank you for coming. No, uh, we're going to move past that. We, we can do this. Yeah. You can open a room that, so we that, can continue from that, there. That, that, that point, she, I mean, that point about my... Like oh, no, before you get the one or two minutes, this is, uh, like you made, like the statement you made, uh, this is a disrespective, uh, disrespective uh, room. Uh, the Europe, no, 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 please. I, I, I like, it has nothing to do with what you said, like uh, Yoruba trying to claim uh -huh. Igbo land. You know, like it has nothing to do with that, and uh, I really wish uh, he hasn't got into that uh, to that level that, uh, like, for you to say you're bad trying to claim mm -hmm. Ebola. That's not. Yeah, the, that, there, there was no point where uh, we are on, saying. Sorry, that's not uh, what we're actually discussing here. You know, like, uh, don't let us make it about. Uh, don't let us make it about that. Like, uh, it's Ibo versus Yoruba. Uh -huh. I, I mean, so it, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't at all, please. Yeah. So yeah, again, at no point, at no point did we ever when, say here that the Yorubas own Igbo land or the Yorubas own Anyoma land, which is what you need to respond to, but we haven't said. 
at least if you want to respond to that give us the grace to say it first before you respond to that particular thing but if we haven't said it just keep it where you can respond to other people who will say it on clubhouse or outside clubhouse but the fact that we haven't said that here yeah you should keep that response don't let it go but just hold on on it so we haven't said yoruba's own Igbo land or own anyoma land nope cut that out what we've said so or far, even own an other local government or no. other local government no what we've said that the Olukumi people, wherever you find them, they are indigenous to that land. Nobody was living on that specific land who, and then they came to beg. Nope, that's that's all we're saying. The extension is what you seem to want to respond to, and that extension no, is that Yorubas are saying they own the whole of Igbo land, though they own the Anyocha local government. No, we are not saying that. But I would really join you in responding to anyone who will say that. Any Yoruba person or uh, Olukumi person who will say Ola, that Ola, later Ola, in the minutes, yeah, jot all right. So anyone who will say that later, I would like to respond to such person alongside you when you're responding to such person. If you want to talk now, I would like okay. to respond to you. That's like that's me. So maybe okay. we will just leave it at that because no, you don't. No, want, no. I don't want you to feel this ground at the end and we lose the. In fact, I think we should be the one debating whether we want to close the room because it's seven minutes. Actually, we have like ten minutes. Um, so. Um, the room started at eight past, so yeah, eight past two Eastern time. Yeah. So what do we do at this point? Do you do we allow Quinchiba one minute so I can respond to her? Or yes. Uh, Shiba should take her yeah, yeah. Let let Shiba have the last word. Yeah. So when you say when you say that when you say that um, you're not talking about taking other people's land or all that, but when you so, sorry, let's make it one minute say, because of time. Wait, Wait, no, I'm waiting. Not I'm interrupt telling me. you time. One minute. Okay, thank you. You say you say the, what you, what you guys are saying is not about taking other people's land. But when you come here and you say that we migrated as well as they migrated, you are creating a narrative. It's like a dog whistle. It's like this is this this is our land, though. These people also came. That means they too are not indigenous. Abby, those they too, too, they came like we came. And that is not correct. Because we have been there. Think also told you about it. How long that we have been there? Indigenous have been there thousands of years before the Olukumi even came. So you might think that okay, you to create this whole idea of what you want it to be, you might have a different direction. But thank God I've got some documents. Ten, ten seconds. I've got some scholarly work that today I can't explain that, but we're going to definitely create a room and we're going to be reading books and listening to Thank historians you. who know a lot Time. about we to, this. We have to like really become this. So to respond to that really quickly. No, no, don't so, respond to me. Don't respond to me. No, I will respond. Uh, no, Ola Bola, can I speak? Please, so, so, let me, so, let me, so, let me quickly say this. Ola Bola, please, can I speak before you respond? One, one second, please. one second. Let me quickly say this. So I did, you, you are getting really riled up because you have something strong in your heart. And that thing is that if people migrate, they are not indigenous. That thing, cut it out, it's wrong. No, there is no such thing exists anywhere. Oh, and the idea that um, we did, you did not migrate, cut it out. There is the Eze Chima, that's the tradition that is known. The idea that you stayed there 2,000 years ago, thousands of years ago, there is no evidence. You like to say that it's good to hear. If I was an annual Chima person, that would be good to my hearing. But do I have evidence for that? No. So what do we have out there instead? The tradition of Eze Chima. What is it? It's about migration. So if you want to hold the idea that migration means non-indigenous, you have that axe to grind, not me. But I'm not saying migration equals to not being indigenous. I'm saying if you migrate, you could be indigenous or not. We just have to check for the further factor of right, thank you so much. if they meet people there or not. So, All right, thank you so much. We will join you in the other room too, you know. Yeah, you know, thank you so much. Um, um, everyone who, in one way or the other, have contributed to this conversation today, uh, as you would all agree, it's been a really interesting conversation. A lot of things to take away. We're going to have the replay on. Please feel free to come back to Yoruba Nation and listen uh, to this uh, session. And uh, special thanks to White Lion, who has graciously uh, led this conversation today. 
Uh, chief contributor, Mr. Labola, thank you so much for your wealth of uh, historical knowledge. And to every other person, my sister Adun, I can't shout, Mr. Damilari, Mr. Idiami, and everyone else on the stage, and our people uh, in the audience actively listening to this conversation, we want to thank you uh, for staying tuned. Uh, We're definitely going to still have uh, a second run of a session like this. Please, uh, let's be on the lookout for that. Uh, do good by looking into all of our scheduled rooms and we're still working very hard behind the scenes to keep bringing sessions like this to your listening pleasure and uh, on this note i'll be playing uh yoruba national anthem as we put this session to an end